What's going on, everybody? I hope everyone's having a fantastic evening, fantastic afternoon, fantastic pre noon. No matter where you are in the world, I'm a song piker in this thoughts, and I'm broadcast coming to you live from sunny Australia, Melbourne. Ladies and gents, it's my last day here in Australia, in Melbourne, and it's a beautiful one. And I'm happy to share it with you. And I hope you'll come waltzing with Matilda. I hope you'll come a waltzing Matilda with me, ladies and gentlemen. My voice is out of control right now. I think um, this is bad. I just realized that, like, I, I haven't talked this morning because I just kind of woke up. And I didn't realize that this is what I sound like currently. Oh, God. Hello. <clears throat> okay, it'll fix itself. It'll fix itself in a second. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Um... Did you just buy a bunch of sports merch? I like your QLD maroon shorts. Yes, I did. So, um, yeah, let me explain to you what I've been doing for the past couple of days. Absolutely nothing. Um, it's been awesome. I haven't really been streaming that much because I've just been sleeping. I've been drinking. Chad drinks a little too much, I think. I didn't drink last night, but I was still very... I didn't drink last night, so I was, like, still very tired, and I slept. I slept in, and I was late for that reason. I thought I would be able to fucking... I thought I'd be able to wake up in a, in a timely manner, and... Hey, he's a rugby lad now. Time to take your kid off with the boys. I'm a rugby lad now, for sure. As you guys can see, I'm currently wearing the, uh, the Wallabies. This is a Wallaby shit. Right? I got a Wallaby shirt. I'm wearing my fucking... Essendon Bombers shorts, right? Um, got a Wallaby shirt, Essendon Bombers shorts. Obviously, you're not supposed to be mixing and matching, but I'm still doing it. Um, I have rugby kits. I have AFL kits, Australian Football League. Turns out, Australia, you guys have a lot of different sports. Like, guys, if you're American, you probably had no fucking idea about this. Don't care. Okay. <laughs> Criqueste. Get your sleep homie let's fucking go um i don't know if you guys know this or not but australia i thought they just had fucking rugby like i was like all right rugby rugby it is they're doing rugby turns out rugby is like the third most popular sport depending on where you go in the country so some parts of the country afl australian football league is the most popular sport other parts of the country it's cricket there's also rugby union it's not just like regular rugby there's like indigenous teams, indigenous leagues. Um, turns out for a country with 26 million fucking people, it's just like they have so many different games, <laughs> which was shocking. It's such a tiny fucking country. King, you're looking swell. Thank you. It's the, it's the Aussie kit that I'm wearing that makes me look shredded, ripped, jacked. Yeah, cricket is in the summer, though, and it's not summer right now, so there's no cricket. It's not cricket season. 
Um. Anyway, are you sick? A little bit. Um. A little bit. It's just like I I have basically been living off of hot pot and alcohol. So uh, it hasn't been good on my body. Uh, yesterday, I I did a little bit of self care. I did a little bit of self care. I I realized that there was like bath salts in my bathtub. I have a bathtub in my room. Bro, got to be up fifteen pounds. Uh, no, I did not. I don't think I gained fifteen pounds. Chatter. Who thinks I gained fifteen pounds? That's crazy. Eighteen pounds of muscle, maybe. But no, I haven't gained fifteen pounds of muscle either. Um. I probably have gained like five to ten pounds though. I I also because I've been I've been eating I've been eating like shit and I have like zits and stuff. Like I'm breaking out. There's like a zit right here. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. Um, I'm I'm breaking out all over my body, and it's literally because of just like um, it's because I'm e eating shit. Ugh. This looks like you've been hitting the shoulders for real. I have not. I haven't done anything. Is that a real football shirt? This is, I think this is a rugby shirt. He's spiraling sad. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very, I'm spiraling. Anyway, um, do you take creatine with you when you travel? Great question. Uh, yes, I do. Hold on. Where is it? I should take that. It reminded me. Not that it matters because like I haven't been working out. So it doesn't even fucking, I thought I would be able to work out, but I've been, I've been hitting like uh, a thousand calories of active calorie burn every day problem is i overeat like and i hit a thousand calories every day easily because i'm walking so much because this fucking this country is so walkable so i've been walking non-stop yo quit it with a fake voice bucko do you think i could just like make this do you think i could fake this voice honestly like do you think i could just I have like a weird headache all the time. I have a weird earache and a weird hair ache, if that makes sense. I think I just have like cancer. I'm dying. I don't know what it is. Didn't you say Sydney was car cucked? Which is it? Melbourne is less car cucked than Sydney, but it doesn't really matter because like ultimately both of these cities are still pretty walkable in comparison to <clears throat> you're literally just walking with a bit of waking up with a bit of vocal fry. Yeah, I uh, my voice is like stuck currently like this um the sleep dip is real when you get the hair aches i've been there before wait really um are you going back to la after today yes this is my last day <laughs> in australia it's my last day in melbourne the recovery travel in australia and it's just a week so I'm not surprised you're fucked <clears throat> yeah a lot of people were a lot of people uh were shocked when i said i'm only here for seven days i think that's part of the the reason why I think they were shocked about the seven day thing is because they're like, what the fuck? Seven days only? Like, that makes no sense. Seven days is like what it, seven days is, is how you recover. Like, is the time frame that you recover. Look directly up by leaning your head back and gargle warm salt, salt water and have a ginger ale. Grandma's cure. I don't have any of that. Um. Anyway, fuck. Kaya being a menace without you? Yeah, I saw that. Oh my god, dude. This is unacceptable. It's unacceptable to frame Kaya for this because she's a good girl. Okay? It's unacceptable. I have a suspicion that the plushie or the pillow basically did that on its own. And Kaya was there to stop it, actually. I have a suspicion that this thing blew up, right? And Kaya ran over to be like, let me let me fix it like i will stop the explosion because she is a good girl and innocent and not only is she innocent and a good girl but also a hero i think the thing blew up and i think she was worried for her friend mika and mika's safety and she just ran over there and was like let me let me dive in front of this explosion we should be cherishing her we should be celebrating her accomplishments we should be saying that she is not a stuffed animal eater no 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 but instead she is the savior she saved the day that's what i believe that's what i want to believe that's the narrative i'm going with anyway um what else hey i felt bad because i saw the tim pool shit and i hadn't had time to watch a lot recently so i'm watching today because i didn't want to even think that they won for a second but out of curiosity do you have a percentage of fallen fans 
who still pay you monthly without realizing because they don't watch you anymore? What an insane question. <laughs> no, I don't think so. That's, dude, my fans are so funny. You guys literally ask the stupidest questions sometimes. Like, how, how would I have an answer for that question? I don't know how many fucking people, like, are still accidentally paying subscriptions. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> she said... How many, how many former fans that now hate you still accidentally pay for you? Like, pay for your subscriptions, you think? It's wild. Um, people want you to fall off so hard. Yeah, I know. Well, it's fine. I have fallen off. I'm good. I've fallen off, but I'm happy. So, did you see Ole Emmy rip Eric Adams a new one? Oh, my God. I watched some of it. It's so sick. It's so fucking sick. You sound tired. Yeah, guys, it's a 18 hour time difference. <laughs> uh like I know I'm kind of fucking insane for usually never taking like a day off, but it did fuck me up a little bit, especially because I also drank a bunch. I didn't even drink last night. That's really funny. Uh it's really funny people are going like, "Oh, he 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 drank, like he's hung over." Like I didn't actually drink last night at all. I was not I was not about that. I have punished myself enough oh so much we did so much we went to a strip club we went to uh, a casino i made thousands of dollary dues literally thousands rich get richer it's out of control um yeah i made like three thousand australian dollars i've never made money like that in a casino it was crazy um which is and then i realized this australian dollar so it's like fake so that's why I didn't stream. I was like, I'm a professional gambler now. Um, why would I? <laughs> Socialism is the farce. Go Israel. Go. Go Israel. Palestinian flag. Oh, throwing up emoji. <laughs> Hello. My name is Blake Cake. Blakey Cake. Go Israel. Go Israel. Oh, go. Terror babies, we are stopping terror babies. Go Israel. Every time I think about the terror baby, I say to myself, oh, so gross. I hate them. Who has the better KFC? I heard it's different. I tried it yesterday. It's it's like not even a question. Australian KFC is infinitely better. Didn't you criticize the XCC for gambling? Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Shut up. I literally do not have time for your fucking stupidity today. Don't fucking do this. Don't even try. I know. I know you're joking. Don't even fucking try and joke like that. Jesus Christ, dude. I get started and I immediately... Eh, eh. <clears throat> no bad vibes. Only good vibes. Um, the chips in KFC and Austin are so goaded. Yeah, KFC Australia is so good. Anyway, there's like fucking great news as well. I'm in a pretty good, uh, good place. Um, they banned uh the hassan destiny cross posting on lsf so congratulations uh to lsf for finally being like you know what <laughs> this is actually kind of cooking our own goddamn subreddit because it's just been brigaded to shit and now it sucks hey dracon the ripper thank you for the uh i don't know how many subs you just gifted a lot uh 100 what the fuck 100 gifted subs holy shit Turn it into a Northern Lion subreddit. Yeah, th it's funny that they were both sizing it. I I love the I love this thing. I love this thing because everyone was like, well, not everyone, but like the L the the mods on LSF were like, yeah, both sides of audience are cringe and gay, and and you know we can't do that. Like we should really stop being cringe and gay as a, you know both sides of audiences are doing this, and then it's like it's only people from my end being like. Oh my God, finally, like, thank God it's great. And then every comment is basically destiny audience members being like, why can't we criticize him? <laughs> I've been begging to be taken off this fucking website for literally a year. Plus the moderators opened up a private line of communication between me and them only to literally only to literally leak the private line of communication that they created because they were like, Hey, uh, we want to be, we want to be nice and we want to make sure that like we're fostering a healthy space, which is joke, obviously what a fucking joke. Um, and I never even reached out to them until like recently. And I was just like, bro, 
what the fuck's going on, right? Like, I did this a couple months back. What did they do? They fucking leaked the communications that I was having with them in the private channel that they had set up for ourselves. So, like, for me, it's like these guys were participating in the harassment, and the only thing that basically, the only thing that basically changed their decision and their behavior is that they have been brigaded by Destiny's community so much that it literally changed the dynamic of the fucking subreddit entirely. It basically became a subreddit almost exclusively for fuck Hassan content. And it's hilarious because both sides in this issue is, is hilarious. Like there, there's no both sides. There's no both sides. There's one community that one, one wanted to stop the endless sea of harassment and the other community that used it all the time to do the endless sea of harassment. I personally brigaded the subreddit back in the day publicly to be banned. Then they banned me. And then they realized, well, maybe the traffic isn't as good, so we'll unban him. So that's why the Destiny subreddit and the Destiny community that brigades this fucking piece of shit LSF uh, subreddit all the time literally will always say, Hassan is the one who's actually brigading. When it's like, dude, I know you guys have the the uh, pro the unproductive kind of autism that causes you to be a cyber stalker online instead of the productive kind of autism that causes you to be like an engineer and build stuff and like trains, but like no one. And I mean, no one on the planet who doesn't have that same exact kind of autism as you right now is going to look at the situation and be like, yeah, this is a both sides are the same kind of a beat. Okay. It, especially because like, if this was a both sides are the same kind of situation, you wouldn't see my fan base being like, yeah, this is great. Finally. It's like finally an end to the fucking endless sequence of harassments. And then every other person, every other destiny fan going, <coughs> <coughs> it's like, dude, you're not doing accountability, bro. Are you okay? No, I'm having fun. Yeah. It's so weird. I thought both sides were brigading this. I thought both sides were brigading this subreddit, but it only seems like one side is screeching. You know? What's happening? I wonder if logs are going to come out of Hassan continuing to complain about the clips. Hmm. See, like, do you see this? Like, they're, they're so mad. <laughs> Stay mad, baby. Stay mad. Stay mad. Stay mad. I never thought I'd see today edit OTK. I don't want to be here either. This place is trash. There's 100k new view streamers. Jinxie Kezo, but this place orbits OTK on Destiny. Post other shit, move on from us. Oh, wait, y'all refuse to do that. Lol, lol, lol. Like, NMP's right. Hassan sponsored comment. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, good decision overall. I think it's, it's fucking ridiculous. Um, they basically, the interesting thing with Destiny is that he doesn't keep the same energy for the same person. He never installed Hassan like he's done online in person. Mods are just getting rid of the internet tough talk, keeping it real. Wait, what the fuck? It's such a dumb comment. It's such a silly comment. Anyway, um, wait, what the fuck? Uh, what is this? Ignore them, dude. This is fruitless. I mean, I'm just celebrating. I'm just celebrating that, um, you know, that uh, at least one of the subreddits that was actively used to brigade, uh, actively brigaded and used to just like shit on me under the guise of accountability has decided that like this kind of behavior is unproductive that this kind of behavior is not great that uh you know that it it would be better off if there weren't like these cross-pollinated streams of like destiny talking about Hassan Hassan talking about destiny Hassan talking about destiny clips are never really on there anyway uh and I'm sure they'll try to you know uh there's not to like farm sympathy or anything like that I just I should get banned off LSF I hope I get banned off LSF LSF Please ban me, okay? It's it's fucking unbearable. It is unstoppable every single instance. And when I get banned, any criticism of me equals invalid? Bro, what criticism? I'm already fucking pointing out how inconsistent and delusional this shit is, dude. That's not criticism. You That's it. It has never stopped. It has never stopped. It has literally always been, I hate Hassan. Because Hassan is uh, inconsistent. I hate Hassan because Hassan is hypocritical. It's always like, it, it always is like moralizing. It always is about like moralizing your hatred and utilizing the the talking points that you 
Like, look, look, I'm sure uh, two-time divorced dad is probably currently watching because immediately you see the vibe shift, right? Like, immediately. Like, I, I can tell when I'm being raided. You know what I mean? I can tell when I'm being, like, brigaded. Twitch streamers understand that. Twitch streamers can, can literally see it. And it's so funny when, like, this is just an ongoing, constant thing. The only, like, I mean, it's been ongoing and constant since... It's been ongoing and constant since like 2019. It's never really stopped. The only difference is that I basically full blown stopped talking about destiny. And that was the most productive thing I'd ever done. And since then, uh, only until Israel, uh, did I not do any of that. And his fan base is still trying to like cope and find reasons for why I'm doing it or whatever. He's like, Oh, he's falling off, blah, blah, blah. Right. But this is the reason why I don't talk about him. This is the reason why I don't debate him. Because his fan base goes fucking crazy. Like, you guys you guys make it so that it's impossible to have a normal conversation because you're not really interested or invested in anything. You're not really interested in investing in anything other than making him look good. And in that effort, you literally end up making him look really fucking unhinged. Okay? That's it. I mean, he is really unhinged anyway. <clears throat> Why can't we ban any Twitch user that chats in his streams or follows them? I mean... <laughs> I probably have done that. Bro will hate watch all the drama streams, but never watch the Chad Vice streams, and that's why he's divorced. Yes. If he had watched uh if he had watched my dating advice streams, he would have not been divorced twice now. He thinks you're the Batman and he's the Joker. That's so fucking lame, dude. Yeah, you have a child. Go take care of him instead. But anyway, my point is it's always like, oh, I'm actually giving accountability to this person. And it's like, you're not. You've heard that I'm like a really bad guy. And someone has like moralized that. Someone has justified it, right? And it's just a, it's just a way for you to feel like you're a part of an in-group and harass someone. And that's it. And it is, it's the same exact thing that like all of the other fucking 4chan poll watchers do. All the other Kiwi Farm guys do. They, it's called lol cowing, right? And you're doing the exact same thing. You just think it's like more justifiable. You've like normalized it. You've rationalized it in your mind. It's still unhealthy for you. It's still, still unhealthy for you. Um, you will inevitably grow out of it, I hope, or get better. You know what I mean? But, um, but yeah, this is something that I've wanted, uh, obviously, for uh, many, many years. I didn't actually reach out to the LSF mods. Like they literally did it themselves. And I think it's partially because they felt like they all, it, the, the subreddit had gone down the shit. You are a delusional, pathological psychopath. Yeah. Okay. But you try to justify it by being like, this is actually a legitimate sound criticism that you're getting. Okay. It's not just openly state that you want your community to brigade LSF threads. Yes, please. Everyone in this community, go brigade LSF threads openly. I want to get banned. Okay. I want to get banned off this dumbass subreddit. Please stop mentioning me on this stupid fucking subreddit. Okay. Holy shit. Every fucking time, dude. Every fucking time. Every time. Every time. Anything happens. Every time anything happens. It's like, look at this. Look at this. Look. Look at this. This is brigading. Okay. We all know which community is doing this brigading. We all know where all of this shit is coming from. Okay. We know where the fuck this is happening. Please. Okay? Boys. Response. It's not boys, 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 boys. This one is the magpies. This one is the... This is the other kit that I got. Apparently, this is like one of the most... Uh, apparently, this is one of the most popular, most popping teams. This one is the AFL team. Collingwood, I think. Collingwood magpies. Good old Collingwood forever. Everybody hates them. Um, because the, the person described them as the new England Patriots. It is funny. They think everything said against you is valid, but everything against D isn't. Yes, bro. It's cults. It's cultish behavior. They're in a fucking cult. I don't know how to describe it. They think we're in a fucking cult while they're literally in a cult. I'm sure there's plenty of stands in here that demonstrate cult like behavior too. Okay. I'm sure. But like, they literally do that. They don't fucking stop. How do you not recognize that? I don't know. I hope you enjoyed Melbourne. I heard you say the other day there's nothing to do. We li we are li lifestyle and food here. Plenty to do. It's just a different type of fun. Thanks for coming down here. Yeah. Watch Ole Grill Eric Adams on the Breakfast Club. I really, really, really want to watch that. I think I might watch that today. You know? 
<laughs> yeah, maybe Destiny's watching to be like, perhaps Hassan also left his child at home to go to Australia to fuck a fan's girlfriend and then get married to the fan's girlfriend and then also get divorced by the fan's girlfriend that he married after leaving his child behind, going all the way to Australia. Except I'm not doing that. I'm just having fun. You know what I mean? Thank you, 34MKD, for the 50 gifted subs. Maybe that's why he's watching. He's like, oh, is he going to also fly to Australia and, and do what I did, which is fuck a fan's girlfriend and leave his child behind? Two-time divorce champion. Is that why he's watching? Is he, is he still trying to fucking reel from the impact of being made a fool by those who are more knowledgeable on issues? Is that why he's watching? Because he got fucking absolutely cumstered and dumpstered by Norm Finkelstein and Moen Rabani, which he has continuously kept getting cumstered by over and over again, weirdly enough. <sighs> Maybe his fan base will start questioning why they actually thought he was an intelligent person or knew what he was talking about, especially considering that he just got absolutely fucking cumstered. Uh, Mr. Bornabelli. Yeah. You started cooking him so hard he had to tab away. Yeah, true. Girl blast off. I'm going to do it right now. Yeah, it's always fun when you uh when when he comes in here and then like <laughs> has to run away when he gets mad. <laughs> uh that's great. What is this? Conservatives are having a normal one. What is this? This guy Arab fucking dude, your fellow Arab got kidnapped apparently or not kidnapped. He was like memeing. Uh, we'll talk about that too. Um, uh, there's a lot of crazy stuff to talk about. The new Nico Milano video is incredible. Uh, Biden proclaimed the trans day of visibility for the 31st and it falls on Easter Sunday. The hugs are wilding out. Oh, got it. Biden, Easter, Olayemi destroys Eric Adams on Breakfast Club. Are you doing IRL today? Yes, I will definitely do IRL today. I have to do IRL today. I will do IRL today. There was a dude in the chat who was like, bro, are you going to do IRL today? I, I fucking came from two hours away to, c to come see you. Like, please, please, please tell me. And I felt so bad. I, and I, I think I missed him. Like, I, I don't think I saw him. Why is your head so small? Because um, I didn't work out at the library to make it big. Beauty is now poaching fear and gifts, shaking my head. Um, yeah, everyone has been thriving in my absence, honestly. Um, <clears throat> surely head size is equivalent to words per minute. Do we have a good, do we have a good uh, meme, a blast off meme? Wake that ass up. Yeah, I'm not wearing a Bishy Tush top. This is a AFL Magpies top. It's black and white, just like Bishy Tush is. Gotta wear more vertical stripes. I don't really like this one as much. I just got it because it's like popular. Calling with Jumpa. Hassan, why? I got it because this is like the one that everybody hates. This is the New England Patriots, is it not? Why are people getting mad? People are getting pissed at the Collingwood kit. Um, there's more. Hold on. I'm gonna show you more. I'm also wearing a an Essendon Bombers. Here's the clip you begging to be banned. You know, why are you why are you sending me the same thing again, Lil Bear? I already watched it. You deserve a little break, bro. You put the work in to keep the people informed and entertained. Why are people getting mad? You got the Pats jersey. Everyone fucking hates the Pats. Give me a goddamn meme, dude. Twitter has been going crazy over your thighs. Yeah, I heard. I, I, I actually, TikTok has been going crazy too. Was thighs like popping? I didn't know that. You got a blast off meme. Wait, dude from Gen V died? Which dude? No fucking way. What the fuck? Oh, that's so sad. Um... God, I have a, I have a tummy ache. I have a tummy ache, and I'm also feel like I want to throw up. Okay, uh, do, do, do. Gen V is uh the the boys offshoot that I watched. It was all right. It wasn't like that great, but it was it was pretty good. Uh, I am also like I said, planning on doing an IRL stream. Hold on, I'm gonna show you the other kits as well, the other stuff that I have. Get a Bundaberg ginger beer from Hotel Service. Please don't die. I need your content. Yeah, don't worry. I'm I'm doing my very best not to die. I saw I got pregnant in Australia. I did. I got M preg. Last stuff. Art meme I made. Oh, this is cute as hell. It's too late now though. I already blasted off. <clears throat> um, here, I'm gonna show you my other kids. I'm gonna show you my other kids. My other proper kids, mate. Hold on. Here, also we're blasting off. We're blasting off. We're blasting off. We're blasting off. I'm doing M preg. We're blasting off. Here you go. Um 
this is all I've been doing since I've been out here. Like I said, I've just been like going around, traveling, shopping, uh, shopping for like football merch because I think the football stuff is like very cool looking. And um, yeah, I bought another. I bought another like long sleeve T shirt as well. Did you shoot the cold ones? No. So here's the problem: we're not shooting the cold ones. There it is. I I we we could shoot the cold ones if I stayed longer, but I'm not gonna stay longer. The reason why we can't shoot the cold ones is because, unfortunately, it's Easter weekend and a lot of people are spending time with their families. So we just don't have, we didn't have time to shoot it. And if I stayed, we could, but I'm not going to stay any longer. I can't. I have to go back home. So, but nevertheless, I met Chad and I met Max and I met all the cold ones boys and I liked them a lot and we'll be able to, we'll be able to do it when uh they come to LA potentially so like we'll we'll definitely do a cold ones uh podcast for sure that is in the works that is in the future uh I however am planning on shooting a pod with laser beam today and I am planning on shooting a pod with uh with with uh, uh Chad as well and we'll probably drink on that one as well so yeah thought that was a Newcastle jersey but yeah so get excited get excited about that yeah um so that's gonna be today um <clears throat> when you're going to Japan I am not going to Japan any longer you sound so hungover I haven't even drank yesterday I didn't even drink yesterday I, it's just it's just straight up I, I I'm just tired I I've just been sleeping I will be live on Monday morning by the way I will be live on Monday morning uh and and ready to go be live and alive on monday morning hold on alpha change Ugh. the wallabies the wallabies Ugh. do you think chat realizes it's like eight in the morning i don't think chat realizes anything i think chat just uh reacts like a bunch of fucking animals to everything and they don't realize anything bring the arms back yeah so this is the this is the australian uh team like national team i guess the australian union team and um that's what i have um but yeah and i'm also wearing um shorts i'm wearing uh like i said the essendon bomber shorts and i have another uh, pair of queensland shorts as well and they're sick straight out of naruto don't wear that both god awful team jerseys guys i don't think you understand something anyone that has an opinion on which jersey I'm wearing right now doesn't recognize one very important thing. I don't care. Okay. I don't care what team is good. The only one I got that is like annoying and I got it because it's annoying is the Wallabies one. That's it. And I don't think people understand it because personally, I don't know anything about these sports. I didn't even know AFL was a different sport. I didn't even know it existed. And many people in the chat probably don't know that it existed. Many people in the chat probably just like me because they live in America, thought that there was rugby, and that's it. They probably didn't realize that there is an Australian football league, which is a totally separate sport and not like our football at all. It's a different type of football that is not rugby either. This is not just regular rugby. From what I understand, this is rugby union. I'm just buying the kits because I think that the colors are cool, and that's it. I think the colors are cool, and I think that... uh you know, the, the, it's like, it's funny. It was like, ah, wallabies, you know, uh, the Essendon bombers I got because they're stealth bomber. Like they literally are a, you're wearing the equivalent of a Clippers Jersey. I don't care, but I don't care. That's the thing, dude. You guys want to see how fucking stupid this is? Look, I don't know why they have this as their logo. Okay. But they have literally a stealth bomber as their logo. It's funny because like they don't make stealth bombers. It makes no sense. Australia, what is going on? You don't make stealth bombers. Why are you, you know, why is that your logo? You don't have stealth bombers. That's a B1 bomber, not stealth. Okay, whatever. <clears throat> I got it anyway, though. They do have a sick kit. Um, I like it. Yeah, they have the tradey shorts. I'm wearing it right now. I heard there's an American playing for Collinwood. Yeah. Texas man Mason Cox becomes unlikely Australian rules football star. Why is this video not available? Rugby is so gay. I'm sorry. Dude, everything in Australia is gay as fuck. Everything. Literally everything. And I mean this with like, you know, all sincerity. I mean this in a nice way. 
Australia is literally the gayest country I have ever been inside of. Your scary criminals are called bikies. Okay. Your scary like worker guys who bully people are called tradies. They're all wear the shortest of fucking shorts. They're all hot. Okay. <clears throat> like, I'll tell you this much. I went to Fitzroy, which is the hipster part of Melbourne. Melbourne already is like pretty hipster, but I went to the extra hipster part of Melbourne yesterday. And I realized something. Every Australian dude, like a normal Australian guy, already looks like a gay hipster from an American perspective. They all got the mullets. You know, they all wear the fucking shortest of shorts. They wear sick. They, they, wear, they dress up sick, like in a very cool way. So when I went to like the actual hipster part, I was like, gross. When I went to the actual hipster gentrifying art neighborhood of Fitzroy, they were just gross. Like they were doing like body modification shit. Cause I realized like it's all elevated here. It's all elevated here. Like the average Australian already looks like very gay and very artsy. So then like the hipster ones are just insane. They look scary. So uh, it was crazy though, because Fitzroy, I work next to Fitzroy, half of my clients are gay. Fitzroy is crazy. Because, like, it also, it's one of those places where you're like, who is responsible for the commerce here? Every store is selling, like, trinkets, beads. There's a store that's dedicated to selling beads. Every st There was a store that literally sells exclusively vintage garage signs. And it blew my fucking mind. I was like, how is this, like, how is there commerce here? Who is keeping this economy alive? I saw... 10, not one, not two, not three, 10 different record stores. And I'm not talking like, oh, they're selling CDs, record, like vinyl record stores, 10. I get having one record store. I get having two record stores, 10. There's, that's too many record stores. There's no way, crybaby much. <laughs> Bro, I'm doing a fucking funny rant, like riffing about, Australia and this dude goes <laughs> you've shown emotion it seems as though you are crying like a baby cry baby much question mark bro same shit in Amsterdam you need to go back to Melbourne for the Melbourne Cup in November that's where the classic clip is from have you ever had dreams you you can do beautiful we need to go back to melbourne the melbourne cup in november is where this classic clip is from because people want records to have to go to one area to buy them so they plan a day to hit up every store there are in the other suburbs um so overall overall australians they love eating and there's some damn good eats out here they love drinking oh my god they love drinking too much there's basically nothing going on there's basically nothing going on in the world other than fucking there's nothing going on in australia other than drinking and it's pretty pretty crazy my insides are rotting i have my insides are rotting i'm dying a little bit i'm dying a lot bit not a little bit i uh i've been fucking breaking out getting zits everywhere and uh that's it I saw what Kai is up to. Yes, I saw. I already defended her honor. I think that that is bullshit that people think it was Kai. What about the nature? Nature and drinking, not so bad. Yeah, I just don't do, um, I don't do any nature. Um, <clears throat> did you read Norm's tweet? No, I did not. There's a new new Norm tweet that just dropped. Goddamn. Seen any kangaroos? Yes. Um, any plans to visit Hawaii? No. Off topic, but I'm currently being tested for autism. You in this community helped me realize I shouldn't be ashamed of being autistic. Realize now I can use my stubbornness and tenacity for good. Love you all. That's crazy that you didn't. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm happy for you. I'm, that's good. Did you try to box with one? I did. Self-reporting is an Olympic sport now. What is this? Idol climbing animation. 100% pure Unca culture. This isn't fan service. This is actual realistic physics. Yes, boobs move that way. No, they don't. Yes, they do. I've seen boobs and they do move that way. Bro, her boobs are literally expanding vertically when she goes down. That's not how they work. Whatever. Arguing people on this platform is a waste of time. Anyways, fuck it. I don't care. They're all like this. This is all it's ever been. A bunch of cum brain tourists swirling around. A handful of creepy old men using them as equal parts wallet and weapon. Yeah. 
I mean, yeah, this is all it is. Melbourne versus Sydney thoughts. I'm going to give you all my thoughts in a second. Hold on. Will you be coming back with the boys down under? No, but the boys down under, they are coming to my house soon. They're coming in the summer. Like they're going to be around VidCon. So we're, we're going to have some fun when they get here uh, around VidCon as well. So take on yellow markers and video games. I have no issue with yellow markers and video games. I don't give a shit. All right, we got Mayor Adams getting fucking destroyed. We got Trans Day of Visibility uh, angering people. We already talked about the LSA rule break and how angry that's gotten the worst, most annoying, the world's most annoying nerds. Um, I hope that this will, uh, you know, the LSF ban of like uh, Destiny's tweets or uh, Destiny's takes about me and my takes about Destiny uh, is 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 great for me, obviously, and really bad for the absolute worst people. Okay, for the absolute worst people online, I really do hope that this will cause them to, I guess, uh, go and do something more productive, but it probably won't. I'm sure that they'll just like use all of their anger and resentment at, to hunt down other subreddits that they can brigade and use as another like avenue to shit on me. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just I don't know what else to say about that. I, I hope they get well. I do really mean it. Like I, I, I really, really mean it. It's like fucking cult deprogramming. Uh, that is a necessity at this point. They're already posting you on the XQC subreddit. Yeah, they already, um, they already completely took over XQC's community as well. I already, I mean, XQC loves that shit though. He he actually like legitimately, um, he actually legitimately loves it. So good for him. I mean, he can he can have all of them. That's fine. I don't think that's like a big vector, as it once was. Bro, stop coping. These YouTube stream title is a song crying. These people cannot be fixed. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, they're just. I don't think a lot of people understand that, like, people that do low-cow shit, people that do low-cow shit are literally the saddest people on the fucking planet. Um, people that try to make someone into a low-cow, especially, are just, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. Bro, move on already? That's so funny. Are you, I can't... There's no way you're fucking talking about me, I, I hope. Move on. Low-cow shit isn't as popular anymore? No, I think, um, think low-cow shit is, is definitely... It is definitely more mainstream now than it was before, but it's like it's fucking so bad. Yeah, move on like your two ex wives did, man. Come on. Oh, hey, everybody know ain't no party like a Diddy party. So yeah. this is fake. This is fake. Stop. Stop. Stop fucking complaining about people not looking you. Who gives a fuck? Stop talking about it. Hips like Cinderella. Are you okay, bro? You good? Bro found out his go wash. It's not real, bro. It's not real. This is not actually first chat of the day. It's not real, bro. This is fucking fake. Look how pixelated it is. LeBron looks so much better. Like, this is fucking bullshit. I I saw this. The I saw this. I saw this and immediately I fell to my knees. I fell to my knees at Kohl's, which is like Walmart, but in Australia. Okay. And I thought to myself, how could this have happened? And then I thought about it a little harder. And I realized it's fake. It's fake. It can't be real. It's so easy to tell. You guys. <laughs> You're so duped about this kind of thing. <laughs> it's cl clearly AI. Okay. Clearly. It's, yeah. It's uh, <laughs> ah, silly billies. You know, that's not, that's, yeah, that's not LeBron. That's actually Michael yeah, Jordan. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. That's good. You're so good. You're so right. That's actually Michael Jordan, dude. You guys are racist for thinking that that's LeBron. Yeah. Oh, hey, everybody know ain't no party like a Diddy party. So what is this? What is this? What the fuck is this shit? Where, where, uh, where is he? He's not there. I don't see him. I don't see him. Why are you guys saying that he's there? That's bro. You guys need to stop lying, dude, bro. You guys need to stop lying, bro. You need to stop lying. You said LeBron is a liar. And now look at you. I haven't seen him. I don't see him. He's not in the video. Where is he? Like, I, I didn't see him at all, actually. What do you mean? He doesn't. It's not. I don't see him. Where is he? Where? He doesn't. You can't see him. You can't see him at all, bro. You can't see him at all. He's not even there because you don't see him because he's not there, bro. Bro. Stop. Weather's kind of shit today, huh? Fuck's going on? That's not him. That's not him. Look, he's got hair. He's got hair. You see, LeBron is bald, actually. That's not him. 
That's not. That's not him. You would never. Bro, bro. Bro, he's a white hat. He's a white hat. He was a white hat. He was in there investigating. Dude, dude, dude. He, LeBron, he's a white hat guy. He went in. He, he, he went into the party with the underlying assumption that he will infiltrate and like figure out and, and stop the diddling. That's, that's a, that's not him anyway. That's not him. I'm saying that that's not him, but if he will, if it was him, then the reason why he was at the Diddy parties is to, to infiltrate. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh no. See, no, 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 no. That's a, that's, that's, up. that's just listen 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 that's just photoshop see lebron is lebron is bald look at his hairline here you know that's not his real hairline everybody knows his hairline is way, way different than this one okay this is, yeah. stop dude stop this is clearly fake this is clearly fake bro you steph curry fans have gotten out of control you need to stop you need to stop okay I think like all the old heads, like they got really mad. I have a, I have a new, I have a new take. I think a lot of the old heads that hated the, you know, we're, we're done with the nineties meta. They saw that on TikTok and they were like, oh man, I'm an old head. I love the nineties. Like, I don't think MJ was actually cooking up like plumbers and stuff. Like those guys are the peak of athleticism. Right? So then they Photoshopped all of these photos to make LeBron look bad. And be like, oh, he loves P. Diddler. Like, it's fake. Didn't LeBron just get a bunch of homeless people kicked out of his neighborhood? No, you're talking about Steph Curry, I think. Michael Jordan stands are trying to destroy the GOAT with out-of-context photos. Thank you, bro. That's crazy. You need to stop. You need to stop. You need to stop. That's him holding Diddy back. He's like, bro, don't do that. Don't diddle. Like, that's what he's doing here. Look at the grip. Look at the grip my man has on him. Look at the grip, dude. He's saying, like, hey... You better not be thinking about diddling. That's what he's doing there. He was at a function. He's a white hat. He's doing a citizen's arrest, bro. What the fuck? He's doing a citizen's arrest. He found him and he said, you're under arrest for diddling. That's what he's doing. People don't understand. LeBron is actually a good guy. He actually learned how to do law enforcement. He's not. I just... He's the goat at arresting P. Diddy. That's right. He's the, oh man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can't wait for you to explain this one. Oh, come. God damn it, dude. How does this, what is this even a graphic of? I, I don't even understand how you found, what is that? Oh. Oh. oh my God. It is top of the fucking hour. If you know, if you'd like to, what is this? Ignore the poster. I don't. Okay, okay, I'll look at the fucking Emmanuel Macron thing. Wait, what the fuck? Oh my god, what the fuck is this? Oh god. Anyway, here's the three minute ad break now. They're gay as hell, bro. What the hell? I also have a Queensland shorts as well that I wore yesterday, by the way, chat. And I really like them. But yeah, these are the Essendon Bombers. The Essendon Bombers. Self Bombers. Ah. Uh. I'm the same age as LeBron, and he just remembers Diddy of the late 90s, Hype Williams music videos, and J-Lo. He was everywhere. Anyway, are you going to gooch post again, even on accident? No. Have you had any fine dining? Yeah, I'm going to talk about all that. You know what's really funny? I, like, I, didn't, I didn't tell you guys like all the shit that I did. Um, so Chad basically runs Melbourne, like the Cold Ones boys do. And it's like, it's him and Laserbeam. I also met another Fortnite uh, creator, uh, what's his name? L is it Landon? No, Lennox. Shit, I can't. I'm being rude. Fuck. I'm gonna remember his name now. Lachlan. 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 Thank you. So, Laser Beam, Lachlan, Chad. Um, you know, there's significant others, that sort of thing. Um, we all get together and we go to dinner. We went to this place uh, that is like the tallest tower in Melbourne, and it was like this insane fine dining. Uh, like 11 course meal basically with like special cocktails made for each individual uh, special cocktails made for each individual course it was phenomenal then <clears throat> after that after that we went to a strip club 
It was actually pretty good. We went to Spearmint Rhino. Uh, Voudemont, yeah. Voudemont. Stop bragging, sir. I mean, should I not? I, I don't know. Is that like bad taste to explain what I did in Australia? I feel like you guys want to know, right? I mean, I don't have to explain it. I don't give a shit. It's not fucking bragging. Um, but yeah, Spearmint Rhino was actually very clean. It was very nice. Like I, I was, uh, I was actually a fan. I normally, I haven't been to strip clubs in a while. Um, I haven't been to strip clubs in a while, obviously, as you guys know. But like the one I went to here, pretty good. Um, uh, pretty good overall. Good strip club overall. Uh, I think maybe because like now that I've done pole dancing, I have like a different, I have a different reaction to uh, strippers and what they do in general. Like now that I've done pole dancing myself, it is so like, I just have, I just think it's like crazy how hard it is. Right. Um, I've been to the biggest one of that. It was nice. Got laid. Congratulations. You can appreciate the athleticism. Yeah. Um, they have legal brothels down there. Yeah, I heard. I didn't even know that uh, prostitution was legal here. Like, sex work was, like, totally legal here. Um, but, yeah, uh, the strip club was great. After that, we went to the Crown Hotel, and I uh, took a 1,000 off the boys to gamble with, right? And I didn't have my passport, so we couldn't go up to, like, the high roller room or whatever. But, like, we were just kind of fucking around downstairs. And um, I took a 1,000. To give back to them, obviously. And we just started gambling. We started playing blackjack. And I'm just like playing for an hour plus whatever. Remember Victoria's a labor state? Yeah. So I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. And, you know, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to give you 500 back. And then I'll just owe you 500. And then I'll finish off with this 500 that I have. Uh, the The $500 that I have remaining, I'll just waste. Like I'll lose and then I'll be done with it. Because I was like, it's getting late. I want to stop gambling. I'm getting tired. So I went all in, went half in and then all in. And holy shit, dude. I went on a fucking tear. I went from having $500 to having like literally $3,500. I took the $500 um, on, off the top, gave it back. So now I, I you know, paid back my, my uh, original $1,000. And I made like... Two thousand six hundred dollars. Then I realized it's two thousand six hundred Australian dollars, so it's not real money. So it's fake money. But yeah, now I just have like a fucking wad of cash, and I've been trying to buy shit with it. Um, but it, because it was so late, I stopped playing. Congratulations, you made two cents. Yeah, I made like a couple hundred dollars. I mean, it's like a thousand dollars. I realized, um, God, I'm so sick. I want that kind of luck gambling. You met my brother at the bar. Oh, is your brother is working there? You met my brother at the bar? I mean, was he the one working at the bar at the Crown? Because I took photos. It was really funny. I took photos with these dudes, and apparently they're not allowed to do it with their own phones. So, like, we took it with David's phone so David could send it to him. Um, but, yeah, it's kind of crazy. I never, I did not, yeah, he was the worker, yeah. I did not realize how many, I did not realize how many Hasanabi heads are in Australia. Did you look at your train card in your wallet at any point? What? My train card? Oh, 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 yeah, I did. I, I showed it to Max and, and Chad. Uh, yeah, no, I, I carry that everywhere with me. <clears throat> did you get as many photos in Italy? So much more. Uh, an insane amount. Like, there are places in Australia. There are places, honestly, like... We'll be in Melbourne, like, randomly walking, and I just get, like, swarmed one time, and then it's over. Then it becomes, like, literally, and the cameras are not on, so it's not like people know where I'm at. You know what I mean? Um, I'll just randomly be, like, walking around, and then we get fucking swarmed, and then once we get swarmed, it's over. Like, there's, you know, there's, like, 10, 15 people in a row taking photos with, which is crazy. Like, I never thought that that would be the case in Australia, but it is. It's like, it was more popping than England, dude. Australia, I think out of, like, all of the English-speaking countries, uh, I mean, to be fair, I've never been to Canada, but Australia out of, like, you know, many places in America, I feel like I had more fans here than than anywhere else. All the Aussie Hassan Abbey heads know each other. That makes so much sense, especially because um, Australia is very tiny, what the fuck was that? I'm posting my kids. Melbourne is a very leftist city. I'm an Aussie Austin Abbey head and I've introduced you to so many people. Hell yeah, dude. What is this? Tomorrow is Trans Day of Visibility. Yeah. 
Would you want to move to Australia, like you said, with Japan? I've been in my top five since I decided to immigrate. Um, honestly, I like Australia more than many other cities I've visited, but no. I The only place I've ever wanted to, like, uh, that I could ever see myself living in, other than America, is Japan. But there are also many, many uh, setbacks with Japan, as in they only speak Japanese, and I don't speak Japanese. For Australia... I really like it, and I will come back here for sure. I will say it like this. Australia was not offensive and, and shitty. Like, the, I don't like England. I don't like England at all. I have a lot of friends there, so I have to go there. I have business there, so I have to go there. But, like, I don't like going to London. I usually just don't like England at all, and I don't want to go there. I never i am like, oh, man, I have a hankering to go to fucking England, right? Um Whereas whenever, but like Australia is beautiful. The cities are walkable. The weather is great. The people are friendly. The food is incredible. So consistently good, which is shocking to me. Oh my God. We had so much hot pot. Like we had the Asian food is good. The Australian fusion cuisine is like shockingly pretty good. It is, it is definitely, it is definitely very like it is an overperforming common commonwealth uh, wealth state. It is really, really, really good. Um, the meat quality is really high too. In general, I yeah, I really like Australia. I like Australia a lot. I think like Australian humor is also very similar to my humor as well. A lot of pedo jokes, like a lot of fucking like a lot of edgy humor, but smart kind of, and also very dumb at the same time. I don't know how else to describe it, but like, I totally understand why I totally, totally, totally understand why they have, uh, are you guys throwing up Hans? Like shit. I was just talking about fucking LeBron James being a white hat pedophile. What do you mean? Huh? Like, what is that? What do you think just happened in l literally the last 30 minutes? Do you think that's a normal joke that normal people like that you take for granted in this community? Like, what do you mean? <laughs> How are you going to throw Huzz? Like, what What do you... <laughs> like, we have a very... Guys, we have a very specific sense of humor here in this community. Okay? And and that is not really reflected by normal people in the normal world. Except for those in Australia. So, bro said the meat quality was high. Oh, the meat quality is really high. Yes. Oh, you... <laughs> oh, like, gay? Uh, yeah, exactly. That's what I meant. I meant, like, I'm sucking penises. Um... No, I, I mean, the meat quality is really high as in like, uh, I don't know, it's just high. I don't know how else to describe it. It's great. You said the humor was really smart, like calling people pedos. Anyway, whatever. Yeah, Australian meat standards are super high. I get it. A reminder that Hassan doing normal, fun content and collaboration is a really good positive on introducing people who might be casual watchers, leftist politics. People see him in a different light and are more receptive to agit prop content that he normally makes. Thank you, Rogue Stereo, for getting it. That is exactly the point. That is why I do what I do. This is it. Hassan blatantly talking about Marxism to Dems is something I love. I thought I hated this dude, but after watching this interview, it turns out I do not, in fact, hate this dude. Really refreshing, and I'll be following him on everything. I think one of the things Hassan's platform that he almost touched on is that the messages he advocates for are a lot more palatable for people who aren't on board when it comes from a guy like him. I'm trans, and a normie transphobe will never hear me out. They will hear out a giant broy white guy. It's what makes such a valuable advocate. I'm an old lefty and I watch this kid a lot. I like that he's unscripted and makes mistakes sometimes. He's not afraid and that's refreshing. He's also really funny. Props PSA for having on Hassan. The Dem party needs to embrace people like Hassan, not push him away like a lot of moderate staffers DNC might want. This is awesome. I hadn't heard Hassan, but for a wholesome show, it was spot on, particularly on voting local. Your commissioners and council members have more impact on your life than anyone else. There it is. <laughs> And for the record, this com these kinds of comments are so consistent. They're so consistent with, um, with, with uh, all of my collaborations. And by the way, I experienced this. I personally experienced this here when I was in Australia. The fucking Cold Ones boys thought, and they've had Ludwig on, remember. They had Ludwig on. Ludwig is a good friend of mine, and we're very aligned on a lot of shit. And those guys personally thought that i was like the most annoying like they were they thought i would hate them they thought i was going to be like an annoying no fun having killjoy woke scold okay because that's the vibes that they have seen from other people especially like uh twitter impression farmers and shit like that that's what people think that's what people think of us that's what people think of me that's what people think of my community 
And it literally makes it makes people scared to even collaborate. You know what I mean? Which is why I, I like which is why I like doing this kind of stuff uh, more and more frequently because I want to make sure that people understand like that's not what this is about at all because that yields such positive results that yields such tremendous and 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 positive results overall uh, as far as like um, uh, that yields very positive results overall as far as uh, you know getting normies on board with like this kind of politics. So if you like my kind of politics and you want more normies to to get on board with it, do the exact opposite of what these fucking freaks do online who don't like my politics and use every waking moment to make me look bad so that like I'm unapproachable to normies because that is the ultimate decision. It's just the hyper online people that get fucking weird about you. Exactly. Yeah. That's why Emery was shocked when I said the word libtard, for example, how'd you get along with Chad? I'm sure it was just chill. Just curious. I love cold ones. I got along very well with Chad. I think he's a very, he's a very interesting dude who says a lot of fucking unhinged shit specifically to get a reaction out of you. But like deep down and uh, uh, beyond that, he's like a very nice person. He's like a really nice person here. You want to know why I'll tell you this much. Okay. I sit down for dinner with laser beam and, and some other, uh, some other Australian friends. Every single person is like, Hey, listen, when you meet Chad, he's going to say stuff. Okay. Please. When you meet him, he's going to say stuff. Please don't, like take it personally, please don't get serious. Uh, um, you know, he's gonna, he's, he's gonna say shit. That's gonna, you know, that you're going to respond to. And he's trying to get a rise out of you. He's actually a good guy. I promise you. He's a good guy. I promise you. He's a good guy. Keep saying this over and over again. Okay. Which I thought was really funny because they were like gearing me towards this dude being like saying like, you know, on his shit. He is very similar to Miskiff in many ways, by the way, uh, Chad is. Like, in the way that he operates. Like, he's very ADHD. Okay? But they're, like, de-escalating. And, of course, lo and behold, I meet him. And the first thing I saw was that uh, he was talking to uh, one of the, the ladies at the restaurant that they were at. And he was very, very accommodating and very kind to that person. And I was like, all right. Yeah, this guy's not a fucking asshole. That's it. He was, he was very nice to... Uh, everywhere we went, it was very, very, very over the top nice to the people that actually work at these places. Um, and, uh, you know, he's just, uh, he's just like, says edgy shit. And immediately I was like, okay, I get it. Like, he's just, he's just Australian. I like your politics and will always support you, but your take on countries are not great. Each country has good parts and bad parts and blanket statement sucks. This sucks. And that sucks. Is very dumb. What? You British, British chatter, 100% British chatter. Chatter, are you British? That's got to be a British chatter. That's a that's a that's a chatter from England. One hundo p. Listen, British person spotted. He's Brit posting. Anyway, listen, you're absolutely right. Every country has phenomenal places and places that are not as good. Okay, that's perfectly normal. Um, it's just uh, I'm just talking about my preferences. Okay, what is this? Melbourne and Sydney are great cities. Food is good in Aussie land, but it has a lot of racists. I think he still is a British chatter. I'm telling you. Let's see. You suck too. So many bad takes. It was a long, dumb joke. Love the meat. Australia and England are the same country? No, no, no. I think Australia is on top. Bro, I, I, I will stand on this. I will, stay, I will say this with my chest. I think Australia is better than England. I do. For me, and, and what I like, I like Australia more. And I'm supposed to like England more because England is like more... Uh, on board with like developing and, and being like a full blown fucking city. But I do like uh, Australia. Dude, you can't beat it. The sun fucking actually is out here. You know what I mean? Right now, this is a very like London style day. It's it's not very nice right now. It's not very nice out. It's only 57 degrees, very cloudy. But like, but London is like just really fucking the weather is so bad, dude. It makes so much sense why these motherfuckers colonize the whole planet. Okay? It makes so much sense. If if England had good weather, it would be OP. If because like when you're in London, when you visit London, if you go in like the summer, if you go in like a good time, and there's that one fucking day where the sun is out, you're like, God damn, what a beautiful city! Actually, London is amazing. Like you forget the the weird scents that you smell. You you forget that there's you know trash and stuff. You forget uh you forget all the weirdness for a brief moment because it's like oh my god, vitamin D. Oh my God, this could be a livable place. And then boom, it's a, it's a fucking mirage. Okay. 
it's gone. It's gone like that. And then all of a sudden you're back. You're like, oh God, this fucking weather, it sucks. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's just, it makes so much sense that these guys literally colonized the planet because it is not like it is uninhabitable. The weather is so bad. It is uninhabitable out there. It makes sense. I would, if I lived there, I'd fucking do the same shit, uh, which has better food. I mean, the, the immigrants carry in both of these places, so it doesn't matter. Like, it's just... Uh, Australia has, like, more consistently really good food, though, I think. Oi, you're telling me you'd rather have a beachfront mansion in Melbourne rather than in Brighton? Are you fucking mad, bruv? I'm fucking, I'm fucking mad, bruv. I'm out of my fucking mind, yeah? Thoughts from the Netherlands, specifically Amsterdam. I love Amsterdam. Um, what did you think of the Geordies? Uh, he's great. Interesting guy. Um, okay. <clears throat> NYPD chief of patrol is very mad uh, at Oleemi. I do want to watch this. I also want to talk about this thing a little bit. Like, I don't know what the fuck's going on, but this is your fellow Arab guy who's like, like one of those farmers, basically. Uh, impression farmers got uh, kidnapped. I was kidnapped purely for the color of my skin. I was kidnapped for being a Blanc. Can't give any more detail till I'm home, but all I will say for now is glory be to God. Release between Good Friday and Easter, Christ is King. When you're kidnapped in the middle of the Haitian desert, 60 minutes away from any civilization, a concrete shack surrounded by barbed wire, you don't pray to a rainbow flag, you pray to God. So the grift never stops. The grift never stops with fucking weirdos like this, okay? It's pretty funny. I don't know if he actually got kidnapped. I don't know if he just like made it up, but it's so funny that this dude like... uh. It's, it's just funny to me that this dude just never stops. He just literally could be like, he could have a gun pointed at him and he'd be like, yes, dude, glory to God, hallelujah, you know, Christ is king, fuck trans people. <laughs> In my final breath, I will say fuck trans people. <laughs> it's like, bro, trans people didn't put your dumb ass in Haiti, okay? It was your fucking stupid ass that, that did that, okay? It was your own stupid ass and your interest in fucking wanting to get clout. I guess Jesus Christ was a bit of a clout chaser too. You know what I mean? What's up with the disciples and shit? Like he's walking around trying to fucking convert people. That's what I'm talking about. He maybe he maybe that's why all the Christians are like this. But it's so funny to be like, um, it is so funny to to basically be in, a guy who's like a, a YouTube guy who's always like, I'm going to the worst places on the planet and like I'm gonna fucking do poverty porn. I'm gonna do crime porn. You know, like that kind of stuff. And then you actually get like jammed up in one of these situations. And your first inclination is to, like, continue the grift down, like, like the classic right-wing Christian guy. It's like, bro, nothing about what you're doing is Christian, okay? Nothing about what you're doing is religious. Nothing about what you're doing is, like, actually Christian. Like, an actually religious person is not just, like, trying to fucking make a mockery of people who have way less than you, okay? An actually holy religious person is, is going to try and help these people, not make a mockery of them and make fucking money off of them. Uh, an actually religious person is not going to be like, oh, yeah, in my final moments as I'm, like, fucking locked away or g gotten taken hostage, if it, that even happened at all. I'm thinking, like, how can I make this about gay people and trans people? It's so fucking stupid. <laughs> this is funny. This is a funny response. <laughs> Them boys getting soft, man. You should be in a meat grinder right now. I was kidnapped for the purely for the color of my skin, which is so funny. It's like, yeah, dude, you got kidnapped for being white. Okay, well, then fucking don't go there. How about that? Hot take, you're more religious than most people nowadays? I mean, that is a hot take, and I don't know what you mean by that. I believe in big victim blaming for this guy specifically. Bro, there's a certain point where you're a victim of your own fucking uh, making, okay? Like, like there's a difference. There's a difference between, like, there's a difference between uh, someone coming up and, like, doing harm to you versus you actively going into a combat zone, like, deliberately. Yeah, dude, if you go to fucking... Here's the thing, guys. If you went to Afghanistan and you got shot by the fucking Taliban, I'm not going to be like, oh, I can't believe that happened. If you go to, if you fucking, if you go to a place where there's like <laughs> ongoing political violence, you might become victim to it. And especially as you're like a YouTube guy who is specifically going to these places with the deliberate uh, goal of like making a mockery of those people, then you kind of deserve it. It's like that fucking uh, Johnny Somali dipshit. The one time where I'm just like, come on, Israelis, pull through. Like, what the fuck are you doing? You're super racist. Use that superpower on this fucking guy. You know what I mean? It's like, 
He deserves to get his ass beat, like 100%. He's literally going up to people and fucking being an asshole to them, you know? It's just like, what do you think is going to happen in that situation? <clears throat> yeah, remember that one missionary who broke international laws to disturb the Sentinelese on a remote island and, got, and paid the price? Exactly, that's another one. So yeah, I don't know. I only know this guy is like a Tate Dick Rider impression farmer on 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 Twitter who basically who basically turned around and was like, "Wait, he's white, the guy on the right." Eh, he's not like white by standards, even American standards either, by the way. Uh I don't think. I mean, look. I guess he might be white though cuz he is saying the N-word and that is like very Caucasian activities. He's Lebanese, way less white passing than even you are. Yeah, he's doing <laughs> On the contrary, bro, Arab is doing cutting-edge journalism in ways that most people could not handle. He vlogs about things that some countries would consider torture. Fair. I spent 24 hours with Keemstar is, like, literally... That is infinitely harder to do than, like, fucking sneak into ha Haiti, in my opinion. Can you tell me where the desert is in Haiti? Yeah, I don't know what he's talking about. Um, Wait, what the fuck? I think I broke my uh, laptop a little bit because this top thing is, like, stuck. Which is annoying. What is happening here? <clears throat> Wait, why is this? I don't understand what's going on here. Uh, no. How do I fix this? Fuck, that's annoying. All right, whatever. Wait, if he's Lebanese, wouldn't he like the rainbow flag? Yeah, he's the he's the least he's the most anti-gay Lebanese man. Lebanese people are like the gayest. Pe Lebanese people are the Australians of the Mena region. Okay, literally the gayest people I've ever met. In my entire life. And I'm not even talking about Austin, actually. Austin is, like, straight up the most, like, uh, <laughs> not queer presenting Lebanese man. Have you met Lebanese people? They're so fucking gay. Like, <laughs> why is this guy anti-gay? It makes no sense. <laughs> uh, he's the second least gay Lebanese guy. No, I wasn't making a lesbian joke at all. No, I'm talking straight up about Lebanese men. <laughs> French colonialism and, and growing of... Microscope micro crops left Haiti, a barren wasteland. Uh, Will said you guys had correspondence back in the day, like he wanted you to rename your podcast before Fear and Malding. Oh, is that that guy? Is this that guy? Yeah, we were gonna name our podcast. Uh, what was it like? Problematic or something? What the fuck? Or no? What were we gonna name our podcast originally? Brand risk. And he was like, "Oh, that's our podcast. Like that's the name of our podcast, actually." Which does he even have a fucking podcast? Does he actually have that podcast? Because that's what we were going to name our podcast. And then we didn't because, like, he was, like, very mad about it or something. Or he wasn't really, like, super mad about it or anything. But, like, um, he just basically brought it up. And then, why are people saying Wubby? What's going on? He mentioned you a few days ago on... Why are people posting Wubbies in the chat? Aiden Ross owns Brand Risk. That's so lame. That makes me so mad that, like, we lost out on that podcast name for this dude... And all of you fucking dumb wokies in the fucking chat were like, uh, don't steal from him. We didn't even we didn't even want the fucking uh animosity for no reason. I didn't want to like hurt this guy's feelings or anything. And so we were like, all right, fuck it, we'll go with a different name. And then we did. And uh and then that guy basically turned like he turned heel. He he had a heel turn. He went from like a dude, I guess, who was like making normal content to a dude making abnormal content, as one does. And then uh, he, yeah, he 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 now is uh, doing that like anti woke shit. He's on the anti woke tip. He used to be a pro Fortnite player, by the way, Lamal. I love being kidnapped for two weeks in a country controlled by gangs and tweeting like I was kidnapped for being too white and straight. Stay safe, y'all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Hey, man, I'll take that. I'll take that consideration to heart when I fucking travel to Haiti. Okay, <laughs> like. Yeah, bro, he's just like me for real. I was I was walking down. I was walking in the CBD in Melbourne, and they were like, man, you're too white and too straight. It's time to fuck you up. <laughs> yeah, this is fucking, there you go. On the bright side, we stopped Hassan the Hunt from, from claiming it three years ago. Aiden Ross, you're welcome. Yeah, we're such, we're too nice, bro. We actually are too fucking nice. Look, there you go. He was like, hey, man, this podcast that we don't actually fucking post episodes of, is is you know called brand risk and you shouldn't take it you shouldn't take that name from us and it's so weird it's just like and we did it we were like all right sure we we don't want to like upset you guys me as a haitian gangster seeing a brown person passing by who goes by arab yo white boy <laughs> yeah blanc that guy is blanc 
Why is he bragging about keeping the name from you? Because a lot of these people, because a lot of us on cover up a bit trying to listen. Yeah, no, I'm I'm taking a stance against uh, Twitch uh, saying that they're going to ban people for being slutty. The C is mute. It's just sound blanc. Okay. Lots of misinfo flying on the site about International Transgender Day of Visibility, which is not a White House thing and not an Easter thing. Maybe this thread can clear it up. So let's talk about that. <clears throat> um, we are... Oh my God, my belly is like going crazy. Um, men are right wingers who think anyone would see them as white is the funniest shit. These dudes are so delusional. Yeah. That's like a pretty American thing, though. For all of its racism, America is like expert level racism against black people it's like second nature we don't even think about it it's like baked into all of our institutions all of our uh, daily existence but americans are not very good at being like specifically racist to other people like to other non-black uh it, groups i've talked about this before like like americans don't know how to be like properly racist to like pakistani people and like indian people for example they don't know it's very odd like Europeans have that cutting, like, very direct, epigenetic, like, uh, you know, genetic haplogroup style racism. Europeans are so good at being racist that they are racist to other white people, okay? Like, for example, the term WOG. Um, Alexa was using it, and I was like, what, is that, what does that stand for? And um, it turns out WOG stands for Western Oriental Gentleman, as in... When you're a Protestant and you go for like, or when you're a Protestant, but you still want to shit on people and consider them Oriental, like Serbs or Balkan people or um, uh, Serbs or, or, you know, just like Balkan people in general, it's like they're, they're, <laughs> they have a term specifically for other white people that are not as white. Okay. Like, think about that. Think about that. Like, imagine, imagine being. Like, imagine being so racist that you found a way to be, like, racist to white people that you have orientalized, which is awesome. Whereas, like, Americans don't have that at all. Americans are like, yeah. Americans think, dude, Americans are like, Mexicans are white now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Americans are like, as long as you're not literally black or, like, a Native American, or even if you're Native American, if you've, like, also had your, you know, identity erased, basically... Um, as long as you're not literally black, you're, you can, there's a moment where you can be pay, technically under the umbrella of, of whiteness. Now that doesn't mean that you get all the amenities. Of course it doesn't. Um, cause like <laughs> that standard will be taken from you on, on any given moment. Like, especially if you're Latino, you know what I mean? Um, you will be mistreated, but overall, like there is this broad categorization. They don't have this like very specific racism. And that's why you got a fucking Arab dude from Lebanon running around to, talking about how white he is. You know what I mean? And it's like, you go to Germany, that dude is getting hate crimed. One hundo P. That dude, they're going to be like, oh, you're Turkish. <laughs> Fuck you, <laughs> you Muslim dog. <laughs> but in America, he's like, I'm a white guy and I love Christianity and and being racist and and. You know, anti-white racism is out of control in Haiti. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. In Australia, it was also a little bit shocking. Like, it was a little bit jarring when I, when people were like, like, what what are you? Like, what actually are you? And I was like, I'm, I'm from L.A. Like, I was like, come on. What are you really? I was like, damn. <laughs> like, I'm, I was, <laughs> okay, from New Jersey? He's like, no. <laughs> Hope you got a good anchor on Victorian history on the labor movement. Yeah, I, I did. This is like a very fucking pro-labor city. The CM, uh, the CMFEU, uh, we were vi planning on visiting them. Unfortunately, they're only open on, they're only going to be open on 7 a.m. on Monday. Um, and so we won't be able to do that live. But they are fucking very militant. It was run by like a Maoist guy. Um, they literally have like Maoist slogans, which is pretty cool. Their merch goes hard. I was really, really, really interested in getting some of their merch. Yeah. Uh, let me see if I can find it. There's also a little bit of a racist history, not with the CMFEU as far as I understand, but like, uh, there's a, there, there's like a, like a mining, there was like a mining action that happened. Uh, I forget there was like a mining town and then they ended up killing like a bunch of the Chinese miners as well. Uh, because you know, you gotta, <laughs> you can't, you can't just do the, the one good thing. You can't just like do labor action without doing a little bit of uh, racism uh, as well. Let me see if I can find it. 
He's in tanks. The white Australia policy was directly because of the labor movement in the beginning of the 20th century. Yeah. Oh yeah, Eureka. The Eureka st uh, stockade is what I'm talking about. Thank you. I think. Where is the dog and your stuff, bro? I'm in Australia. Um, have you? Yeah, this is like what I'm talking about. Look, 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 look. This is the type of merch they have, dude. It's crazy. God forgives the CMF. The CFMU doesn't. Dude, this is literally, bro, bro, this is their fucking, this is their merge, brother. It goes so hard. God forgives the CFMEU doesn't. I love it. I love it so much. They have like, they have a lot of labor militancy. Hey, guess what? Australian labor, Australian labor is incredibly fucking stacked. Obviously, it still has a set of problems, but like, these guys are the reason. These guys and like all of their labor militancy is the reason why Australian workers, specifically in the construction uh, sector especially, are some of the highest paid workers on the planet. Isn't that crazy? Like, for example, it's Easter weekend, three-day weekend from Friday to Sunday. Um, guess what? Three-day weekend, right? Everyone is getting paid uh, plus 15%, like it, across the board. Like they're getting paid, I think, time and a half. Oh, it's a four-day weekend. Sorry. It's a four-day weekend. Everyone gets paid. If you're working, you're pay getting paid a time and a half, sometimes uh, double. Sometimes you're getting paid double. And um, yeah, they're they're making a shit ton. Like they're they're actually, if they're working, they're making a shit ton. All of that stuff, uh, all of that stuff is a consequence of like a, a tremendous amount of regulation that comes from, you know, a lot of uh a lot of striking and a lot of labor action. You notice how all the stores close at five two. They literally fought in the streets for that, except Thursday they have night shopping. But does that not account or attribute to the insane AU real estate market? No, because that's capital. That's the problem. That's capital. Overtime is uh, overtime is time and a half. Public holidays are double X pay. They stack. Yeah. So so the thing is, um, the the Australian uh, the Australian. Uh, uh, developer market like real estate market is also pretty fucked but my point is uh you know there's not there's not too much you can do with labor unions on that front um i mean the best they can do is ensure that uh when there's a steady development occurring like when they're making when they're building big buildings and shit at least like they're getting paid well while they're doing that you know what i mean you need to stop working out your arms <laughs> chill bro you're giving me body dysmorphia Random anime question. Would you watch Full Metal Alchemist? I have. Great. I love Full Metal Alchemist. Dude, I walked 12,000 steps yesterday. The AU real estate market is due to capital gains, tax discounts, and negatively gearing as well as supply shortages due to homeowners discouraging high-density housing. Yeah, there's a reason why Melbourne is also 30% cheaper, uh, has a real estate market that's like 30% cheaper than Sydney, and has actually been increasing in population size uh, rapidly. Okay? You want to know why? Because they're fucking building. They're building like nonstop. And Sydney obviously has like limitations as to how they can build. I think they can only build in one direction in Sydney because it's like too much water and too much like, uh, uh, like there's too much greenery, I guess. So they can't like build everywhere they want to, and they don't want to build higher. So, um, Sydney has those limitations as well. Whereas in Melbourne, they're like building everywhere in every direction. Um, yeah, there's too many like rainforests around, uh, Sydney, whereas Melbourne is like, able to grow and it is like going to it is slated to pass sydney in population size in the next couple of years and while that is happening they've still been able to like i said keep their real estate market 30 percent cheaper than sydney 30 percent more affordable than sydney you can only do that if you're building you have to keep building nonstop. but i love that there's a free tram inside of the cbd i love how walkable melbourne is i think it's great anyway now let's talk about a city that is not so great. New York. In the morning. Concrete jungle where dreams are made of, where our friend Ol Ola, um, Oleemi, Ole, went and duped it out with Eric motherfucking Adams. She apparently fucking ripped him. I saw clips of this. Oleemi. She fucking ripped him. Yep, and we got a special guest in the building today. Ladies yes. and gentlemen, New Adams York City, Eric Adams. And Come we on, have uh, Oleemi, Olorn. Yes, right here. 
Good morning. morning. Good morning, man. What's How you feeling, man? Good, good, good. You know, you know. Even before we get into the conversation, I was with Jordan the other day, my son, and uh, somehow your name came up. Mm -hmm. And there was a group of young people in the room talking about politics. It's amazing how so many people are into politics now. And amazing. They came up with saying something about there were people saying that how you were trying to push Trump, push Trump, push Trump. And so Jordan pulled up this video, one of your shows, mm -hmm. where you broke down each time you were talking about what was wrong about his race. Absolutely. And just broke it down piece by piece. And Jordan said, Dad, you know what? Truth doesn't matter anymore with nope. folks. People don't care about truth. Nobody cares about <laughs> the truth. They don't care about nope. fact. Facts nope. no longer exist. I've never pushed Trump. I actually, <laughs> you know? I actually do the opposite. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we are in a generation where everyone gets up in the morning, look on social media and whatever's on there, they identify it as the fact. The headlines. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. No one goes into the body of the story. Everybody's just, well, you know what? This is what the headlines say, and that's the reality of it. And so it was like an eye-opener for him mm -hmm. of how he, I said, Jordan, for over and over again, that one moment took away all those years of me saying have your own facts that's don't right. let anybody define for you you define for yourself that's right you know and that's the power of this microphone that's mm -hmm. the power of, of media of Absolutely. putting those facts out if we don't control the message the message will control us well, we got a lot to talk about today <laughs> a lot. Your, your city so yeah uh today we reported earlier about uh congestion pricing right yes. mm -hmm. um What's your what's your thoughts on that? I, I think it's gonna it's, it's gonna cripple New York City. You got a lot of people. The bridge is already the tolls are already high. It's seventeen dollars I think for George Washington, eleven dollars for the Midtown tunnels. Uh, parking is is extremely high. Uh, and now getting into the city, it's gonna be even. It's gonna hurt a lot of people to even drive in the city. And people are scared of the subways. You know, with everything been going on, people getting you know pushed into the train stations, crime, and people are scared of New York City. That's so. a lot. Let's unpack. Let's, let's do the first yeah, yeah, first. Right, 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 right. 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 You've been holding on happening. to a lot. I have. <laughs> I have. You know, holding on to a lot. So, but let's let's break it down for a moment. Let's break it down in pieces so we can really uh, understand it. First, let's deal with the stuff about people are scared of the subway. When I became mayor, no one wanted to be on the subway. We got over four million daily riders. Mm -hmm. I was talking to one of my guys. I was talking to her sister the other day, and she said, "You know, you have about two, three hundred crimes happening on the subway system. We have six felonies a day on our subway system out of four million riders. Mm -hmm. it, look at those numbers. Mm -hmm. our, our subway system is a safe system, and we put in a different additional thousand officers to do the high visibility to deal with the reality because safety is not only felt, it's perceived. Mm -hmm. So, if those six felonies, we got to get rid of." We clear, we clear on that. But people are back on our subway, subway system. But when you deal with specifically congestion prices, a lot of people don't realize these are the city streets, but we had no authority on it. Mm -hmm. Albany passed the law and turned it over to the MTA. This is the MTA's baby. They should have allowed the city to be able to control how congestion pricing was done. So that $15, we were able to fight to get $100 million to deal with the environmental impact in the Bronx. We were able to fight to get uh, those who are shift workers to get a discount, those who make less than $50,000 to get a discount. But this was a bill that came out of Albany. So you don't agree with it, or do you agree with it? No, I agree we got to deal with something with the congestion in our city, but you don't pass on the course of that on low-income New Yorkers mm -hmm. or those who have to come to Manhattan. You may have to have... Uh, Go into your chemotherapy, and this is the doctor you have to go to. You should not be hit over there because oh, of Oh, people that live in the area. They, they're saying that, that people that actually live in the area, when they drive, if they got to drive uptown to the doctor or they got to drive, they get charged too. Which yeah, but is... I, I'm not feeling people that live in the area. Mm -hmm. Central Manhattan, east up south of 60th Street, has the best transportation system on the globe. You got crosstown trains. You have south and north trains. You have buses that go across town. There's no place else on, on the globe that you have the greatest access to public transportation than people south of 60th Street. So I'm not feeling them. Mm -hmm. If they're saying that, you know, we don't have to, we don't want to pay, you know what, you need to get on the train. I take the train, you know, so you can get on the train. I'm talking about low-income New Yorkers should not have to carry the burden of that. And we ask to have more and a greater input and in the shaping of that, but we don't. People don't often realize we're creatures of Albany. Albany passed the laws. We have to implement the laws that are down here. Would you get on the subway? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 
I, th I think you're right that there is a difference between perception and fact and how people feel about safety and the way people feel about the subways. And I think it's your own rhetoric about the subways that has a lot to do with why people feel scared, despite the fact that millions of people ride the subway every day without incident. But you've continued to fear monger about crime in the subways. You've added 2,000 police officers, despite the fact that you've acknowledged that the subways are not that dangerous. And I think there is, you're right. And poor New Yorkers should not be the ones who bear the brunt of this, but they will if they already have the subway being turned into a place that they have to fear, that there's a National Guard, that there's a hypervisibility of police, that they're trying to stop people with certain uh, records from even using them, and now you have this congestion price. So how do you reconcile that? Well, let's, let's go for, uh, first of all, I would love to give me, give me the quotes on my rhetoric, because I'm, I'm lost on that. Can you give me the quotes? Oh, that on you which, fair monger yeah, about yeah, the subways? Yeah, give me oh, the... you've consistently done that since the day one of your administration. One of the first things you did was add a thousand officers to the subway because you claimed that the subways are unrideable. You and Hochul did this and said how dangerous it is, and you recently did that when you deployed the National Guard. Sister, but that's not, that wasn't my question, Queen. My question was, what was my fear mongering? What did I say? You I continuously say, I, I could point to a number of videos and quotes and everything from you, but you've said repeatedly that the subways are dangerous, that New York is dangerous. You complain about crime relentlessly. So what I'm saying to you is, if you are saying that New York is the safest city, it's one of the safest big cities in this country, which is true, and you're recognizing that the subway stations are, in fact, not half as dangerous as they're presented to be, I'm saying, how do you reconcile how your rhetoric has played into people's fear? Okay. And, and, I, I, and not even just rhetoric, I would say the actions, because she, she's right. If, if you tell us... Which is different. Which is safe, which is different. Know, but it's the same thing, though. If you put a 1,000 police officers in the subway, 2,000 mm -hmm. police officers in the subway, that don't make us feel safe. We think something's wrong if you're doing okay. that. Let, 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 me, let me first, let me peel back again, because you got to always peel back this stuff, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, oftentimes how you depict in the media that I don't control is how people interpret you. I didn't put the National Guards in the subway. The governor did. I know, I but I know what you said. But you said, but you said, Eric. You, you, never... you stood with Governor Kathy Hochul, and you co-signed that decision. You did. And I'm not saying this as someone who's following social media. I'm saying that as an attorney in the city and an activist who follows everything that you do. Yeah, if you, uh, I'm glad you do. Because mm -hmm. then you realize how I turned the city around if you follow everything I do. You realize I would, that I... I would say no, but we could get okay, to that yeah, next. Yeah, yeah, Loosen well. up your time, man. Yeah, it's going to be a long day. <laughs> and, and, and listen, and I enjoy every moment that's of right, it. That's right. You know, because this is what I do. Right. You know, when you, when you come with a serious history if you follow everything you know i do you know how long i've been doing this mm -hmm. and you know what my record is mm -hmm. so let's peel back what you just stated when people fear is perceived and felt mm -hmm. that's what fear is mm -hmm. so no matter as i share that we have six felony crimes a day with four million riders if people feel unsafe when we get in the subway system i ride the subway system and i talk to commuters and I say, what are you feeling, and how do I help you with that fear? They say, Eric, we see more visible uniform officers in our subway system. We're going to feel safer. We got it. We got it. Oh, let me. Can, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I peel it back? You can talk. Really? You okay. can peel it back. We uh -huh. No, I didn't fall in. Um, no, guys. Uh, you know, Australian food and Australian bees have uh, coursed through my body in a, in a way that I uh, don't think is, is good. Can you turn it up a bit? Yes, I can turn it up a bit. Uh, it happens. It happens. All right. It happens a lot. Did you hear about the cops in Pittsburgh cutting down to 20 cops a night? Yeah, I heard. Um, but I was listening to everything. Um, does the turlet water spin the other way when you flush the loo? I don't know. I uh, Fuck, what was I going to say? <sighs> Eric Adams is a meme mayor. Oleami's a public defender. She's incredible. She's great. Uh, she has her own YouTube channel. And, uh, and, 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 uh, what was I going to say? Eric Adams' uh, assessment here is, of course, incorrect. From the jump, his, his whole point is like, oh, well, people are afraid of crime. People are afraid of crime. Not recognizing that, like, a major part of the reason why people think that there's, like, this incredible amount of crime that's happening in New York is a consequence of how much motherfuckers like him are talking about how bad crime is all the time. And how they have beefed up police presence. He's a cop. He is trying to give as much back to his boys as he possibly can. Okay? That's it. That's his whole shit. That's his whole shtick is like taking money away from everywhere else and funding the police further. Even though, uh, ironically enough, the New York Police Department is like incredibly, incredibly expensive. <laughs> Um, Oleami's also basically the Eric Adams expert. Yes, uh, the formative Eric Adams expert, pretty much. Um, both because she combats his shitty policies on a daily basis, uh, uh, you know, in her own professional career, but also, dude, Ole uh, Oliami, Oliami rhymes with what? What is this word? 
Bro, you can't do a lot of rhymes with and then say a word that I don't know how to say. Like, if you're trying to teach me how to say a word, you can't be like, it rhymes with, like, th another word that I don't know how to fucking read. You know what I mean? You have defeated the point of trying to get me to say the name correctly. Okay? Olayami. Anyway, my point is, my point is, Olayami. Chatter is, chatter is wrong anyway. Wait, is chatter wrong? Is it? I thought it was Olayami. I'm trying everything in my power not to yell here. And I'm not going to because guess what? I took a day off, so I'm in a much better mood. So I'm not going to fucking, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it because not only are chatters wrong, but they literally are wrong loudly and proudly all the fucking time, dude. Just like when they think at the top of the hour, there isn't a fucking three minute ad break, but they are wrong. There is a three minute ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or free with the Twitch Prime by connecting your fucking uh, Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account where you get one free Prime subscription a month. Use it on your favorite broadcaster. Hopefully that's me, okay? Here's the three-minute ad break now. We, we, so we got it that the numbers are down. We got it that we're back on the subway system um, post-COVID. But when we see, this is what the public is saying. When we see the visible presence of a uniform officer, we feel safer. Now, you may say, Eric, I don't want to see a visible president of a uniform officer. And that's cool. But that's not what the overwhelming number of New Yorkers are saying. And I'm saying to you, the New York City Comptroller, Brad Lander, recently put out a report finding that 50% of the city is disappointed and does not feel safe based on your rhetoric about the subways and your over-police presence. Okay, so, well, sister, first of all, that's not what it says based on Eric's rhetoric. That's not... You keep they, using, no, no, no. no. They say, did they say based on Eric's rhetoric? Do you want to talk about based on your specific... No, no, sister, sir? I'm going back to what you said because you're yeah, an attorney. You they deal have. With they say based yes, on Eric Reddick? they have. The city is... There are... They have multiple reports. The New York Times, the Gothamist, the city comptroller, and the federal monitor who reports... Who reports, who's tasked with making sure that NYPD and Rikers are in compliance with the law, have both submitted reports saying that since you became mayor, there's been a return of stop and frisk, that there have been over 15,000 stops, 97% of whom have been on black and Hispanic people. A fourth of those stops and searches have been unconstitutional, and, and they've yielded very few results. Now let's, so let's, peel let's, okay, let's, yeah, let's peel it back. Let's peel it back. Eric Adams, 100 Blacks in Law Enforcement, testified in federal court that the federal court judge stated, based on Eric's testify, testimony, we are going to rule against the police, police department. We were dealing with a million stops a year when I was with 100 Blacks in Law Enforcement. My advocacy is what turned it around from that million stops a year. Look at the... Dude, Eric Adams is so funny because I've, I've talked about him before, but maybe you guys don't know. His background, like when he was running for mayor, the NYPD was very actually, they were very mad about it because he literally is like, he is, he, when he was in the NYPD, he was like, oh, they're racist. Like the NYPD is racist. Why were they racist? Because they didn't have enough like black people in positions of power. So he basically was like, <laughs> he is like, ironically, the type of person uh, that, that conservatives think it, leftists are. They use like real uh, social justice to like promote themselves <laughs> into better positions of power, uh, into higher positions of power, which is kind of what he did. Um, like he was never against like policing or like the racist practices of policing, but instead he was more so against like how racist police were to black cops, I guess. And uh, of course, you know that even that's not enough for the fucking Sergeant Benevolence Association. Those guys are fucking absolute freaks, right? Like, so they they were they were like, how this guy is is gonna ruin the NYPD? Meanwhile, he's just give them he's giving them like gift baskets, basically. Uh, Sakura Gore, thank you for the ten community subs, by the way, and the Tone Box, thank you for the five community gifted subs, allowing fifteen people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour. Numbers right now, right now. I am looking so at the my, numbers. My advocacy. And showing how to do policing correctly, because it's not that you want to eradicate um, proper police practices. You must make sure they do them right. And mm -hmm. that is what I have been able to accomplish in the city, taking over 13,000 guns off, off the streets of the city of New York, who the victims are black and brown people. When I go to community meetings and talk to community residents, they don't tell me, Eric, we don't want more police. They say, Eric, we want our police doing their jobs mm -hmm. correctly. And mm -hmm. that is what 
I'm doomed. The federal monitor, the federal monitor who is tasked with ensuring that NYPD is following the law, conducted or, under, conducted under an who? analysis. Same under who? Conducted an analysis that happened eight years ago, but they're still here monitoring <laughs> okay. what you're doing. And they said that you have brought back stop and frisk policies that are worse than they saw even during the Bloomberg era. But more importantly, they so, analyzed sister, the neighborhood. Safe... Out, they're showing that, so... I could show you the show, the report they is said... available, and I know it's been available to you because your spokesperson has commented yeah. on it. They did an analysis of over yeah, ten precincts. Keep, you can't keep putting ten out stuff different that's not precincts. Factual. It is factual. Well, there's a federal monitor reporting to Judge T. Swain on it and presenting and said what? The information. That be, they every... said that, yes, listen, so, let me so finish that... so you can peel it back. They conducted an analysis of 10 different precincts, mm -hmm. and of every, of the stops of 10 different precincts, they found that 97% of them, by the way, of the neighborhood safety teams that were disbanded in 2020 because of their disproportionate abuse against black and Hispanic people that you revived, they analyzed 10 of those different neighborhood safety teams and found that they're conducting 97% of their stops on black and brown people, and a quarter of them are unconstitutional. That's what the federal monitor said, not me. Yeah, yeah, and, and at the same time, let's, let's be clear on this, because what you're, what you're giving the perception of, this is a federal monitor that came in long before I was mayor. Can yes, we agree on that? It, yes, they okay, monitor number number, NYPD, not you number, specifically. Number two, you're right, the mayor. Right. Number two, I have been the mayor for two years and three months. Mm -hmm. We've had a tradition of over-policing for generations. And they that said it's worse that now I, that you're that, here. That I fought for. We had, we had, we had <laughs> issues of over Yeah, he's like, I fought for that because I like it. <laughs> See, he's admitting it. That wasn't a misspeak. It's like, listen, this is a tradition of over-policing that I fought for. Do you understand? Policing for generations that I fought for. Mm -hmm. you, we acknowledge what my history is in this place. So two years and three months, we are turning around, not only over-policing, but we're turning around the crime. Because when I came to this city, we had a 40% increase in crime. And most of that crime, black and brown communities. Black you and became brown communities. mayor after a global pandemic in which there was... Dude, here's the thing. He is doing exactly what right-wing reactionaries do very well, which is, one, say that, like, I'm cleaning up the metro station because rich people don't go on the subway. It's actually for the poor people. It's the poor people that are, like, being hurt by, uh, you know, crime that's happening in the subways. And when you actually look at crime that's happening in the subways, you realize that, like, as far as... Uh, how, how, as far as like how big the subway network is and how slammed it is and how much people use the subway stations, like the amount of crime that happens there is marginal, right? It sounds insane to say it like that. It sounds it, it, like, it sounds like I'm out of touch, but that's the reality. Okay. Empirically speaking, when you look at the actual evidence, like the crime being talked about is infinitely larger, uh, and infinitely greater than the actual crime that's occurring. And in a way, to to deal with this, like, crime that is occurring, that is apparently ma a massive problem, they've basically created the, pre like, the, the, the vibe, the attitude that crime is a massive problem, okay? But the greatest way to package that is by being like, well, I'm doing this for the fucking working class of the city, the six felonies a day, over fucking millions of rides a day. I'm, I'm doing it for those poor people that, meanwhile... You could improve those working class individuals' lives infinitely better by funding the social safety nets of the city and specifically funding the infrastructural projects of the city, especially making the metro stations nicer, uh, adding more lines, uh, you know, improving the, the infrastructure, ensuring that, like, there aren't so many delays. These would legitimately save uh, New Yorkers' lives and, and would make their lives better overall. But he won't do that. He only wants to fund the fucking NYPD because those are his boys, the boys in the blue. Record unemployment, business loss, homelessness, exactly. and you're not drawing that connection exactly. to it. You're making no, no. But what I'm saying is, crime has a crime is connected to what is happening in the city and the experiences of people. This is the most expensive city in the world. We had a global pandemic where businesses closed exactly. and people were out of work. So if you saw crime, that, it was connected that. to that. High, but you're saying level also of private sector jobs. Come on. Also, level you're saying that you've turned jobs. it around. NYPD's abuses, but just last year we paid out 150 million dollars in settling uh, police uh, misconduct uh, from right. NYPD, and, we, and that was double the wrong. number. That's double the number in police yeah, misconduct since you became mayor. I, you know, I, I noticed something. I noticed how much passion and and commitment you have. It's one of your constituents. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, and I'm one of my constituents too now. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I grew up in this city. I, I, learned, I noticed, and this is what I hear often of those who articulate 
when a person in a blue uniform commits an inappropriate act. Balance that with what we're doing to take the violence out of our communities. Because I know what I hear when I go to these community meetings. I know what I hear when I go speak to these mothers who lost their children to violence. I know what I hear. You are not even talking about that at all. You know, the, over, first of all, I, 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 I was a public well, defender. New Yorkers don't feel safe. But that's what you said. That's what you said. And my like, original you, question was about how you, you relate you to said, that. You said, you said, that's crazy to say that to a public defender, by the way. Like, she is more hands-on than you are, jackass. You literally do that as a part of your job in the in the, in the aesthetics front. As the mayor, talking to constituents who are victims of violence is no different than a ribbon cutting ceremony. Okay. You were more hands on with people like that when you were in the NYPD and in a negative way, by the way, not in a positive way. So disrespecting a public defender uh, in that situation is so crazy because like, she's literally there. She's a constituent. She lives in New York. She has worked directly with these families and their children every day of her life. What the fuck? You said that New Yorkers don't feel safe. Yeah. So there was the, a poll that came out with last week. Right? Yeah, right, right. And in that poll that came out by the CBC, it stated that the priorities of Mayor Adams is moving the city in the right direction. Mm -hmm. My priority. Now, remember, two years, three months, brother, two years, three months. I inherited a pandemic. I inherited 180,000 migrants and asylum seekers that can't work, that we have to house them every day. I'd her inherit. You, you, call, you called for a lot of them too, though. No, we didn't, brother. You said it was a sanctuary city. You told him. Okay, let's let's see. That's why it's important. Fucking Charlemagne, you are such a right wing shithead. I swear to God, dude. Oh my God, you called for them. That's like right wing framing. It's so funny to have a right wing guy talk to a more right wing guy. Like, no, he didn't. He didn't fucking call for them. That's so ridiculous. Okay, I hate this. I hate this so much. Sanctuary cities are literally an initiative created by law enforcement. It's so stupid that people think that this is like some woke bullshit, okay? It is a necessity for law enforcement to be able to, like, operate in areas where there are undocumented migrants because undocumented migrants do not cooperate with the police. Undocumented migrants do not, like, they don't, they refuse to cooperate with the police if they're afraid that police are going to be like, oh, you're undocumented. We're collaborating with federal law enforcement. We're going to get you deported for being victim to a crime. Sanctuary cities were created by law enforcement agencies specifically so that they would eliminate the fear of deportation so that undocumented communities would be more collaborative with law enforcement. That's simply what it is, okay? It's not to say like, oh yeah, you get to be here and uh, we love you and, uh, you know, I mean, they should. They should technically say that for undocumented migrants. Like, who gives a fuck? They're human beings, you know what I mean? But the idea that, like, uh, sanctuary cities in, in and of itself is like some woke agenda from the left is so stupid. Makes me mad. That's oh, why it's important to my, have this conversation here. because sanctuary city and the migrants and asylum seekers are two different issues. Sanctuary mm. city, if you're undocumented, we can't turn you over to ICE or authority. Mm -hmm. Migrants and asylum seekers were paroled into here. They're here legally. They were paroled into. But what the federal government did and Governor Abbott did, they said, we're going to send them up to Chicago, New York, Boston. And the federal government is saying, Eric, you can't allow them to work. you got to give them housing. You can't stop the buses from coming in. You cannot turn them over to ICE. All of that is illegal. If I if I do that, we're breaking law. Mm -hmm. So when people look at the migrants that are that are here, we didn't call people to come here. They were sent here by Governor Abbott, and the failure to secure our borders is allowing this to continue. And we're not getting any funny any but, money from. We got about a hundred million dollars out of a four billion dollar price tag. Mm -hmm. Look at Chicago right now. Look at what's happening in Chicago right now. My brother Mayor Johnson over there. What's happening with him? Look what's happening in Boston. Look what's happening in Houston, Los Angeles. And then do a comparative analysis of what's happening on our streets here. Wow. Yeah. The only thing that uh, my brother Mayor Johnson he says. Yeah. The only thing that binds you and him, the only thing that's like similar is that you're both black. Mayor Johnson is actually sick. He's actually a good mayor. You, on the other hand, are not. Uh, ridiculous. My brother, he says. Okay. Eric Adams is the exact opposite of, of uh, Brandon Johnson. Okay. The exact opposite. He's not wrong about the migrant uh, stuff, though. Unfortunately, I mean, he is correct on the facts here. Um, he is correct on the facts here when he talks about how 
uh, you know, it's be, it's because like people are basically sending. Um, it's because uh, red states are basically sending without uh, prior information uh, to the law enforcement agencies deliberately to like uh, break the system. They're sending migrants. They're shipping migrants. Um, and that is obviously causing an issue. Seems chat disagrees with them about being a good mayor. Um, I think Brandon Johnson is a decent mayor. In, like, no, he's mayor of fucking Chicago. He's not going to be, like, the best. Uh, you're out of your mind if you think, like, he was going to make, like, uh, Chicago a communist safe haven or something. <clears throat> Especially when you compare him to literally Eric Adams. Like, come on. Yeah, he was blaming the border uh, being not secure at the root of the problem. Yeah, that, that's also wrong, too. The Black House and Ivy Head Coalition does not claim Eric Adams. He cannot call his brother. Yeah, I mean, he's he's awful. All right, let's continue. We dealt with that crisis, turn around our economy, outpacing the state and reading the math of our young people. I've been on Rikers Island more than any mayor in the history of the city talking with... Yeah, he went there. Yeah, he went there because he loves it, though. <laughs> he's like, I've been on... I've been on Rikers Island uh, more than any mayor in the city. Yeah, dude. It's because he loves it personally. Cities are going to be useless politically until we address police taking up all of our budgets. Inmates and correction officers to turn around what's happening on Rikers Island. I know you Island. go to Rikers in 2022 and there were three deaths back to back because corrections officers left their post and allowed it to happen. You went to Rikers to express your support for the corrections officer. I know you go to Rikers. I, no, what no, I do want you to well, do, Eric, you know what, Mayor that, Adams. But you keep you keep giving out misinformation. It's not misinformation, Mayor Adams. I'm quoting the I was on Rikers. He's also he's also going to Rikers to get baptized apparently by fucking Al Sharpton. I was on Rikers Island this week. Mm -hmm. This week, mm -hmm. with a group of 12 young brothers who recommitted themselves to Christ. I went to see them in the morning. We prayed together because they, they, they said, this is not the first time you've been here. You've been Bro, this is literally the same shit. This is no different than your fellow Arab getting fucking, uh, a re like, getting apprehended in, in Haiti and being like, that's right, Christ is king, guys. Like, just hit the fucking, hit the fake religious bullshit over and over again in an effort to like automatically win over the audience. God damn it, dude. I am not a fucking R slash atheist, but uh, R slash atheist by any means. Okay. But there is no group of people so gullible. There like no greater group of people that are like gullible enough to be like, oh my God, he is definitely, he's definitely with us. Trump does it. Eric Adams does it. So many fucking people do it. It's so annoying. I hate it. Been here over and over, visiting us, talking to us, nurturing us, you know, because I know what it's like to be locked up because I was locked up as a child. I know you were. So I know what it's like to be treated unfairly because I'm dyslexic. When you do an analysis of the number of young brothers and sisters who are in Rikers or in jail, they're dealing with learning disabilities because they were never given the support that they have. That's why I have dyslexia screening so we could catch people who are thrown overboard before they get thrown overboard. So we have, Adams, a philosophical, we have a philosophical dif disagreement. Your, Mayor, no, your, I, your I do like, I'm glad your, that you brought up your Rikers. Feelings towards, your feelings towards police is different from mine. These are not my, your this is not about toward, my feelings to police. This is about the actual statistics that I presented doing, from the federal monitor monitoring. We're not going to say about her statistics, though. Okay. I mean, these are statistics. These are federal monitor. Do you, yeah. are you disputing with the federal monitor and the actual, and the Think controller? About Think about this for a moment. Controller Brad Lander. <laughs> okay, please. If we're going to throw people in names on who we are. Uh, it's so funny. He just stops looking over in her direction. He has just stopped almost entirely in looking in her direction. You, you can tell. This is what Ann Coulter did to me, too. At first, she thought she could eat my ass. Okay. And then that ass started farting. And she was like, oh, God, this is not great. And that's what happened. Uh, when I debated her on, on that Fox channel uh, on Alex Michelson's show. <sighs> uh, independent sources. He should not be one of them. Think about this federal monitor. The one that was independently yeah. elected by yeah. the people of New York well, placed I there? Was, but I was independently elected also. And, and, and we've been there. And I'm addressing <laughs> so, you. So, so think about this for a moment. The federal monitor wants to take over Rikers, okay? Rikers has been dysfunctional for generations. Mm -hmm. I came in, decreased violence put in real incentive programs for young people there, but I didn't do it from a distance. I went to Rikers and walked the halls and talked with inmates. We're doing workshops and support groups with inmates and find out what do you need to be here? We instituted real 
turnaround programs there with the that sister is. that's now the correction officer. I mean, that's the commission of correction. Yeah, he's like there. So he's I, like, we didn't change the torturous conditions, but what we did change is like you now have to do mandated, <laughs> mandated prayer time. <laughs> Like, what do you mean, bro? Rikers is one of the worst fucking... Rikers is one of the worst prisons in the country, perhaps around the planet, okay? The conditions are genuinely torturous. People are, like, living on top of one another, if you could call that living at all. It is ridiculous. People die all the fucking time at Rikers. Um, America has a lot of issues with its criminal justice system, and Rikers still is, like, you know, up there. That's not true. The UK is the worst prison on the planet. Okay, like, as a country, yes. No, it's not. You do not know third world prisons. Oh, my God. The amount of copium that is coming from every fucking orifice is so... It, it's just... I, I am always in awe when Americans, living the wealthiest nation on the planet, will say things like, well, technically, uh, the, the fucking anti-terrorism prison facility that they built in El Salvador is worse. It's like... Okay, dude, I don't think you're making the argument that you think you're making. This comparison is idiotic, okay? You do not make comparisons like fucking Rwanda when we're talking about the United States of America, let alone New York. New York City. It blows my mind. Horrible mic. Wait, what? Really? I, I thought my mic is, like, good. Uh, even better. I got one, I got one guide again. The look. The lower the world, the worse the prison. Thank God no one has been in a fourth world prison. Yeah, it's like... Yeah, also, Rikers is not even a prison. It's a jail. Which is why it's even worse. Because, like, a lot of the people that are in jail are also not even convicted of a crime yet. Like, there's so many people in Rikers that are just simply waiting for their fucking court sentencing. Which is crazy. I don't get it. I didn't do like other mayors. I didn't sit back and say, let me just turn my back on what's Rikers. I said to those Rikers inmates when I got elected... I'm coming here, I'm going to see what you're going through, I want to make sure you leave here better than how you got here in the first place. And we started instituting programs to do so. So that same federal monitor, go look at the federal prisons. You That federal monitor wanted to take over our prisons after I had it only two years and three months. No, they wanted to take over my first year. Although crime was going, uh, yes. violence was going, violence was going down, and people say, well, Eric, you know, people are, people are dying on Rikers. Look at how they died. People are coming into Rikers in terrible medical conditions. And not it's getting not that, their medical it's not, appointments. It's not that they were dying because um, correction officers were killing them. People were coming in with heart problems. Well, heart under, problems. But, but under, Bro, that's crazy. He said they were like that before. He said they were like that before we got them. Who's he looking at? Who's bro looking at? It's not Charlemagne responding to you, bro. Listen, it is quite literally, definitionally, the law. OK, it is the law when you have someone in your custody, when you have someone in the custody of the state, it is the law that you have to give them adequate medical treatment. Him being like, oh, well, they were just fucking sick beforehand. That's crazy, dude. That's an insane thing to state, bro. Use the medical insurance defense of preexisting conditions. Yeah, it's crazy. It's not even like a one percent good argument. Yeah, it is a. You're right. It is just a very, very, very bad argument. It blows my mind that he thinks he can get away with saying this. Overdosing on, on drugs. When will okay. people in but Rikers start all, to feel that? Because I know I got people that are in Rikers right now serving time, and they hate it. They think it's disgusting. Yeah, well, They're trying to raise awareness to it. Who likes jail, brother? Who likes jail? Respectfully, likes Mayor jail. Adams, fundamentally, the things that you were saying. <laughs> wow. And then, who likes jails, brother? That's funny. It, it, dude, he... he He's just so bad. Why is he so bad at arguing these points? <laughs> Who likes jails, brother? <laughs> yeah. Except there are rules and regulations around this kind of thing. Specifically, <laughs> specifically so that, like, jail doesn't mean you die, okay? Jail does not mean you die. What the fuck are you saying? is untrue. You actually cut $17 million that were used for classes for people at Rikers, Rikers to re-enter society. Those were cut under your... Check out the program. Those were cut under your... Those were cut under your administration. Naked... What is this? 31 people have died at Rikers. What is this? Naked homeless man jumps on your back. What's the first thing you do? Beat him off or let him stay? Let him stay on my back like I'm... Like I'm big enough to let him live on there now. No, he can live on there now. He can live off of my back. No, I jerk him off so he gets off, dude. I beat him off. I beat his ass off, dude. I jerk him off. 
so he can nut and he can leave. Like Chris is Eric Adams, spending the gay man. Millions of dollars for these professional folks. Next these question. Programs, reentry programs, millions of dollars, seven people sitting inside the class. When I came into office, I said, that wait a minute, why true. are we spending so much money on programs, but our people are still in these bad conditions? People have profitized poverty. They have, they're making so much money yeah. off of black. Yeah, dude. Yeah, that's famously the like the group that we raised money for uh, release aging prisoner, uh, release aging uh, persons from prison, uh, you know, R.A.P.P., uh, groups like that, those those are the famously very wealthy people, you know? They're just always they're always making money. <laughs> if you want to make money, you have to help the most marginalized people in society. Like, people that you can legally torture and advocate for legal torture, okay? that's the Those are the people that you can make the most money off of by, uh, by saying, like, we shouldn't torture and kill people. Uh, homeless prisoners in Rikers. That's where the money is. It's awesome. What is this? Love your content, but your takes on Melbourne's uh, urbanism is very misinformed. We have an insane rental crisis and rising homelessness. Melbourne isn't as walkable as the CBD makes it seem like the outer suburbs. The only place most people can afford to uh, live in are actual shitholes with no nearby amenities. The free tram zone only helps tourists and wealthy people living in the CBD. Most people commute from further. Wait, what? We have an insane rental crisis and rising homelessness. I already mentioned this. I was comparing it to Sydney and saying it's better than Sydney. That doesn't mean it's good. I know that Australia has a massive problem. Uh, also, huh, chatter. Hold on. I need you to understand something really important. I'm from Los Angeles. So my understanding of your city, let me tell you, my understanding of your city or your cities in general is going to be very different. Okay? Okay. Talk to me when you see an actually impossible to walk in city. Yeah. It's like a, yeah, someone in the chat just said, yeah, this is like a, if a Norwegian was complaining about how like uh, shitty their prison conditions are. I'm not saying that. Like, I'm not discounting that there aren't issues, right? Of course. There is no place that is issueless. I'm simply saying what I have seen as an American living in one of the worst fucking cities in the nation perhaps around the world as far as walkability goes, right? With the exceptions of like Dallas and Houston. Those are really real shitholes as well. As a Detroiter, walking in LA was super exciting. Yeah. It's like a video game mission. Dark Viper AU cosplay. Bro, Dark Viper AU would literally not be as fucking awful as a person if he was yacked like this, okay? If he looked like this wearing a fucking tank top, he would literally be a much more pleasant person, I think. Dark Viper got a diabetes diagnosis today. He's got better priorities now. Oh, wait, what the fuck? Why do you guys keep up with him? I do feel bad about that. I'm not going to make fun of him for that. That's fucked up. At least he lives in a country where they luckily have, uh, uh, you know, free health care. And, um, you know, I hope he's all right. That's very sad, though. But yeah, why are you guys keeping tabs on this fucking guy? It's weird. Life after I began judging people strictly by how ripped they are? Yes. Um. All right, let's get back to the GOAT. Mayor, the goat mayor, Eric Adams. I know you're natty, but if anything, you were to make people think you were juiced up with them bolder shoulders, brother. No one who has ever taken steroids would think that I'm actually taking steroids. I My body fat percentage has been like unflinching, too unflinching for that. I can brown people because it's a lucrative business to come up with all these different programs, all these different ways. And then when you go to them and say, let me see the results of the programs that we're paying you millions of dollars for. for. And then you look and see, well, who's in charge of these programs? They don't look like us. Moments ago, you said you instituted programs. (laughs) And when I brought up the fact that you actually cut programs, now you're anti-program. Okay, 31, at least at least 31 for. people have died at Rikers since you became mayor. That's Fatherless why they're pushing no for a receivership. Fatherless no more. Program. Fatherless no more. This was this was the this was the, the brother, the pastor. Fatherless no more is called the program. And I would encourage you to come and check it out. This brother here, instead of saying, pay me millions of dollars to do uh, a program to turn around the lives of our young brothers in, in, in Rikers, we're not, we, he doesn't want money. He's committed to the cause. But you have these professional programs that were in place. Like, and when I went to them and said, show me. Bro, this is so funny to be like, hey, um, this guy's a real one because he's doing it without money. It's like, bro, what are you talking about? You know, you still have to pay like lawyers and shit, right? 
like half of these guys that work in legal advocacy programs, they literally are working at a much cheaper rate, oftentimes pro bono, but there's like paperwork that you need to file. There are people that need to do paralegal work. Like all of that stuff quite literally requires you to pay. You cannot do it for free. You cannot expect everyone to do that shit for free, especially in many instances where all those people that are doing it are doing it at a massive fucking pay cut or for pro bono anyway. It blows my goddamn mind that he has the audacity to fucking say this shit when we're talking about the inflated budgets of the criminal justice system that directly goes against that. It's about where you put your money. It's about where you put your resources. This fucking asshole puts his resources in worse prisons. In in When he's advocating for more funding to go to prisons, he's not actually advocating for good programs that lower recidivism rates. He's talking about cutting those programs, as a matter of fact. You guys hear the church bells? Going nutty right now. I don't know why it's at 1030. Church bells are going crazy. Can you hear it? Hold on. Hold on. Let me, uh, I don't know if you can hear it or not. It's because it's Easter Sunday, but like Jesus, he has risen. Can you guys hear it when I'm talking at least? Because the noise gate is off. I'm right next to the fucking church, baby. Yeah. Church is about to start, bro. Is Jesus an alarm clock? Jesus is coming. Praise be the Lord. He hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be. Jesus Christ has arrived. He has arisen. Let me tell you. I guess I should be doing it in an Australian accent, though. He has arised. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ has risen. Ladies and gents, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is risen on this beautiful fucking day. Right? Hallelujah. He will save us. He's died for our sins. He's died for our fucking sins. And now he's back. He's back from dead. He's back from the dead. And he's going to fucking bless all of us on his beautiful fucking day. Right? I'm, I'm continuously speaking so you can hear the church bells going. Because I feel like the noise gate is too high. And you can only hear it when I'm speaking. He's died for our zins. And he's back with a vengeance. That's right. It's still going. What the fuck? Yeah, it's Easter Sunday here already. Um, I, he has risen. Fuck is this? Okay, let's keep going. I have to pee. Show me the results of what you've done in these programs. Show me what we produce for our millions of dollars. As in many of these programs in the city that I'm saying, we're no longer paying y'all to just play us year after year. So Fatherless No More is turning around the lives of people, not being paid millions of dollars for it. If we're really true to what we say we want to do, why do we have to pay you millions of dollars to do it? Mm. You know, why don't you come on Rikers like I do and volunteer? Why don't you come and really be committed? Because people are not committed to us, brother. They've been playing us. You know, this is a street hustle that have been going on for years. And people have eaten off of the dysfunctionality of watching us stay in these permanent states of, 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 of being. A lot of people are upset, too. They feel like the, the prison reform is, is bad for New York City. They're saying people do crimes, they get out immediately, and then they commit the crimes. We just seen an officer that passed away a couple of days ago, rest in peace to him, and always healing energy to his family. But they say that individual was arrested for a gun and has a, a record the size of we don't know what. And they're saying that people are doing crimes and they're getting back out. Officers don't want to arrest people. A lot of officers don't even want to be officers anymore because the people that they're arresting get out so fast. So what do you say to that? And, and brother, let me tell you something. I say this term all the time. Idealism collides with realism. Mm -hmm. This far leftist mindset that believes we should not have a criminal justice system in place mm -hmm. We're going to look like some of these other cities that you're seeing with a lack of a criminal justice system. That's what they place. want. We're losing yeah. correction officers. Mm -hmm. We're losing district attorneys. That's what they We're want. We're losing police officers. We're losing probation Everyone officers. is always saying, We're losing everyone's always saying we shouldn't have a criminal justice system, especially, especially a fucking defense attorney, okay? A public defender. Close your leg, slut. I have to, I have to stretch a little bit. I'm doing a spot man stance. Spot a man. Uh, the the church bills are still agents, going. Every piece of our public safety apparatus that the everyday working class person wants, mm -hmm. we're seeing it all of a sudden erode, and we're going to lose the foundation of our prosperity, and that's, and that's public safety. So when you look at these cases, we have three problems in this city ah. that if you dig into it, you'll see how they continue to intersection between each other. What are they? We have one, we have a recidivist problem. This is not we, true. We, it's a revolving door. 
38 people that assaulted transit workers were, arrest, were arrested 1,100 times. 545 people that were arrested for shoplifting were arrested 7,500 times. The person who shot that police officer, his driver was just arrested for having a gun in April of last year. Now he's back doing the same thing all over again. These guys are arrested 10, 15 times. It's a small population of people that are repeated offenders. Is, the second problem that we that we have in this in 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 this in the, in the city is a severe mental health problem. I'm not talking I about just that. somebody that's depressed, someone that's going through a bad day. I'm talking about a severe mental health problem. Go look at these cases of assaulting um, p passengers, pushing people on the subway track. The cat that pushed the person on the subway track the other day, in and out of the system. Mm -hmm. And so when I came into office, I said, we can't keep just walking by these people that are dealing with severe mental health issues. Yeah, we gotta we kill need them. to give them wraparound services <laughs> and care. The far left pushed against me. Oh my you gosh. inhumane. You you just want to take people off the streets? That no, is, I said no. In this city, that people is not, not going to live. People are not going to live in encampments. They're going to live in tents. Go look at Los Angeles. Go look at Oregon. Go look at all these other cities where you see tent cities. San Francisco. You see tent cities. People. When I went out in January, and February, when I got elected in 2022. I went out without my security team and started visiting people in, in tents and encampments and started talking to them. Bipolar, schizophrenic, human waste, drug paraphernalia, stale food. They didn't even realize they were in that state. One cat was an ex-police officer that I spoke with, didn't even realize, started seeing and talking to himself. I said, I'm not going to do this. My city's not going to be like San Francisco. It's not going to be like... <laughs> We're going to kill them. <laughs> these other cities where you're watching people living on streets in tents and tents. You don't see that in New York, in, in New York City. Third problem we have is random. Yeah, you don't because the weather does not permit it because they die. And and you also imprison them. Like, what the fuck are we talking about? <laughs> ay, 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 ay. It's just like the worst aspect of this, as I've said before, is that homelessness is seen as like a manifestation of crime. It's the most visible crime, right? Both in the legal sense, it is a crime like loitering and, and crimes of uh, uh, like we have criminalized poverty, basically. Uh, so obviously, like it is directly a crime. But also it is how uh, we perceive it. We perceive homelessness as a, the most visible aspect of crime. It's, it's like a, it's as if you watched people pickpocket in front of you every day. Not to say that like, that's what homeless people are doing. They're not. But, but uh, we, we do visualize it in the same fucking way. We don't think about it as like a person who's like genuinely suffering who needs help. We think about it as a moral failure that uh, this person engaged in some kind of moral failure. And that's why he's in the condition that he's in. And that's precisely why uh, he must be, you know, uh, he must be dealt with through the organs of power, right? And so for that reason, this kind of argument, especially when we're talking about like mental health and whatnot, this kind of argument works really well when you're trying to present a reactionary, uh, when you're trying to present a reactionary point of view, which is what he's doing, which is what Eric Adams is doing here very well. It's that, uh, you know, these guys are are technically criminals and they and we have to help them, but like, what are you actually doing to help them? Not really anything. Uh, and, and you're further criminalizing their existence and you want to institutionalize them instead of like uh, working with uh, social workers and funding those programs. You know what I mean? Uh, random acts of violence. Those random acts of violence are being highlighted. If you have, if you have 24 hours in a day, and something that happens to you in an hour in a day, you start to define yourself as that entire day. Those random acts of violence are plastered on social media. They're plastered on, on, the on NYPD newspapers. Twitter page. They, they're plastered on everything. It's true. People begin to believe that, oh, I'm living in a city that's out of control. We are not. Wait, this part is also correct. We also have this understanding that like crime is actually a lot worse than it is as a consequence of the if it bleeds, it leads attitude that local news has. Uh, apps like Next Door and Ring and Citizen making it so much, making people's like panic so much worse. So yeah, Eric Adams also personally fucking plays into that. By the way, he literally does. He plays into that. He beefs up that narrative every goddamn day. He literally plays into that by adding additional law enforcement officers into every fucking traffic stop, or, or I mean every metro stop as well. Even if those guys aren't doing anything, sticking their thumbs in their fucking hands, playing Candy Crush on their goddamn phones while they're sitting around on the government dime. It doesn't matter because people look at that and go, oh, my God, there's so much crime. That's why we need, like, this level of enforcement. 
which is yet another way that Eric Adams is doing the exact opposite or rather uh, doing something that's unproductive for his own needs and for his own interests if he's genuinely interested in fixing the city, which he isn't. So, a good point, though. If New York, if NYPD is, is reposting that kind of stuff, what are we supposed to think? I said, no, 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 I said at the everybody, beginning. Everybody got a phone, brother. <laughs> no, no. NYPD's page is doing this. has recently been there so much so that they're arguing with journalists on there. It's NYPD. Now, one must ask, why does NYPD do this? Well, the answer is very simple. One, because they're fucking assholes. And two, they do this so they can justify additional budgets. They do this so they can be like, the crime panic is out of control. Give us more money. The crime is out of control in the city. Give us more money for, uh, uh, give us more money for enforcement. Give us more money for enforcement. Eric Adams also then feeds into that because he is also doing that exact same thing. That's why we close the fucking libraries in the city of New York over the weekends now, so we can give more money to the fucking law enforcement. Even though the NYPD, as an institution, is literally one larger than most standing militaries, and two has a larger budget than most standing militaries. The NYPD has fucking submarines. Chat, think about that. It's crazy. Hard to ask straight face for a tank if people realize crime is down. Exactly. Have you covered the hysteria over the punching in New York? Um, I I haven't looked into it a little bit. Uh, I only looked into it a little bit. I haven't looked into it further about like all this like crime panic that's going on uh, in in New York. Apparently, like white women are getting punched or something. That's what they're saying. PD on their own Twitter pages that are posting and sensationalizing crime. And I said this at the beginning. You said that there's a difference between perception and reality, how people feel afraid versus how safe New York actually is. And I agree with you, but I said that it's your own rhetoric and NYPD's rhetoric that plays into that. And you did it just now because the reality is a condition of release for everybody, for every crime, whether it be non-bail eligible or bail eligible, is that if you commit a crime and you're rearrested, that you uh, that you bail can and will be set on you. So that's the first thing. Second of all, they have conducted multiple studies, but the Brennan said are literally just put out one less than two percent of anybody in new york city this release on bail is arrest rearrested for any violent crime more importantly in the same in the same breath that we want in the same breath that you want to sensationalize me want to highlight and point out oh an officer was killed the other day which is a rare occurrence across the united states but let alone in new york new york police officers have killed at least seven people this year including a 19 year old and nyp officer killed a 19 year old in queens yesterday i'm not going to dismiss the loss of a life of an innocent person that wears a uniform to protect you do of the 31 people rare, dead at Rikers a rare, a rare and the 19 year old killed yesterday. I, 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 I feel like I don't want to take you out of context and I don't want people to all of a sudden criticize that you're being dismissive of a Ma- young Adams, man being shot Mayor and Adams, killed. that's not going to work on Listen, me. I'm not trying to broke anything yeah. on you. I'm just, I, we, I lost a member of the police department the same way I go to see the mother of an 11-year-old baby that was, 11-month-old baby that was shot in the head when I first became man. I sat in a hospital with her. The same way I go visit these mothers who lose their children to gun violence, I go see them. Yes, but just not the I, mothers just of the people I, who are dying just, in Rikers. Just as I go, just as I go to see a the, the the family member of a slain police officer, I go visit those parents that lose their loved ones. Did you ones visit? Are now, you visiting you the that? family of do the? You do that? First of all, yes, I did. I held a right. You, you, I, I represented hundreds. You went to visit. You went to visit all, uh, the family member of, of a slain officer. No, not the slain officer. Okay, of course you no, did. No, but what about the nineteen mm-hmm. year old that was killed yesterday by mm-hmm. NYPD in Queens when mm-hmm. he called for help? Have you said anything <coughs> about that? Are you visiting them? Yeah. The the the. Mm. First of all, that's... I'm is not New gonna... York safe or not? Mayor I'm sorry? Is New York safe or not? <laughs> okay. Oh, don't fucking save his ass, Charlemagne. God damn it. As much as I respect them for having uh, uh, Ole Emmy on, I, I, do, I do hate that, like, he just fucking gave him a lifeline here. God, Charlemagne, you are such a fucking... He is the donkey of the day, bro. I swear. That's why he has the donkey of the day thing, because he, he, he wants other people to be distracted by the fact that he's the donkey, usually. It's annoying. New York governor was told to F off at the wake of this lane officer. Ollie London TV crowd claps. New York governor. Yeah. These guys are fucking freaks, dude. Okay. Listen, the NYPD are a bunch of fucking freaks. They basically run the town. They literally fucking doxed, uh, Bill de Blasio's like trans child. Okay. They arrested and doxed Bill de Blasio's trans child back in the day. Um, they are one of the most like corrupt, one of the most annoying, one of the most arrogant, one of the most entitled institutions out there. It's very, very, very annoying. They're so fucking unhinged. Loving you in a cricket singlet. This is not a cricket singlet. I'm wearing a Wallabies. I'm wearing a Wallabies jersey. I'm wearing a Wallabies kit, mate. We sh- we just showed the graph that we that we put up, right? There's there's a graph that shows how many people. Murders based on 100,000 people. 
They show a graph, each city, the large mm -hmm. cities in America. New York is the least. New York is the safest big city in America. Should we say crime is down or should we say it's safe? Because I think it's a no, difference between saying down, crime and not saying something is safe. And say, well, randoms like actually. If I'm 330 pounds and I lose 30, I'm still fat. <laughs> it's so funny because he's like, oh, crime is down and it's safe. Okay. This is what cops do all the time. They go and they greatly overemphasize crime being up, crime being up, crime being up. They justify getting inflated budgets. And then they turn around and go, see, crime is down. No, it was always down. It was down last year, too. You were just fucking lying. That's the whole point. It's like it is the most accepted fake news narrative in local media. It is the most accepted fake news narrative in all matter of media, as a matter of fact. Like, it is known by every single person that looks at the data. I'm a fucking idiot. I'm an idiot. If I can see the actual information that the police are releasing then you should be able to do that too. And not you in the chat, obviously, but I'm talking to like the producers. It blows my mind. They'll always have like a fucking police chief come on and be like, crime is out of control. 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 And it's like, is it? Is it out of control? The fuck? Your own data doesn't say that it's out of control at all. And now you're saying it's actually completely, completely fucking uh, managed. They're doing that to say like, see all of the enforcement initiatives that we put in all the enforcement initiatives that we put in are working. That's why they say it. But it's a lie that they manufactured from the jump anyway. Right, right, right. You know what but, I'm saying? But, but random acts of... Not, that's why... That's why what, what I must do to, with New York is, is give them the facts. Mm -hmm. Not give them what people are spewing out there. The facts, facts are clear, as I've always stated. We are the safest big city in America. And as people talk about reporting these the reports that come out and reporting how things are done... No one wants to report the fact that everyone is saying across the globe, New York is the safest big city in America. Are we trending the right way, Oli Amy? I, I think the New York, I don't dispute that New York is safe. What I dispute is how Mayor Adams' own rhetoric is the reason why people don't feel safe. I agree, yep. I agree that New York is don't feel safe yep. because okay. of the way that NYPD, the Post, and Mayor yep. Adams go about sensationalizing okay. crime and yep. I'm asking you to talk about it differently. Okay. I, and listen, and you have a right to your opinion and your belief. We, You and I have a philosophical disagreement. You... As many. It's not many about the philosophical the disagreement. He's like, we have a philosophical disagreement. I'm a fascist. <laughs> oh, that's so. He's just like, oh, it's just a matter of philosophy. It's like, no, dude, you're a fucking asshole. Like, it's not just a matter of philosophy. It's a matter of practice. You are putting your theories into action, and those actions have real consequences for people that are dying in Rikers. It's bullshit. It is not just a difference in opinion. You are the motherfucking mayor, dude. You're not some YouTube debater, okay? What the fuck? People on the far left disagree with me. You know, many people on the far left, they say, Eric, people should be allowed to sleep on the streets um, no matter what. They should be allowed to sit on your stoop and inject themselves. Oh, straw man. Uh, immediately implement the straw man. No one is saying that, especially not on the far left. As a matter of fact, it's liberals that probably have this kind of attitude where they're like, oh, the solution to homelessness is just avoid them. Avoid them like the top of the hour ad break. It doesn't exist. It does exist. Okay. It does. At the top of the hour, there is a three-minute ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, you have to subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. Okay? And if you don't do that, well, then you're going to see a three-minute ad break. It exists. Okay? It's not, a, it's not a figment of your imagination. It is very real. That's it. It's the truth. Now, let me tell you. $5 or free with a Twitch Prime, and it's gone. Okay? Or by getting gifted a sub, it's gone. All of a sudden, it's, it might as well be a figment of your imagination. Here's the three-minute ad break now. But the idea... But the idea, like I said, going back to homelessness, the idea that <sighs> um, calm like a Tom, thank you for the 20 tier one gift to subs, allowing 20 people to also hallucinate at the top of the hour and think that there is no three minute ad break at the top of the hour. Um, but as I was saying, as I was saying, as I was saying, the idea that uh, it's the far left that just want to like avoid homeless people and just like don't look in their direction and let them like die in the fucking streets is bullshit. Okay. Leftists do have a Leftists do have an actual solution. It is a solution that has ironically been implemented in places like Helsinki, which, uh, you know, took note of our original ideas like a housing first homelessness uh, uh, initiative and actually implemented it, right? Homelessness cannot be tackled without the housing market. Crime cannot be tackled without fixing the housing market. <laughs> anyway, the point is he's now doing a, a straw man and being like, oh, every single person... Uh, everybody wants, uh, you know, the left wants you to fucking get uh, a homeless man's dick in your face at the subway station. That's what they want.
with drugs. They should be allowed to go in stores and steal whatever they want. They shouldn't have to pay on the subway system. They should be allowed to carry a gun and be able to come out the next day. Like, people disagree with me all the time. Earlier you asked that me to point opinion, out the rhetoric. You, also, earlier you asked me to point out specifically what you say to fairmonger about crime, so I just would like to say, Exhibit A, like what you literally uh, just did. You continue to say in this that New York is the safest big city, while simultaneously you are the one sensationalizing the crime. Facts. I point out facts. Which all is I a fact? Is, is it safe or is it not? Is, all I know is when I came in office and I stated that I wanted to take, I'm not allowing people to sleep in tents on our streets. They're going to get the care that they deserve. The far left attack. No, we, we I know attacked you because you, 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 you made it that so that people could be involuntarily committed. People, yes. Invo Listen, if I'm sitting down with you, brother, and I'm in a tent with you or an encampment, and I'm seeing human waste in the corner, I'm seeing stale food, I'm seeing drug paraphernalia, and I'm hearing you talking about you only here until the spaceship comes to take you to your next planet. You need to be involuntarily committed. Like, didn't I just say about sensationalized kinds <laughs> this, of stories? No, this is what I saw. This is what I oh, saw. Yeah. This is what I saw you were there? when I, around, when because I the went active around. Bro, bro, you're literally talking about the absolute worst of the worst situation to justify a policy that is going to harm every single homeless person. Involuntary commitments uh, should be incredibly fucking rare and only with a court order not serialized and processed by the biggest dipshits who should be unironically involuntarily committed. I'm talking about the cops. Okay. It is ridiculous. You got, you're getting one guide. Like it's fucking nuts. As far as, as far as like how to deal with homelessness, you cannot deal with it with police. You, you need social workers. You're literally defunding social workers. Those are the guys who need to fucking process the homeless people and get them on the right mindset for healing. OK, you don't look at a guy whose arm is broken and go, we should kill that person. His arm is broken. You look at a guy whose arm is broken and you go, all right, we need to get this guy medical treatment. But when it comes to addiction, when it comes to homelessness, when it comes to mental illness, we just completely drop that. We don't even think about it. We don't think about it like this is a guy who's diabetic. He needs an insulin shot. Right. We think about it like <laughs> this guy's diabetic. We have to kill him right now. He can't have donuts. We have to kill him. It's so weird to me. I just don't see it. I don't understand it. I don't I, like when I see a homeless person, when I see someone who's obviously having like a mental health episode, I don't go, yeah, time to fucking arrest that guy. I think that guy needs help. We should help him. And guess what? Putting a fucking cop there is not going to help them. Okay. Involuntarily committing them into a, into an asylum is not going to help them. It's going to help you. Because it is going to make you feel like you have solved the problem. Because the only problem that we have with homelessness is that they fuck up the vibes. That's it. That's it. That is the extent of the homelessness crisis for us. We're very privileged. So we look at that. We, we look at that and we go, they're fucking up my vibes right now. It's weirding me out. I don't like it. It's ugly. It ruins my day to think about. Okay? That's what it is. Now, I'm not like some fucking uh, woke lord on this issue either, right? I'm not saying like you should allow people to live on the streets. I don't think you should. I don't believe that. I don't, I don't think that people voluntarily want to live on the streets. If they had an option, if they had permanent shelter, they would not volunteer to live on the streets. That's it. The people that you see that get to that point get to that because they don't have fucking shelter for years and years and years. Of course, they're going to fucking lose their minds, dude. Like animals in the wild need shelter, okay? They look for shelter in the wild. Humans are infinitely more complicated than the average fucking dog, you know what I mean? And even dogs look for shelter. Even dogs become stray dogs and lose their minds when they do not have uh, a, a consistent access to food and consistent shelter. Of course, the humans are going to be the same, if not worse. And then they start self-medicating. And then they, get, uh, they develop a deep, crippling drug addiction. Being homeless is constantly braving the fucking elements. People cannot comprehend this reality. People can't comprehend how this would ruin your brain. Okay? Stop yapping and go get some social interaction. I mean, I'm, it's, it's early in the morning right now. It's only 11 and no one is, is uh, up. I'm waiting for Marsh to wake up. I'm waiting for uh, Alexa to wake up so we can go walk around a little bit in the city. Stop yapping and go to mass. That's what I need to do. <sighs> that were actually see, there at the encampments the, you had torn down you the weren't activists. there but they were there when people they were being always, arrested people are also upset that they feel like too much money's going to migrants and you're cutting too many programs right they're saying you're cutting the uh pre-k pre funding 170 million they're saying that you're cutting uh so many different funding for love other that. people love this question brother so, love this so question. people so so people are saying people are feeling like 
you know, they never have money for us, but when, as soon as migrants come in the country, they find money. And, they, mm -hmm. and listen, people have a right to be angry. You know who's even more angry than they are? I am. I've been to Washington 10 times, 10 times to talk about this subject. So people got a right to be pissed off of what they're doing to New York City. How can we New fix York? that where, where these, like, I mean, we cut yeah. a lot of programs. 170 I mean, million pre-K funding. But hold on, let's, let's talk about that. Let's one day kids problem. couldn't go to school because migrants took over to school. No, no that's day. not, that wasn't, that wasn't accurate. Okay, break let's, it down. Let's, 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 first, let's deal with that. Um, we always utilize our school buildings during the time of crisis. And if we're saying to ourselves, if there's some amazing, when we had the major fire when I first became mayor and we saw that fire in the Bronx, in the Bronx yeah. you know, we had to take a school to take care of those people who lived in the building temporarily. When we have major storms, we take a school to use it temporarily. Schools is part of the resources of the city. And thank God we had something called remote uh, learning where people still, let, young people are still able to go on. DJ Envy, be, 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 envious of the migrants getting all the money. What's up? It's Hot 97. It's DJ Envy. Welcome back to The Breakfast Club. We're talking about how envious I am of the migrants getting all the money that our homeless should be getting, even though we just talked about, even though beep, 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 we just talked about how we should kill homeless people. <laughs> D -d 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 DJ Envy. Yeah, these millionaire, millionaire migrants. <laughs> DJ House flipping scams. Yeah, they're not hot. 97. You're right. It's power 105. Power 105.1. Don't forget Envy's dad is a cop. The man is defending stop and frisk over and over again. To learn, but you we yeah. I mean, look, Ole uh, Ole Emmy's like in a hostile environment, okay? Like by every sense of the word, it's just that like she has to manage this relationship as best as possible because these guys have actually given her a, a tremendous opportunity here. And if she doesn't do that, if she starts attacking like the hosts as well, they're just you know it's gonna be like a four v one basically. Um, but yeah, a lot of these guys are they're rich, and when you become rich. Or as a consequence, uh, Hassan knowing Power 105 and Hot 97 kind of sending me Lamont. Wait, I lived in, um, I I lived in in New Jersey and New York. Of course, I know these channels. Um, anyway, like their background is important. Their um, their background is important. Their background, uh, it, it, like now and how much money they have, is important. These are these are obviously factors that contribute to their political, um. Their, their political assessment. And New York. Yes, I said New York because my mom lives in New York. Um, shut the fuck up. Don't give me the bridge and tunnel shit. I could live in New York now if I wanted to. What the fuck do you mean? Like, that bridge and tunnel attitude is so funny. I live in Los Angeles. I choose to live in Los Angeles. If I wanted to, I could live in New York, okay? I'm not some fucking nine-to-fiver coming in from Hoboken uh, to, to, to have an exciting weekend out at Pacha, okay? Give me a fucking break. You're too cowardly to go to New York? Yeah, it's a big city. It's scary to me. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny to, like, treat me as, like, a regular fucking New Jersey guy, bridge and tunnel guy, who who's, like, lying about being from New York. Pasha closed years ago? I know. I'm just... I just wanted to say Pasha. Pasha! Your New York apartment would be ass, though, compared to your house? LA house law? No, it wouldn't. I saw this one guy who has a $2 million apartment. He's a Turkish guy. I gotta show you this. He has a he has a two million dollar apartment and it's fucking incredible, the two story one. Um, what's that TikToker that always uh that TikToker that always goes to people's houses? He is um uh he is a Turkish dude who uh, started a company called A Army or whatever A Army New York, and um he is he was like being interviewed by that guy. Oh, fuck. Does anyone have it? No, it's not NS. God damn it. What's the guy's name? Colin or whatever? No, the dude who like the dude, the TikToker who goes to people's houses and interviews people and then like and then like shows their houses. He'll be like, oh, can I see can I see your house? Caleb Simpson. Yes. Oh God, AR me did a reset at, uh, a retreat at my job. Yeah, it is Caleb Simpson. Here, I'll show you. Let's see if I can find it. This was like he fucking does these interviews so much that I, I think this is the one, yeah. Hi, excuse me. Um nope, it's not that one. Hold on. I have to pee so bad. God damn it. I want to pull this video up and then go pee. I need to find it. Is this it? How much do you pay for rent in New York? West Village prices, man. It's out of control. YouTube, Instagram, where I go and tour people's apartments. Yeah, you know? I've seen that. Okay, could I have a tour no, of Caleb's your apartment? I got time between classes. Yo. Caleb Simpson isn't the Caleb Simpson isn't the Turkish guy. The guy he interviewed is the Turkish guy. This is the guy, I think. 
Excuse me, how much do you yeah, pay this for is the guy. I own my apartment. You own your apartment? Yes. What'd you pay for it? 2.5. Yeah, have you seen my video? This guy's apartment is literally cheaper than my fucking house. Look at this. Look at this apartment that you can buy. So can we go look at it? Yeah. This is my place. Oh, Put God. this down. My kitchen. <laughs> it's black, man. I know. So I had to redo the apartment when I got it. What's up with the ladder here in the kitchen? Oh, my storage up here. So I need my ladder. And that ladder slides. Can you slide it Slide over. Oh you my know? god, no way. And then I like everything kind of hidden and flush. So I have my fridge, dishwasher, guest bathroom. I'm feeling a black and white vibe. That's uh, like the brand. My brand. That's the brand. <laughs> black and white. This apartment's insane. I'm feeling actually a Superman layer type vibe right now. Is that what you're trying to go for a little bit? I guess so. Superman was my favorite. All right, are, are you single? I got really into plants. Okay. And this one didn't make it. <laughs> yeah, that's, cool. that's pure kind. Pots are from Turkey. And that's where you grew up in Turkey, right? Yes. Uh, these are my Jenny holders. I have all these plants. This is the cat palm. This one, I forget what it's called, but everybody has it. Yeah. This one is the birds of paradise. These guys all made it, but that guy didn't make it. So this is my library. We go through here and we go into our... Secret office, no way. Secret office slash second bedroom. Dude, so this is Superman's lair. I guess like, so. You're over here, you got Superman. I guess so, here. you're right, you you're right. I never room. thought about it. I never thought about that. I work in here, and then I also paint. This is one of my favorite. This guy's so fucking hot, who is he? He's uh, he's New York Hasanabi, baby. Yo, does this guy do carpentry? No, he's uh, he's like... I don't know what the fuck it is, but he, he, he has this thing called A-Army. I looked it up, because I saw that he was Turkish, and I got excited. Um obviously and i looked it up he it's like a it's like some kind of like soul cycle type shit he has a fitness app on demand workouts or something yeah i don't fucking know something like that my paintings that i just did my brother does not the room there's well. the guest room as well the dog jimmy what's up jimmy and then so this is my recovery corner so recovery i train corner. a lot all day long so you stick on isn't it awesome so it's like a heating pad <laughs> yeah it's a vibrating heating pad What's up, Jimmy? Wow, Good even morning. your dog's black and white. I know. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> the doors are so tall. The master bathroom, kind of messy up here. Is it? I, I usually don't like any. The master bedroom. He has the Turkish rugs. Too. A walk-in. sick. Into here. And you can see right That's through. Yeah, cool. almost. I've seen your hands. Yeah. So you actually wear other colors sometimes? Uh, those are all gifts. <laughs> I like, I mean, I like these ons that I wear now. I don't know what it is, but he, he reminds me of Tadik so much. I feel like there's a vibe of like a Turkish dude, like a Turkish American dude that he just has the, I don't know why he has like Tadik vibes a little bit. He's very nice. Seems like a very pleasant dude. This room looks wild. I tried to hang those up. It's crooked. It's crooked. Okay, so it also looks like it floats. I bought it before COVID. It was way longer than it should have been. I actually moved in with Jimmy when it was under construction. Can I try your bed? Sure. It's like I'm on a stage and then in the bed. Dive in. <laughs> yeah, I feel like you, you, you're pushing me, bro. Go, 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 go. There we go. Of course. Yeah, that's Classic Turk with the American flag, too. It's, again, he's, he's so fucking Turkish. He's so goddamn Turkish. With the goddamn America flag, with the, with the Persian rug, or the Turkish rug, I guess, or uh, it looks like it's a Persian rug, maybe. Uh, and then the Amerabu-ass, like, American flag uh, bed sheets. That's that's the full jump. You're really into the plan. I really Jimmy's way. A whitewash upstairs. ethnic man. Jimmy. Cool. So it just leads upstairs yes. to your little private outdoor space. Come here. Good Whoa. boy. Come here. Listen, motherfucker, you'll never catch me buying a house dog. There's so much more. Turk getting it done in the UFC. Wait, really? Ibo Aslan? Ibrahim Aslan. That's a Turkish guy, huh? Damn. Slammed his ass. Bro, why don't you have this apartment? You would not be able to get up those stairs. I'd figure it out. Yeah, they don't know I'm not a frog. It's nice to make new friends. It's okay. We like your vibe. You could learn. Yeah, I am a frog now. I'm riveting. Ribbit, ribbit all day, baby. I'm riveting and it's riveting. Where the fuck were we? Let's keep going. Let's uh, let's let's keep watching this. We can't, say, we can't say we can't say that we will use a school building during an emergency, but we're not going to do it for children that are migrants and asylum seekers. You publicly so oppose the, remote here's learning here's and the, remote the, work. Here's the, here's the, here are the things that are crucial about the migrant asylum seekers that we need, to, we need to put to rest that people don't realize. Number one, I don't have the legal authority to stop the buses from coming in. That's against law. I don't have the authority to allow them to work, which they want to do. That's against the law. I don't have the authority to say, I'm not going to house you and give you three meals a day. It's against the law for me to do it. 
I don't have the authority to deport someone that commits a crime here in this city and turn them over to ICE. That's against the law. So what we had to do was figure out how do we house people. And so some people say, well, Eric, you're giving them more than what you're giving us. Go to the Herc centers where they are, the shelters. The restrooms are outside. The showers are outside. They're sleeping on cots. They get three basic meals a day. And when I go visit them, they say, we don't want any of this from you. All we want to do is have the right to work so we can provide for ourselves. Well, in less, than, you know, in less you, than 30 days, migrants uh, won't be allowed to work per federal guidelines, and they, they won't be allowed to be housed in NYC anymore, in NYC anymore. So where will they go after that? They're finding their way. Mm-hmm. Out of the 184,000, 60% of them found their way, like many of us have done. You notice you don't hear about the... the Where are they going to get housing in 30 days, though? Many of them, we sh- we're giving them intense care. We're not just telling you, come here, hang out for 30 days, and we're not going to help you. No. In those 30 days, and if, you, and if you're a young person, you, you get 60 days. But in those 30 days or 60 days, we're giving you intense care. We're showing you how to find... I say, they just found their way, bro. I don't get it. Find your way in our city. We're showing you... Yeah. <laughs> just, just do it, dude. Just find... Lol, just, just find your way, lol. Classic you how to go about applying for housing how to go about applying uh, for the services that you need and some people are saying we never wanted to come to new york at all Mm -hmm. we wanted to come to another city but governor abbott said no we're sending you to new york think about this for a moment we got thousands of ukrainian migrants thousands do you hear about them no can they work just mexican and africans can you take a (laughs) work they have the right to work so so well there's two reasons because they're white no, but he's right. He's right. He's right. They get TPS, temporary protective status, which allows them to also work legally. Okay. And they're white, <laughs> but definitely, you know, that's a huge part of it. And the issue is for New York specifically, the issue is that um, the people that are being shipped into New York are being shipped by the tens of thousands without uh, prior knowledge. You know what I mean? Without prior, uh, without, without prior information. They're just like, they just send them off. They kidnap them and they basically fucking ship them off human trafficking style. And then they're like, all right, deal with it. It's done specifically to gum up the works. Okay. It's done specifically to make it as hard as possible to fucking process these people. Because the ultimate goal there is to literally ruin the system, to cripple the system, to say, to say, see, you can't fucking deal with this shit. That's what's unimaginably cruel about this process. We wouldn't even be having this conversation if we gave them the authority to work. And you know the real irony of this? We need workers. I need lifeguards. I need food service workers. Many of these migrants from violence, Venezuela are nurses and other professionals. I need people to backstretch workers. Other states are telling me, Eric, we will take the migrants and asylum seekers if they just allow them to work. We're not going to take them and just have them sit around every day. If they're allowed to work, we would take them. I- I agree the with national you. government. She agrees with you. I agree with you that migrants should be. A, a, she agrees with a lot of stuff. Trust that, no, no. I trust train, you that I do not believe. So, she, she's on that train. I'm sitting here, off, Mayor Adams. She's going to be dialing nine one. First of all, I ride the subway every day. I've worked right. as a public and defender in this city and represented yeah. thousands of people. You're so please spare me. No, I am not. You think more police make make people feel? She's such a badass, dude. She is. She is like in many ways the perfect counter to Eric Adams because like she's literally hands on. She's done this. Uh, she's done this for fucking years. She's incredible uh, as a as a communicator. She's amazing. Like I can't think of anyone better to go up against Eric Adams in this in this format specifically because like like listen, the Breakfast Club is a pretty important uh, cultural institution. I would say for the black community like black New Yorkers in general, but like it's, it's important. And Eric Adams can get away with this narrative that he is designing. Okay. Because there are a lot of reactionary sentiments that, that work amongst every population, which also includes the black population, right? Like when you have Eric Adams say things like, well, I'm actually trying to solve crime because I care about like black grandmothers that care about the crime. He's not wrong. Technically, He's just doing, he's actually doing a very good job of like advocating uh, for his right wing policies. He's advocating for his right wing policies in a way that like the audience will be receptive to, if that makes sense. 
that's why Oleemi is is so good at providing the actual adequate counter here. And anyone else, um, and anyone else that would uh, in this situation try to go up against them would look silly, would look uh, stupid, would would not be able to do the same thing. Her background, uh, I think, plays a big role here as well in in the reception of the audience. How can how can a leftist like her be a good communicator in the face of those dudes who hypnotize people with their faulty logic? Yeah, she is Eric Adams' antith antithesis. Safe, especially black yes. and brown no, people. No, they Phil, don't. Phil. No, black and brown people? Yes, brother. I oh go to, my God. I, I, I go to, I just had a town hall. I just had a town hall yesterday. All these black and brown folks inside that town hall. Number one issue they came up with. We want to feel safer. We want more cops on our corners. <sighs> we want... See, People See, want to feel safer. It doesn't you, mean they want more you, cops. And if they did, New York City has belief? the most police in the country. See, we have the largest police department go in the country. Do it, do How many analysis. more police do you want, Mayor Adams? You go do an analysis across... People at chat is acting like Charlemagne is Candace Owens. Yeah, Charlemagne is not Candace Owens. But he is a grifter, for sure. Charlemagne... Dude, come on. Charlemagne was, like, advocating for Pete Buttigieg. Okay, give me a break. <laughs> This city we have. and communities of color and ask them, I live in do you Bush. want us to take your police away or do you want more police? I guarantee you, you would be lost to find. Why is, why is that the two options? If you were to ask them, do you want your police to actually do their jobs or do you want them to do stop and frisk and like harass your children? They would probably say, hey, I would like them to do their jobs and fucking solve some of these crimes, please. Everyone would say that 100% of the time. The real question is not. The real question is not like, do you want more police presence or do you want no police presence? The real question is, with the current police presence that exists, would you like them to do their fucking jobs, please? And I always say, I would like them to do their fucking jobs, please. I have never seen another group of entitled assholes that refuse to do their fucking jobs and do it well or do it at all, really, and get, you know, the, the entitlements and get the social safety nets of a fucking Norwegian laborer, okay, while doing absolutely nothing at all. There's no other fucking equivalent in this goddamn country. It's like CEOs and cops are the only two people that, like, literally don't do anything and get paid so much and, and are rewarded for their fucking incompetence. It's just so absurd. It blows my mind. I don't know why people don't make this argument from this narrative all the time. Because it's a very American argument to make. As a propagandist, I think that's an infinitely better way to argue on the issue of police. It's not to say, like, oh, we got to defund the police. we got to abolish the police, blah, blah, blah. Or, which, by the way, defunding the police, I think, is a good move. I think that, like, we need to refund social safety nets and, and fix crime at its heart rather than, like, try to fucking, uh, you know, uh, tackle it on the enforcement front, obviously. But the best way to communicate this, in my opinion... The best way to communicate this is by saying, like, cops don't do their fucking jobs. Everybody understands this. Everyone. Literally everyone. Down to the homeless person, all the way to the fucking wealthiest people living in the wealthiest neighborhoods. Myself included, by the way, on the wealthiest neighborhood part. Cops don't do their fucking jobs. They don't. Oh, fuck. Yeah, and you're right. Some, uh, a chatter that just said, oh, fuck, I just hit my leg. Chatter who said, in the 80s and 90s, Lazy cops that eat donuts and don't do their jobs was a mainstay in pop culture. You're absolutely correct. You're absolutely fucking correct. We got to get back to that. I feel like since the 90s, like uh, our attitude towards cops changed dramatically in Hollywood. It changed dramatically in the media. It like turned, they turned into like brave heroes that are rushing into fires all the goddamn time when that is the furthest from the truth. Okay. Post 9-11. Yeah. Post 9-11. Everybody fucking started saying, like, first responders are so brave. First responders are so fucking brave. They're so brave. They're so brave. They're so brave. Copaganda went, like, uh, above and beyond. You mentioned Norway, so I was curious. Norway spends $6.5 billion on their military. New York spends around $11 billion on the police. Yep. <laughs> yes, that is also a good point. Not only that, but they fundamentally don't know the law. Cops don't know the law. They violate the law all the fucking time. They operate above the law all the fucking time. That is legal, by the way. They're... They legally are above the law. They have no accountability whatsoever. It is awful. It's completely and utterly just broken, fundamentally broken. <laughs> you talk a big game for someone who's never had to tackle an acorn head on without any immediate backup. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dude, you say that right now, but who you're going to call to fill out some paperwork and shrug at you when you get your house broken into? Exactly. That's the, the Nick Mullen bit is like permanently in my mind. 420 Hedgehogo, 
Thank you for the 10 tier one gifted subs. Yeah, might as well call Ghostbusters. They do a better fucking job of dealing with the issue head on than cops. Like, people breaking the fucking cars nonstop. People breaking the fucking houses nonstop. There's a lot of property theft. It's not as bad as it used to be, obviously, but it still exists. And cops are so incompetent in dealing with that shit. They're so bad. They're so bad. How do we just, like, let them get away with it? It blows my fucking mind. That's the thing I get very frustrated about. Like, they literally don't do anything. They don't do anything good. Like, they are not legally obligated to protect you. It is That is also, uh, you know, constitutionally protected. They have so many broad powers given to them. They don't make me feel safe. I don't know. I guess, like, they make some people feel safe. I don't feel safe when I know a bunch of fucking entitled dickheads uh, with, uh, with, you know... Uh, <laughs> A bunch of entitled dickheads that are dumb as fuck, that are dumb as bricks, walking around with guns and a, and a proclivity to use it. Like, it doesn't make me feel safe at all. I don't want the stupidest person that I know to have a gun and have a legal authority to use it. You know what I mean? And a legal authority to, like, deprive me of my freedoms. I don't know. Find someone in what about when you add color? resources to that list? Do you want do. more resources think, to think get to the, the root of these issues? That's what people think about, want. Think about yeah. the resources. Think about <laughs> right. the resources we've done. Think about what we, Check out what we've done. Check out what we've done. Advocates, the far left, they have been calling the far for left of summer youth employment for years. We gave them a hundred thousand. Never been done before in history. Never. They've been calling for investment in NYCHA. We put NYCHA as our top program. When I was doing during COVID, I was knocking on doors, handing out masks uh, to NYCHA residents because the city refused to do so, and people were saying, "Why are you giving masks to those people?" When I was knock on the doors, <clears throat> I would ask the residents. How your children doing in school? They said, Eric, we don't even have high-speed broadband. I said, when I get elected, we're going to change that. Now, NYCHA residents all have free high-speed broadband, so their children could have access like other children. We are doing the NYCHA land trust. No one was able to do it. We put more people in affordable housing using the voucher system than the history of the program. We've transitioned more people out of shelter into housing in, the, in one year in the history of the city. When I went to do an analysis with all of my gang members and I asked them the question, you know, how many of you have been learning disabilities? How many of you are dyslexic? And with all of your gang members? The, 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 yeah, there's a lot that's of... That's what you, I, I, you, I that's meet, what you decided to characterize them? with people who you, are... You kick it with the gangs? Want, okay. uh, <laughs> no, I, re, I meet regularly <laughs> with people... <laughs> Who you met up with some drug dealers at Burger King? Just City Hall, I'm, there, right? I'm glad you brought that up. Hold on, let me just finish this one piece because this is important. <clears throat> we he's such a fucking goofball too. Like he's just not very good at. He's not very. He's not a very good evangelist for his own cause either. Yeah, that was another big like meta in New York. I remember. Oh God, I love. I love. You know, following Eric Adams' saga, uh, where they were. Um, he he met at a Burger King with like a bunch of local uh drug dealers, I guess. That's what they were saying. Um he had like a like a <laughs> meetup. <laughs> Notice when we did the analysis across the country, not only in New York, across the country, thirty to forty percent of the of the inmates in jail and in prison have a learning disability. So when I sat down with the Chancellor, I said, Listen, we can't wait until people thank you, until until people break the law. We did dyslexia screening in our schools. And we were able to now catch it and give them the wraparound services they need. So I want to talk about Burger King. So I'm sitting at home, and I look at the paper. They say there's drug dealers selling drugs in front of Burger King. So I call up the precinct commander. I said, what is this? Man? We're not having open drug markets. He says, he, he says um, Mayor, we did a complete operation, buy and bust, went to see you know, what drugs are they selling, who's selling drugs. He said, these guys are not selling drugs. These guys are homeless. And they just come to feel as though they could be around others. So what I went on Sunday, I went down and did what other people don't do. I spoke with them. Mm -hmm. I said, brothers, can we sit down and talk? Let me find out how, you know, what's going on in your life. We sat in Burger King, had a conversation, sharp brothers. So they weren't even drug dealers? No. Okay. They were not. It's so funny that he's like playing fast and loose with the term like gang members and drug dealers when he's talking about like meeting up with other people. Uh, like before, he was like, "Oh yeah, they're gangsters. They're gang, gang, uh, <laughs> they're they're gangbangers and drug dealers." When he's talking about like other dyslexic teenagers or whatever the fuck he met with, but now because people are saying, "Oh, you met with drug dealers," now he's like, "They're not actually drug dealers." 
He's only woke when it suits his purpose. You know what I mean? Like he doesn't have that same energy when he's talking about uh, the the other people that he met with in the past Not drug that didn't make it into the news. They were just homeless brothers that just wanted to be a place where people, they could commune among others, like other folks do, when people have dog parks and people sit on the steps of a museum. And so we sat there and had a conversation and we were able to identify what services and, and what I learned from them you could have all the services you want, but if people don't know the entry ramp to those services, then what good is it? Mm -hmm. So now we're going to devise a program that they're going to help me devise on how to reach out to those services. Then I want those brothers to become recruiters to go inside <laughs> the, the shelters. But you're not going to do that if you are afraid to get on the ground and have these one-on-one -on -one, uh, 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 conversation. I've been here, man. You know, I know, I know what it is to buy a nickel bag and make eight joints so mommy can feed herself. I know what it is to run numbers. Yeah, you I know what it is up. to do all those <laughs> things. So I'm comfortable among my folks. And the problem that a lot of people don't understand is they don't know how authentic I am about this work. But they're going to look back over it and say, we had a mayor that came from us and delivered for us even the billions of dollars that I'm putting into MWBEs that we've never had before. People are going to look back over these years and say, this brother was real about what he's doing because that's why I'm doing it. I see you people wrapping up. I, I, I have two more questions. How do debit cards for migrants compare to New mm. York City welfare benefits? I like that. That's a good question because that was one of the biggest... Oh, my Lord, dude. Yeah. <laughs> back to the... Back to the migrants are taking... <laughs> Migrants are taking our money, our dollars that we could be giving to the homeless, which we, by the way, don't want to give to the homeless. We want to kill them. <laughs> but also, like, how can you... This is such a funny conversation to have in real time, okay? Because, like, every time he's talking about homeless people, he's, like, talking about enforcement, right? American homeless people, he's talking about enforcement, enforcement, enforcement. He has, like, an overall attitude that they're all criminals, right? Unless he's talking about meeting with them, in which case he's, like, saying, well, they're not criminals. These are just brothers and sisters, Okay. But immediately, once we start talking about homeless, all of a sudden, they get into the in-group. Well, our American homeless are actually a part of the in-group now, and we're going to use them as a reason as to why we should fuck the migrants further. It, it's, it's funny to experience this in real time when, like, a big chunk of the conversation is about, like, how to further enforce and how to further make the uh, conditions worse for the homeless people, for the homeless population, until we start talking about migrants, in which case they're like, well, they're, they're the outsider group that are invading myths and i think the daily news just did a piece today of saying why this makes sense so here's we're so fucked the next time you see someone at an intersection that needs money why not contribute dude this is this is the problem this right here okay I, and I, and i think you're well intentioned but like this right here is the issue okay individualizing homelessness takes it away from systematic failure and brings the uh brings brings the 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 Brings the problem to like the individual actions. It's not about individual actions to combat this crisis. You can't do that. Like you, you can't one, you can't like enforce that anyway. Right. You can't enforce that. And two, we are not, we should not be expected to be like social workers. Like every person, every liberal has to be a social worker on their daily commute is crazy. Right. It's, it's unrealistic. That expectation is unrealistic, and it's also not even a good way to solve the problem anyway. It's not a way to solve the problem at all. That's it. This isn't me saying that so that I, like, uh, you know, get away with my personal moral responsibility to help every homeless person I see. Okay? I'm not saying that at all. It's great. If you want to do that, it's awesome. I do that to the best of my ability. However, having said that, having said that, that is not how you fix the problem in and of itself. Because the problem itself was not created because, like, individuals were bad or individuals didn't give enough money. Uh, individuals did not give enough money to, like, a person that was on the verge of homelessness. That's not how that happened. It happened due to systematic reasons. It happened due to the fact that the housing market is out of control. Homes are unaffordable. People get priced out of those houses. People start working and, and living from their in their cars, right? Um, and then they you know, further and further going to the throes of, of uh, the, this, tra this traumatic circumstance that they're existing in when they're devoid of shelter. <sighs> yeah, individuals helping homeless people isn't scalable the way state programs are. Exactly. That's what happened. We were paying people, because we, by law, we got to feed them three meals a day. We got to feed the migrants um, three meals a day. When I told the team, 
we spend we got to bring down the cost of this fix the system what do you do you're criticizing everything but offering no solutions if you point your audience towards a solution you can make progress concrete things people can do otherwise better off watching austin will and i i love chatters that come in here and act like i haven't been advocating for like uh how to deal with the homelessness problem for the past 10 fucking years of my professional career yeah dude yeah michelle phone this is actually the first time that I have ever talked about this issue and have never talked about the solutions to the issue. You're right. I love when people just get here for the first time ever and go, all you do is complain, complain, complain. Awareness is a very important part of this process too, by the way. Even in this React video, I have talked about how to solve it. You can't solve this issue without fixing the housing market, but the immediate solutions is to fund social programs, fund social workers, and create a housing first initiative to combat homelessness okay yeah you cannot mr beastify the solution God, i have to by 30 percent because it was costing us too again. much money 12 billion dollars over three years four billion dollars already one of the places was food we were seeing that we were having a 10 percent food waste people were getting food that didn't didn't want and they discarded so my team came together first deputy mayor sheena wright the first black woman to be a first deputy mayor she she came up with a team called mocha Five. MWBE, black product, they said that we can give people food cards where they can only purchase food and baby supplies. You will save uh, $600,000 a month in costs. People will buy the food that they want and not giving it to them from someone from some large conglomerate. Then they will ha have to spend the cards in the bodegas, the supermarkets, the local stores, so the money stays inside the com community. And and the program is run by a person of a person of color. We're saving seven mil, over seven million dollars a year. We have no more food waste because people are buying what they want. It's a black owned company, so we put money back into a black businesses, like I said I, I, I was going going to do. And you cannot buy anything but food or baby supplies. It's a complete win. Mm -hmm. But people heard it and it was sensationalized. Oh, you're giving money to migrants. They only get thirteen dollars a day for the three meals. It's, it's a winning program. Oh, Yemi, is it a yeah. win? It's not that I have a problem with it. It's that, again, the sensationalism has a lot to do with the fact that you got up and declared that we have this migrant crisis. And I thought it was er interesting, your earlier point about the difference between how Ukrainian migrants are being received versus uh, migrants, black and Latino migrants. Because, again, you gave a town hall where you were the one who gave this speech and, and incent like you incentivized New Yorkers to feel this way. Feel which way? Just feel like there is a migrant crisis where the migrants are being treated differently than them, where they're getting resources, that the migrants are getting resources that are not being given to them because you were the one who presented it to the city that you had to cut budgets across because of the migrant crisis, even though recently the, uh, you decided that you all actually do have the money to handle the migrant issue. That just wasn't publicized as much. No, so this goes back to sister, my original sister, discussion. You know, sister, you're an attorney, and you, I, I'm amazed. I think your art is, I'm just going to throw it out there, and make people feel Mayor that Adams, way before you say Eric. it, there's an entire you know, council sister, listen, council sister, that knows your line. Let me, sister, let me, let me. We we still don't have the money for the migrants. We're spending twelve billion dollars in three years, four billion dollars already. What I said to New Yorkers at that town hall: this issue will bankrupt our, will destroy our city. This issue. You called specific the, countries. I remember not, you calling with countries sister, that the migrants no, were from. No, sister, they weren't no, the Ukrainian no. migrants. You weren't sister, talking about so, them. So sister, what happens when sister, we don't sister, have... Oh, hold on, sister, sister, I did not call the countries what they were from. from. I went I, to the country. It's on video, I went to Mayor the country. Adams. I went to Ecuador, Colombia, Mexico, to get a full understanding of the flow. I went to yeah. the southern border. Just as I went to those brothers in Burger King, I went to the southern border to understand the problem. I remember, I remember you started president. that oh, tour yeah, before yeah. you were going to go to go D.C. Yeah. and uh, when you were going to go to D.C. to buy, to talk to Joe Biden about the migrant crisis, but you were stopped because they had the FBI had to take your phones. Yeah. Uh, good Lord, you just make up stuff. Did I make that up? That's, yes. in the, that's reported. Sister, the FBI sister, didn't seize your phones? Sister, sister. The FBI didn't seize your phones? No. But they didn't you, investigate no, your top you aides. That's what, not happening. What did you just say? Mm -hmm. you ju you just I said, say, I remember the tour that you went you, on you, when you were going to the border, when you were going to the border. And when did I come back? I came to, back because somebody had to take my phone? Because it stopped. I said, I remember on the day of, I remember it because it was reported. Well, you got amnesia. Oh, me and the news. Me and the media. No, no, no. Your phones weren't seized. This is important. This is important. I want you to understand. I want you to understand the hypocrisy Mm. of people when the law enforcement does something every day it's bad but when they do something against eric adams oh it's good 
<laughs> you know, come no, on, let's I make up our minds. I said what happened. <laughs> okay. I didn't say that it was good. I, uh, I don't think it's I good that our mayor is being investigated came, for illegal I campaigns. Came, I don't think that's I good. I came back because of not that they had to take my phones. Mm. That is that is not true. And you should. I, I said know, it happened I, that I, I day. Don't know. No, it, was, it did not happen that day. I said it was reported before you were going that you were on your way. Yes, it was, Mayor Adams. It was reported wrong. Where your phone? Did the FBI seize your phone? Did they search your top eight? Not that day. Did they search the home of several several people? Okay. Yes. That's what I said, and I didn't say that was a good thing. I don't think it's good that our mayor is being investigated by the FBI. So, Madam, so what happens when New York City doesn't have the money for migrants, and then you know the migrants are in this city? And they probably have to do what most poor people have to do, which is sometimes resort to crime. Right. How is that going to make the city safe? Right, right. And, 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 that's, and that's part of the problem. Imagine having a group of people 18 to 24 years old and being told you can't do anything all day. Mm-hmm. When you go, when you go uh, to these hercs and you're seeing these young people, and I walk in and I talk with them, some of them come from West Africa, South America, Central America, all they're saying is, man, we, we just want to work. We don't want to sit around here all day and not do anything. That is why the real focus should be on our national government that's saying, why are you doing this to New York? Why you Check out what they're doing. They're doing it to New York. They're doing it to Chicago. They're doing it to Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. They're doing it to Houston. What is the same in all those cities? All black mayors. Mm. All black mayors. And so what we're saying, same thing that I'm going through here, my brother Johnson is going through. My sister Bass is going through. My brother Turner is going through. So our folks, are, what they wanted to happen, Governor Abbott wanted to happen, we're going to turn these uh, uh, cities against their mayors. We're going to create this environment where they're all going to go against mm. their mayors. Go Google what they're doing to my brother in Chicago. Go Google what they're doing to Sister Bass. So the cities have now turned against these black mayors that are making real change for the first time. Right, over black and they, people. And, and, and they're using this to say, okay, these black mayors are not competent. They can't run their cities. Mm-hmm. They're getting everything to the migrants and asylum seekers. This was a perfectly executed plan that we are buying into. To make black mayors look bad across exactly. the country. Mm-hmm. And when, we, mm-hmm. when we're doing just the opposite. We, we, I inherited a city that was in disarray. <laughs> disarray. You know, and you no matter how much you do your analysis, you got to walk away with this brother got more private sector jobs in the history of the city. We reached that point. This brother had his bond rated increase, 40 percent increase in crime. When I came in, we now dropped those crimes. Thirteen thousand guns removed off our city, outpacing the state in reading and writing for our children in the public schools school system. Sixty two million tourists are back here. More housing felt vouchers. You go down the list, invest in nature. You go on a list, you're seeing a brother that managed the city that people said was unmanageable and we did it in two years and three months. It's my last question. <laughs> Do you believe the Biden administration's border policies have fueled the worst border crisis in U.S. history? In, in, in New York, you said New York history or in US America history? In America history? I think I think New York, leave it at New York. New York yeah, history. I think it's, well, it definitely impacts us, but I think it's an accumulation of of what the White House is failing to do and the Republican-led Congress is failing mm-hmm. to do and other administrations. Mm-hmm. People don't want to deal with the fact that we need real immigration reform. Now, let me tell you what it should look like. Do you know right here in our country where we are decreasing in population in many cities? We're hurting for people in many cities. When people come across the border, the national government should say, you're going to go to this city where we need populations. Stay there for three years, and then you can go anywhere you want in the country. We need to use this crisis as an opportunity. Our cities are hurting. In Kentucky, they're hurting for backstretch workers in the racing industry. We should be saying, you want to come here? You're going to go to Kentucky. You're going to stay for three years. You're going to learn how to be in the country and work. That's how we should do it. Instead of just saying, go wherever you want and allowing this to be politicized by the by the the governor of of Texas and say we're going to now we're going to hurt Chicago, hurt New York, hurt Los Angeles, uh, hurt Philadelphia. We just got a sister who's the uh, was the was the elected mayor. The day she was being sworn in, a plane of migrants was were coming in. Wow. None of them was coming before. Wow. When, no was no migrants was going to Los Angeles until Bass became mayor. When I, when I, when the first female black mayor became mayor. Mm-hmm. When she became mayor, they said, let's start sending them, send them to Los Angeles. they playing us, man. they playing us. Wow. <laughs> you know that? I, I respect any elected <laughs> official who can come have this conversation 
because uh, these are the tough questions. Yeah, from your constituents. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt, without what, a doubt. You know, what can y'all do to work together? <laughs> we, we should. Yeah. You, you're, because no matter. Because both we, of y'all we, care. Yeah, mm-hmm. without a doubt. You know what's actually interesting? You said that because when I was when I was in, um, uh, you know, I'm in rooms with folks, and I walk out of those rooms, and I say, you know what? We both disagree, but we both love the city and love our people. We have to separate the ten percent of disagreement and focus on the 90% that we agree on. You agree that our children should be educated. You agree that our brothers when they get, our sisters when they get out of, of Rikers should come out better than what they went in. You agree that I'm, we should be saved. You agree that no mother should have to lose their child to over-policing or to someone who is discharging a gun. You, mm-hmm. We agree on many things. The 10% that we don't agree on, then listen, let's debate that. Mm-hmm. But there's, there's 90 Nope. They do not agree on everything at all. They actually are the exact opposite on the exact opposite wavelengths on everything. And it's not just like a simple disagreement. It's not down to a simple disagreement. It's like directly his solutions to the same problems. Breakfast Club, why is New York City drama relevant? I don't know, because New York City is a massive New York City almost has the same population size as the fucking country that I'm in. Perhaps that's a big deal. I don't know. Don't you think this is the fucking mayor talking about his initiatives and lying pretty much about his initiatives, really? Um, even though the one aspect of his uh, con- the one the one part of, of of what he's saying that is correct is the fact that like, yeah, these people want to work, these people want to be integrated into American society, and uh, the system currently is making that as difficult as possible. It's like deliberately broken. Michelle Phone, I'm saying get down to a small level. Something chatters can do. I watch you all the time. I listen to you. I love that you exist. I just want to see that you're pointing your power to specific changes your chatters can make and push those things more than your critique. You can't just do it a few times. You do it every time in a meaningful way. Okay, I, I, I get really fucking annoyed by people who just come in here and are like, hey, uh, you know how you're doing commentary? Like, this is how you should do it. Okay, you do the commentary then. It's just like so condescending. Anyway, backseat streaming. Yeah. Are you going to do anything today, IRL? I am going to do IRL today in a little bit. I'm just waiting for people to wake up. Wake up to the realities of the world. You're the guy with the platform, though, lol. I already am using my platform. What are you talking about? I use it every day. Like, I, the, the, way, to, the way to fix these issues is by obviously engaging in community organizing, local organizing in general, to push your politicians, to push the mayor in the way that Ole Emi is doing he here, basically, to do the right thing. It's not about enforcement. It's actually about treating the problem, treating the issue. You can do that as a multifaceted approach. You obviously have to stabilize housing market prices. You have to offer additional uh, uh, housing units to everyone. You have to reincorporate like the failing commercial real estate potentially into uh, sustainable long-term housing projects, housing units. I don't know why you're humoring that person. I just, you know. There are people who have that kind of approach because they're uh, oblivious to what I uh, have to say uh, or uh, oblivious to what I uh, advocate for. So maybe that's the reason why I'm doing it. Um, Hassan, doing otherwise, I hope you're okay. I'm not doing okay. My stomach is has, hasn't has stopped being in the throes of madness. Um, anyway, yeah. he's also pretending we did a swing way too far left and he's course correcting. Yeah. Is your content a banger content? I think so. They're right though. You have a platform, the power of the community in action. Yeah, I'm I'm using it. You need an egg salad. I need Pepto Bismol. I need to guzzle fucking Tums and Pepto Bismol. Did you wipe us on? Of course. I you don't go number two without fucking wiping and washing your hands. That's crazy to think that that would even be a possibility. I've also slammed like five coffees. What happened is uh, I came to Australia and I ate a lot of hot pot. A lot of spicy hot pot and I drank a lot of alcohol and I just been eating like shit. So it just like broke me because I used to eat because in America I eat so healthy and I'm like breaking out. You can kind of see this little zit here that's like grown uh, and and became like its own being. Um, I'm breaking out a little bit. I'm pooping a lot. Not good. I advocate for solutions on a regular basis. Yeah, I, I, I didn't eat the American chemicals for a couple days, and now I'm dying. Um, that's what it is. I need my chemicals. You're looking like the deep from the boys. 
Thank you. He is very hot. What's your skin pH and the water difference? Have you considered taking a day off? I did. I took a day off yesterday. And I took a day off the day two days before then as well. You have AWS, American Withdrawal Symptom? Yeah. Listen, the major community organizing that has to occur at the top of the hour is against the three-minute ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free. Okay? Hassan, take your shirt off and grow your hair up. Please, I'm begging. No. That tan bronzer you got sprayed is so good. You think I got tan bronzer? It's just Australian sun, baby. That's what it is. I would be willing to help you direct chatters to specific on the ground things. Answer questions this year for free. We can make a major difference. I'm your soldier. Okay, thanks, Michelle. Um, we don't have Pepto Bismol. Best you will find is quick, easy tablets. I'm not using sunscreen. Shit looks like you look like that dude that bang no jumper's wife is gonna pop out behind you. Yeah, I have to I have to shut the curtains off because if I do, the light fucks up. I do have a beautiful view behind me and I show it in the morning, but you know. Anyway, um, here's the three minute break now. Yeah, yeah. Check your UV index. The UV is terrible right now. Why Will chooses a song? What is this? Holy shit! I never thought of that. Cause I'm. How long would I last? Not like you little twink. You little bitch. <laughs> what do you mean? I would, I would last. You're all fibrous tissue. <laughs> Hassan's ass is practically wagging steak. <laughs> shit is marble. It's true, but his body fat's lower now. Not that ass. That mm-hmm. ass is still real fat. It, he's got a fat ass. He's got fat ass. He really does. Have what a are they? Ass. He and Ludge have a dumb ball. No, 100%. dude. I thought I thought Twitch was banning slutty content. What's going on here? I thought Twitch was banning slutty content. I can't believe these sluts, these e thoughts. Oh, look at what they're doing right now. What are they doing right now? Oh my tummy, it hurts so bad. Silent shots to the head. You've got a, you've got a few more. Don't worry. Right? Do we have a few more? You got two more. Here we go. We got two more. Oh, put putting, that blindfold okay. back on. All right. Okay. Okay. All right, here we go. What they're doing is right. smut. <laughs> All right. Put that blindfold back on. Come in here, Rob. All right. Here we go. You have, you have an, you have an opportunity. To make it come back. Move your head. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. It's the most insane thing I think I've ever done. Watch out, Will. Here we go. <laughs> what is this fatherless behavior, bro? Okay. Here we go. All right. Can you secure me? Am I secured? Yeah, you're good, man. Okay. Ooh. I can just feel an aura. I can just feel... There's something special going on. <laughs> oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is not sexual. Quit making those noises. All right, I'll... Oh! <laughs> okay. Nope. All right. Okay. Seek up. Take them away. That is correct. Seek up. Take them away. All right. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Up we go. Seek up. Correct. No. Oh God! I can't see what's happening. Oh, oh. oh God. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> this was supposed to be a modeling show. Oh god. Bro. Oh. You guys are you guys are fucking savages. <laughs> Their view count went from 11k to 16k as soon as I tuned in. Last one. Here we go. Here we go. Last oh one. my. I'm dying. Right. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay. Hold on. We got the shirt. All right. Here we go. Got to get the shirt on. All right. Does it hurt oh your feelings god. that your friends decided to get intimate okay. when you left the country? Yes. We secured. Okay, all secured. Looking good. That's great. Now it's seventeen k. Holy oh, shit! Some application. Oh, these are those are G cups. And well, that would be correct. How does he do it? How does he do it? He's so well, good. Correct, ladies and gentlemen. He's the Rain Man of titties. That's amazing. Here, up we go. We gotta get these off. <laughs> bro is the Rain Man of titties, bro. He's a he's the tit savant. Now we're sending you home. With all of those. Wow. Thank you. Huh? Thank you. Did you like that segment? I love that segment. Wasn't that incredible? That's a good segment. Hey. Was it was it problematic? What the fuck was problematic? Me touching your fake tits? <laughs> I don't know. No, is that that's my wine. Austin, we live in an era yeah. where I hate that's a reality. Yeah. That you don't even know if that's offensive. Yeah. You're just afraid that because it's funny it is. Yeah. It's not offensive. It's not offensive. Boobs are great. Boobs are great. And we just talked about them in a positive light. And Sydney Sweeney killed wokeness. That's right. She did. She did. That's right. Fuck yeah. Isn't that right, men? 
Man, man, man. All right. Now, Will. Yeah. That's not the only thing we're doing here in the tent. Okay. All right. Did you like that segment? I fucking love that segment. Okay. It, can I be honest? Yeah. That was my idea. It was good. It was my idea. So, did I do better than you thought I would do? No, I knew. I, you did exactly how I thought you okay. would do. Good. All right. Now, here's the deal. We all got in a call to talk about things that we wanted to do with you. Yeah. And then I was like, Will is really good with boobs. I, I was am like, very good with boobs. I was like, I was like, Rob, get on Google and buy me as many boobs as you can of varying sizes. Find me some boobs. Yeah, and ship them. Yeah. And he delivered. See, I think that segment was fine. I think that segment is problematic if you had actual women. Yeah, of coming. course. Of course. Yeah. Which would have been that was our first <laughs> run, and we it didn't make it. it we couldn't find anybody that was willing Sorry. and able. Wait, oh, hold on. <laughs> it's sad with seeing what men have to do with their bodies for money. I know, slutty. What would these be? That'd be at least a B. Seriously? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Your 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 pecs are bigger. I I got big tits. Okay, now. Well, I got bigger tits. You have you have criticized me. No, actually, bring in the ducks. Bring in the ducks, please. Bring in the ducks. So we've got this thing called what the duck. <laughs> Ah, right. uh, this is cutie segment. Yes, this cutie segment that has been a hit on In the Tub with Austin show. All right? Can we get a little refresher? Yeah, sure. Hold on. Let's dump the ducks in here. You guys having a good time in the chat? Here we go. Where's Will's wine? Uh, on my shirt, spilled on the floor. I didn't do that. No, I know. Here we go. Watch out. Ah! Here we go. All right. This may be the most ridiculous. This looks insane. This looks like a... This looks like a Romanian porno. Like this is, I don't know if it's the lighting or whatever, but it it, it has like a, it literally like both my current stream setup and what they are also working with right now give off massive porn vibes. Like I look like, I look like I'm in a porn, like some kind of like backroom cast account situation. And so do they, but like two different types of gay porn. I'm so proud of Will. He's done a phenomenal job with his body. He worked really fucking hard, and he, he, I mean, Austin already was, like, shredded. He was already peeled. Right. This segment, somebody said unf- Nice. Term, what if they would have, if before yeah. they fucked me? He's I got just, bad. He's just gay. Yeah, I'm just gay. <laughs> Cheers. All right. Fear okay. and is the best looking podcast out there, straight up. The so you're going to pull a duck, and then something, because there's going to be a number. Ludwig Stream was more gay? And whatever you pull is going to be a simple, well, gonna, Oh, I'm my God. Right. There you go. You ever done this? Oh, bro. Second fucking time that's in two days. That's his second time. God damn it. God, he did that yesterday to me. Do you think I would have been bullied if you were wearing an inflatable cock? Look, look, look at this shit. Get a view of this. Look at this. Yeah, that's good. All right. I pulled the duck. Uh, okay. You pulled the duck. Duck number 10. Number 10. Duck number 10, which correlates to. I just texted so Austin. Chat, when he pulls a duck, we have numbers. At the I'm going to call him. Let's duck, see if he picks okay? up. Wait, Hassan texted me. Okay. So we're in the... Sorry, tub. sorry, sorry. Hold Sir, on. we're in the fucking tub. Oh, wait, he's calling. Can you mute the music real quick? Rob, can you grab my phone? Wait, he called and then he hung up. Do you want to... Do you want to call again? Well, fuck it. All right, all right. We'll call I'm calling. I'm uh, calling. Call right, here we go. All right, hold on. Here we go. I'm calling him, but he's not... Oh, there it is. Hey! What's up, Austin? Hey, how you doing? I right saw on? I saw that you guys were I saw that you guys were having fun without me and I got jealous. Mm. Well, we wish uh well, you're the one that told me you didn't want to get in the tub. I know. Did you guys hear him? You, you didn't want to you, you told me you didn't want to get in the tub with me. Have things changed? I I literally I tuned in. You guys were at like 11k. I tuned in 17k. <laughs> the horn dogs are are out today. Yeah, of course. Of course they fucking are. We're doing fucking numbers. I'm showing sure hold yeah, absolutely. You know why I jumped to 17k as on is because I started sucking Will off. Right? I I yeah. so I like, and listen. Was so close until you fucking ruined it by calling. Listen, I'm sorry. First of all, I was watching. Okay, you brought oh, okay, up right. cuties, phenomenal, okay. brilliant, very high rated segment. My favorite and, segment yeah. on the show. Wait, uh, did you not hold on? That was your favorite segment. Did you no, my favorite segment was actually segment? the titty. I mean, Will is the <laughs> Rain Man of tits. Yeah, he yeah, is he a is savant. Hold on, is, it was that on? Hassan, check this out. Hold my beer real quick. Okay. Watch this. What? 
Chat will <laughs> see it in a second. You'll see. Oh, there it is. Are you fucking kidding me? Dude, I just got the cum shot, like, straight up. Dude, yeah, okay. Are you fucking I, kidding me? I called I because people. I that's wanted to ask. Time, that's the third time that's happened in two days. I, I called because, like, I'm confused as to why Twitch is allowing this kind of e-thottery after a day after they decided that they will no longer allow certain body parts to be shown prominently on come Twitch. Home. Come, come home, Hassan. Come home, Hassan. Come I, home. We come need home. you. The Are cold... you going to finally get in the tub with me now? I, I, I'm not shredded enough. Especially after Will. Are you kidding me? Like, look at him. There, he looks, he's go, got the body of a god. Tub after we go to... Yes. Moy Thailand. Yeah, Moy. Moy. Two weeks. Wait, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> We're getting another... <laughs> what just happened? Did they get turbulence? What happened? I lost them. He he just he just hung up on me. Jesus Christ. Okay. Hold on, S Fan's called. S Fan! S Fan in the tub. Hey. This is great. S Fan. What's going on? Oh. Yeah, it's east of LA. Mm hmm Well well cool. The Coca-Cola has actually settled my tummy a little right, bit. We'll see you soon. This, is, this is gonna be a tight tub. This is gonna be a very tight tub. You're hammered. Fucked I'm up. <laughs> All I domestic fears are still so Thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, Michelob Ultra, Bud Light, know this, all domestics are spinoffs. Okay, every international deals would be, uh, normal. Cheers to our health. Drink! <laughs> <laughs> all domestic. He's such a baby. He had a chest hole shot. That's awesome. Look at him acting like he doesn't want to do this at first. Like, he does the fake, like, oh, I don't want to do it. Austin is just a hot tub streamer. He is. He literally is a hot tub streamer. This is the gayest shit ever? This is gayer than sucking a cock, for sure. You don't challenge me. Shit out of your chest, okay? He's like, oh, I don't want to do this, but I do want to do it. Lol, poor Austin didn't teach him those tricks when he was hanging out at the Applebee's. Yeah, he. it's cl clear that like he's never been to college, so it's just like he's oblivious to these tricks. Me making my duration, it sang it, it probably gets sent to that. And they see me and they're like, who's this gay porn star <laughs> asking me to do this? Like, Jack Black, I'll suck you. Uh, I met you in Melbourne on a first date, lol. You did? I don't. Oh, I remember. I think I know who you are. Dude, I met so many people yesterday. It was crazy. Thank God Twitch, Twitch is heteronormative. Yeah, this doesn't register as like bad because it's gay. Um, these stunts are eerily similar to the stunts Dan Schneider made children do. <laughs> I'll be kissing him any. No! I'm, I'm tweeting this. I'm fucking tweeting this. You sons of bitches. Why'd you have to do with me like that? Cucko? I'm, I'm tweeting this. You learn who your friends really are when they, when they all get together, when you're thousands of miles away show us your muscles as on i'm showing it this is as slutty as i'm gonna get i'm not gonna get sluttier than this the tub reveals who you truly are if that's your man why is he in austin's tub wait what m hud said this is what you're gonna be like after this trip this is this is how i am yeah you can see my pits dude it doesn't get sluttier than that look i have to i have to up the ante here because like they're being real slutty i have to up the ante <sighs> put me in a full nelson please the tub is anti-hot to me. Anyone who gets in the tub is less hot. Be like, Hans and I would be like, why can't we have normies in this community? Also, Hassan watches gay hot tub stream. Okay, where the fuck is that, Alexa? Come on, Alexa, get over here so we can go do IRLs. 4.8K bookmarks for the pod. The other one is way worse, dude. The other one is literally, you think this is bad? You think this one is bad? There was another one with 50K likes on just my thighs alone. And that one had 15,000. <laughs> that one had 15,000 bookmarks. The amount of thighs in this podcast in Australia. You were man spreading like crazy. I couldn't watch you around my mom. I was literally sweating watching that podcast. I'm not even going to lie. Are people bookmarking it ironically? Or are they going to crank it to your thighs? I don't know. I have, um, uh, I, I didn't realize like gay people fascinate me sometimes. Like things that I don't, things that don't register as like, he looks at my name. He's like, so, so here's the thing. Things that don't register to me as like hot are seen as like very hot, apparently, by uh, gay guys. Like armpits was shocking. This one I I was also confused by. Like I don't think this looks. I love that angle. Thank you, Hassan. Them legs. But what's the answer? Where are you really from? Hassan makes me unstable. 
How are you fluent in English? Did not hear a single word. Loving these angles. Yeah, I just, I, I don't even think my legs look particularly good. They just look big. Yeah, this one had 15,000 bookmarks, bro. This is crazy. Look at this. 15,000 bookmarks. What the fuck's going on? Y'all need, y'all need Allah. I mean, I don't really give a shit, you know? Uh, I'll, I'll slut it up all day, every day. But wait, straight dudes don't like women's armpits? I, um, I have never been like a super, I've never been into armpits. You're saying you don't like women's nice thighs full? I mean, I do like that, yes. But my thighs are nasty, bro. Look at this. You can barely see the definition. Um, and also on top of that, it's like very hairy. Like I, I'm kind of insecure about my legs, honestly. Like, I mean, I'm not insecure. I wouldn't say, cause obviously I'm showing them off here. Uh, like I don't, I don't give a shit, but like, it's like a, it's like an afterthought. I, I, it's not something that I've like considered to be hot. Where are you from? And I'm like, Los Angeles, California. And he goes, but your name is Hassan. Where are you really from? <laughs> like, I was shocked because, like, they don't do that in America, which is surprising because, like, America's pretty f***ing racist. But I've never had someone be like, but where are you really from? That's not even a border control thing. Like, people on the street, like even to me, racist, wh yeah. white guy, will yeah. just be like, where are you from? Yeah. I, I notice your eyebrows are a bit darker than mine. Come on. Well, the where are you from happened twice. It happened in the uber ride the guy immediately said the exact same thing he's like your name is Hassan. you're not from america like where are you actually yeah. from and that was a whole different can of worms but i don't even want to get into that right now do you train calves calves are hot wait so are ladies in the legs too maybe i need to change strategy you have to see this use him to choke me please thank you it's up to other people to decide if they're hot and they have decided what was that can of worms by the way you never mentioned it after the guy, my driver was Lebanese, and he was like, yeah, I'm Lebanese, and it's a criminal. Uh, Lebanese are the biggest criminals out here, and so are the Turks. The Turks and the Libs are running the bikey gangs now. Like, he was just, like, being weirdly racist about, like, Lebanese people and Turkish people, despite being Lebanese himself. And he was, like, super fucking right-wing, talking about how, like, Trump is going to save the country. You need to vote for Trump again. You know who's going to save America? Trump. A second term with Trump will surely save America, is what they were saying. Work on those peaks, bro. The pythons are big, but the definition is lacking. Bitch, I'm fat. The fuck do you mean? Like, yeah, I am working on it, dummy. The fuck? I'm literally, wor I'm working on it. Well, not, I'm working on the opposite now because I am, uh, does this like, does this like, like something you want? Well, let me tell you, you'll never get it. Bro, you can't claim that card anymore. I mean, I'm I'm not as well defined as I would like to be. And I was getting there before I came to Australia, but I definitely took a took a ten pound uh at least a ten pound difference here. What is this? Man, which do you prefer? The aristocratic elegance of the small breasted woman or the Nietzschean pro sex pro beauty large breasted woman? Have you seen this hot scored meme from the pod Dune spoilers? That's insane. Oh my God, they're on the front page. That image doesn't work. Asking about your ethnic background is very common in places like Melbourne and Sydney, though it's a normal part of conversation, to be honest, especially if your own ethnic background is maybe similar. What the fuck are they doing? Oh, face masks? That's smart. Big smile. So small beside the carpet. No one's a shred of his hand. That's so awesome. Kirby's on some other shit. Kirby. Helia Knut. My Guatemalan grandpa loved to stress out all Latinos by asking where they're really from. Canut accent. Canut. Uh, there's a lot of... Dude, I think it's crazy. There's a lot of sluttiness happening on Twitch right now. What the fuck? Someone said they're on the front page. Oh my God. Oh my God, they are. What the fuck? What's wrong? What's wrong with it? Hold on. Look at this camera. You look like Hannibal Lecter. Twitch, Twitch be like, hey... Twitch be like, hey, we're we're shutting, we're we're cracking down on slutty content, and then Twitch the next day is posting the sluttiest content you can post on the front page. That's awesome. You leave the country for a week and Twitch is in shambles, dude. It isn't. It is in shambles. Let me tell you something, okay? Let me tell you something. They've been collaborating more than I have ever seen. They're collaborating on like cutie streams. They're going on each other's streams every fucking night. I see it. I see it from afar. I'm over here in fucking Australia going, oh man, 
you know, sweet. I hope you guys are having fun without me. That's what's going on. They hate us. They hate our community chat. They hate us. They say, no, that, I've seen a douche. My Take revenge on them by getting in the tub with... They banned Amaranth and Morgpie earlier today to allow this. I think Twitch is taking a position that is just, like, objectively gay. Twitch is like, listen, no women nudity, only male nudity allowed, only male Coomer content. Careful now you make Tim Poop worry again. No invite to the tub, fake friends. No, they... Uh, I'm the one who said no to the tub. Let's be real, okay? I I would not. I I I'm not gonna sit here and act we like Austin it. didn't ask me. I was supposed to be the first episode, okay? He's been wanting to have me um, show up and do it. Wait, hold on. Where the fuck is March? Can you bring the other cam so we can test it? Also, pull up. We're running out of hours. When will you react to Arab getting kidnapped in Haiti? I already talked about it earlier today. I, I don't know what happened. I don't even know if it's real or not. Uh, I have no way of, I mean, I'll, 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 is there any additional evidence other than like his tweets? What are we doing for the IRL portion of the day today, King? Um, my, I wanted to go and find the Palestine, uh, the, the Palestinian protests today. Um, we're going to do IRL in a second. I'm waiting for March and Alexa to show up so we can swap it to the IRL portion. Um, returning with a tan for tub OBV, obviously good choice. I know you're not a big uh, music person, but did you see BB No Money's new video? Yes, I did. He's fucking killing it, dude. Um, it's awesome. I'm so excited. Okay. Oh, there is a, here's the info. Okay. Apparently there is, uh, some, okay. So for those of you who don't know, your fellow Arab is uh, a reactionary guy who like makes these like weird fucking classic, like poverty porn style videos where he goes like i hung out with gangsters in the worst slums or whatever right uh he's also like uh an aiden ross orbiter on kick he didn't used to be that way he was i think he was like a pro fortnite player or something and then when the fortnite views dried up for him he chose to um oh palestine protest is the state library at melbourne central yeah we'll go there um but yeah he he basically went from being a pro fortnite player to uh doing like little vlogs with his friends to being like a fucking like doing like a full blown right wing pivot. Okay. Yeah. He, he, Tyler Oliveira, his channel. Exactly. As one does many people do this, by the way. I mean, a lot of people have done this. Um, he is a kick streamer, I think. So much like, uh, the rest of the kick streamers, that's what he was doing. Um, yeah, he went from pro Fortnite to pro races. Yeah. That's the pipeline. So anyway, he went to Haiti as one does. I don't even know how he got in, because I'm pretty sure the Dominican Republic is not letting anyone cross the border at all. So I don't know how the fuck he even got into Haiti. Somehow he did to shoot, um, to shoot content with like the Haitian gangs, which is probably not a very, uh, smart thing to do. I think Drew Pinsky did it. Uh, Drew Pinsky did it, but like he did it right before like the situation, uh, unfolded. Austin is making out with Will. Wait, what? That's crazy. Give me the clip right now. Are you fucking joking? <laughs> what? How do you feel about those no oh, pleasures? Oh. He loves it, dude. Look at his face. He's loving it. He's red. Oh my God. Look at him. Look at him reaching out. I want to tell you to go back to some political reacts, but this shit only has two more days of being streamed until it gets banned by Florida GOP. Yeah. How does it feel? I, I've, I'm a cuck, dude. I'm, I'm getting cucked. The besties are making out. It's fucked up. It's fucked up being in the fucking cucko chair. Okay. I don't like it. I don't know how Sneeko does it. I was going to say it's bait. I was so wrong. Oh, how wrong I was. Let's run it again. <laughs> Austin talk politics with Lud. That is the biggest cucking. That is an even bigger cucking than anything else. Will kissed Austin with more passion than Josh Hawley kisses his wife. Okay, let's get back to your fellow Arab, though, or your Arab streamer, or whatever the fuck his name is. So, breaking, Lanmo Sanju says he's releasing your fellow Arab and Haitian fixer. Sanjo, leader of 400 Mawozo, published his video with Addison Pierre Malouf, a.k.a. your fellow Arab, saying he and his Haitian fixer have been released unconditionally and without ransom. This is the result of an intervention from Jimmy Barbecue Cherizier. When Kimi Vest 13 and I spoke to him this morning, he explained that someone offered Sanjo... 100,000 for Malouf's release. However, Cherizier is, as a matter of principle, opposed to kidnapping any 
uh, kidnapping and any ransom payment and convince Sanjo to release them. In the video, Maloof and his fixer appear unharmed and in good spirits, and they say they were not mistreated in any way. We are awaiting uh, confirmation from Maloof and we'll update ASAP. If anyone has Maloof's contact information, please DM me. Is that the same fixer from the Haiti video I watched with Drew? <laughs> I do find it very strange that he's looking talking like he's a hello yes please thank you Alexis here as a half French we don't claim him he's Lebanese uh your fellow Arab is Lebanese the thing is um like I don't know how the fuck he got in I don't know how uh he got caught I mean I guess I get I guess he got caught for understandable reasons because he was like fucking trying to film shit out there. Um, you need a red phone. Answer that phone so fucking fast. I mean, obviously, it's right next to me. And uh, I guess like YouTubers have decided that they can go to Haiti. Haiti chaos, gangs in crisis. How did Haiti's gangs become so powerful? I, d I just don't understand how YouTubers are fucking like, like going into Haiti and cutting content in Haiti. Like, I, I don't understand how this is content. I mean, I get why independent journalists would go there and try to, like, you know. I get that independent journalists try to go there and try to, like, make sense of the situation, offer light, shed light onto this conflict. But, like, I don't think your fellow Arab is trying to do that. You know what I mean? I think he's, like, literally going there for crisis porn, poverty porn, basically. Yeah, and he was tweeting that it happened because he's blanc. Blanc. Oh. This is funny. Oh. Hold on. Yes, you just got kicked out of Starbucks for, you guessed it, being white. <clears throat> well, well, well. Guess who just got kicked out of Starbucks for, you guessed it, being white. <clears throat> well, well, well. Guess who just got kicked out of Starbucks for, you guessed it, being white. <clears throat> well yeah, me and Alexa's new thing. Well, I guess it's not a new thing for Alexa. It's an old thing. Is him saying that uh, Turks are white colonizers? And the Serbians are the the POC that were colonized, like and in and in modern time too. Oh, so yeah, he's like he's saying that like uh, uh I, I, we we came up with a we came up with a fun thing, uh, two to KKK, uh, two to KKK, yeah, yeah. I I'm using Maoist standard English to to talk about Turkey now. Wait, why the fuck can I? What the fuck? What is happening here? Oh, what the fuck? Oh no, my windows crashed a little bit. All right, it's fine now. You showed up and you broke it, dude. Stream just got 100% gayer. I agree. Oh, what the fuck? Hold on. Being gay is pretty fun. The kind of Wait, say that again. I was like, being gay is all good until you get kidnapped and you got no one to pray to. Yeah. And I'm starting to reconsider. Um, yeah. Sexuality. There's no. There's no rainbow flag that you no. can. <laughs> There's you, nobody's praying to the rainbow flag when you're when you're kidnapped by a Haitian gang. Yeah, that guy. He's on like a hot, he, on a hot ripped bear to come and free me from this guy. Yeah, which is what he said. Does anyone have the tweet from your fellow Arab? We'll we'll, po we'll uh, can ima can't imagine going somewhere with active political warfare, getting kidnapped, and saying it's because I'm white. And remember, I'm not gay, Lamau. <laughs> he gave more details when he Facetime Sneeko. There is nothing funnier. <laughs> There's literally nothing funnier than being kidnapped by a Haitian gang in the middle of, like, political turmoil and going, you know who I should call? Fucking Sneeko. My guy gets... Oh, good. That's a good one. Good one. Good one, Alexar. Because, like, how long was he in there? Yeah, uh, I don't know. But he said, I was kidnapped purely for the color of my skin. I was kidnapped for being a blanc. Can't give any more details till I'm home, but all I will say for now is glory be to God. Release between Good Friday and Easter, Christ is King. When you're kidnapped in the middle of the Haitian desert, where is there a desert in I Haiti? No idea. I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, look, I thought it was like tropical. I thought this was the Caribbean. Yeah, Haitian desert for sixty minutes away from any civilization in a concrete shack surrounded by barbed wire. You don't pray to a rainbow flag. You pray to God. He's the one who called into your debate with Andrew Tate, and he said he was the better Hassan. I don't know if you remember. Is his name Hassan? It's just he he did like all of the wrong things. I think. Well, obviously, like, going to Haiti to, like, try to cut content right now is already, like, fucking idiotic to begin I, with. I think it's kind of cool. No. I think if he went and he was gay, I'd like him. But okay. he's, he's went the wrong, uh, the wrong he, way. Uh, this is the wrong person to yeah. fucking uh, criticize this kind of thing. This is, like, something you would do 100%. <laughs> no, but, like, the difference between you going there, and I, spe and I specify this as well. I feel like the difference between you going there versus, like, 
him going there is the the reasons as to why you're going oh, there. Right. You're you're like going there to in a in a more journalistic with a with a more journalistic interest of like shedding light to what the fuck's happening. Whereas like he's going there to be like you know see what happens when you let black people take control yeah of the country. yeah it's like wow this place i've i met the worst gangs of all time like they're eating people um but this is like when you expect the murat to critique tunnel girl no Which one's tunnel girl? no the murat is also has the same kind of autism as the tunnel girl does <laughs> sneeko actually got him released he said they don't let he said if they don't let arab go he was going to visit and stream there <laughs> johnny somali should go there what, what happened he's bro? not blonde so it, it worked earlier okay what, what what the fuck happened? He had received, we had been approved. They 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 drove and they pulled a shotgun and a, and in a, for four hours in a dark trailer, and it was two crackheads. They had their fingers on the trigger, and then four hours later, this boss, this La Monsanju guy, shows up with 20, 20 people, ten of them armed, and they're just staring at me like like as if I'm some money son because I'm white. You're blonde. And they're just. Bro, you're not white, dog. What the fuck is he saying? They're just staring at me, bro. And I'm like, fuck. We're Would you... like? I mean, I think Turkish people are white, so yes, he's white. Dude, <laughs> it's just like, it's so funny. He's like, yeah, dude, they hate me because I'm white. And then you see him, and it's like, who is... What, what are you talking about? Totally for sure getting kidnapped. So I started spinning, bro. I started like... It's pretty... Fu it's, it's funny because he's like trying to do that to be like, see, white people are under attack. Like he's trying to do the reactionary fucking commentary. It's like, dude, you went into an active war zone. Like, like on what, purpose. No, like, one, no one made you go The here. fuck do you mean? Like, yeah. oh, they did this because I'm white. No, they didn't. Yeah. Because you couldn't reach. Yeah. cameras. Yeah. I went to, I went to Afghanistan and they they shot me because I'm white. It's like no, you went to Afghanistan because and you're a foreigner with a camera, and you know they thought you were a dickhead. Making these guys laugh, whatever. They didn't torture me or anything. They threw me in a. Normally they throw people with a with a with a bag over their head and they throw them in a dark shack and feed them from under the door, because because we were so good at. Yeah. So number one, how did you have escaped? Speaking to them. We were, we had a good area, like, I, I was kidnapped in the middle of the desert for sure, but, you know, we were, we were in a, in a better situation than most would be while kidnapped. <laughs> we, we were, we were really good at being kidnapped, like, that's why they were, they were shocked at our prowess. They asked if I was gay and I said no, so they gave me the, the sweet. There's more videos in that Twitter account? Jeez, I can't believe we're looking at fucking Sneeko videos to understand what the fuck's going on here. Is there more? Do you guys have more? What, what happened, bro? Yeah, he he rizzed up his kidnapper. <laughs> yeah, gay, yeah, in a, in a yeah. stray way. They were like, they were like, wow, we are shocked at how white, but also how not gay you are, <laughs> and how Christian you are. When I visited Iraq in two thousand five, they stopped their insurgency in order to force me, a white man, to give land acknowledgments. <laughs> <laughs> white boy impresses local Haitians by being perfectly kidnapped. <laughs> he literally said, "Thank God I made the guards chuckle, or else he would have murdered me." Sneeko legit has Forrest Gump's haircut. The Palestine rally has started. Yeah, we're gonna make our way there. We're waiting for Classic. we're waiting for March right now. So we can go March. Have you have you seen Arabs call themselves white before? No. Common thing. Is there any kind? No, I've like, Oh Lebanese. Like, no, Lebanese. Oh, really? That's yeah. true. Lebanese Arabs say Lebanese Christians will say they're not Arabs, they're Phoenician. That's the only group of Arabs that I know that like I yeah. guess like like Somalis will say they're not black, but like, but you know they don't say they're white though. You know what I mean? I mean, Persians, Iranians will say they're white. Uh, Persians will say they're not Arab. Some will say they're white. I guess. I legit didn't know Sneeko stuck around after uh Peng what Penguinzo did to him. No tradies outfit today. I mean, it's if it's open, we can try. Um, Turkish white, green, brown. What Greek brown gypsy? What does that even mean? I can't, I can't tell if you're like trying to be mean or, or if you're saying what your background is. Like I don't know what's happening there. Persians are considered white. Not sure if that changes. As you know, white is a very flexible thing nowadays. Yeah, it is. Alexa POV. <laughs> I am proud to be Serbian. Kill me. That's sad. They're getting bombed. Unless this is like from somewhere else. But they're wearing those during the the bombing in 1999. Oh, this is old? The targets are um, old. Maybe she's referencing it from, and is in a, she looks like she's in a completely other place. So. If you guys want Warren Dejeri Indigenous Information while you're in the city, connect. I can come down and talk to you about it. What do you, 
I don't know what that means. It's just like the local um, indigenous country. Oh, dude, Qantas did a fucking land acknowledgement when we landed. That was crazy. That was like uh, the first time I've seen it happen in the real world. I got so triggered. Yeah, we don't. No, we don't do land acknowledgements in America that much. Like, it's like only at. uh, They only do it at like fucking like Google seminars or some shit. You know what I mean? Like, or maybe colleges, I guess. My country has marginally better protocol when talking about indigenous people than yours. Yeah. You guys disgust me. Yeah. You backwards. You guys, it, we, yeah, we're both, we, we both did indigenous genocide, but at least your people acknowledge uh, the land now. They don't give it. They don't give it back. No, but sometimes we land and we know about it. Minnesota does it all the time. Yeah. I hate, I hear it multiple times a day at work. Wait, what do you mean? <laughs> multiple times? Protestants are the indigenous Americans. Yeah, we only do indigenous, we only do land acknowledgements for white people <laughs> in America. My research lab at uni, it's every five minutes. Wait, what? Five minutes. I think people are exaggerating. I've never seen a land acknowledgement in my in in America. And anywhere. We did it like at, at our school. Like in, in primary school before like assembly. I mean you guys probably didn't even have assembly. Yeah, what is that? That's when, like at some point during the day everyone kinda like lines up and sits down in little files and then the principal comes out and addresses everyone. I saw that Haiti doesn't have a desert. You haven't been to a Phoebe Bridgers show? Yeah, that's why I've never seen a land acknowledgement in the real world. Why are you lying? Bro, what do you mean? Why am I why would I lie about my own personal experience? Like I've never heard someone do a land acknowledgement in the in I've only seen it on TV and shit. I've only seen it on Twitter. A land acknowledgement is like saying, you know, this is like da 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 indigenous land. Like those just acknowledge the tribes that lived there originally before, you know, the Australians came and genocided them. The docents at the museum I work at do one before every lecture. Yeah. Docent is like, dude, I haven't heard that term in so long. I feel like they don't say, do do we have docent in America? I don't know that. It's like one step below doctorate, I think. Like doctorate, isn't that just someone who finishes a degree? It is used at zoos a lot. What? The, yeah. I'm so hungry. Really? Yeah. Have you had, oh no, you don't eat until. It's like shouting out the husband, your husband's ex-wife at your wedding. Yes, no, it's literally unpaid volunteer that gives tours. Americans always do Israeli land acknowledgement. <laughs> yeah, that one that one is not good though. That's I wonder, a, I wonder if Arab would be um did it wide in Palestine. What do you mean? Do the the guy in Haiti. Maybe. Um did they ever do Byzantine land acknowledgement? Hosanabe how do you come protest baked yours? Why the fuck are there so many people in my chat right now that are waiting for me to show up to the protest? You guys need to chill out, dude. It's freaking me out. Maybe I'm not gonna go if you do that. I don't care about outside that much. Yeah, no, no, yeah. these dudes are like, okay, Maurizio is on his way. Hey, nice. Um, Microsoft go extremely woke and admit the indigenous land export. I love that they went. Hello e- and welcome to Microsoft Ignite. We dude, how the fuck did they film this with a tele- with a Got Motorola a razor with your ahead, Asus? And lots in store for you. They filmed this. They filmed this with your Asus phone, bro. First. We want to acknowledge that the land where the Microsoft campus is situated was traditionally occupied by the Sammamish, the Duwamish, Uh the Snoqualmie, the Suquamish, the Muckleshoot, the Snohomish, the Tulalip, and other Coast Salish peoples since time immemorial. A people that are still here, continuing to honor... What is this channel? You guys have a Calvin Klein channel in Canada? That's so bougie and bring to light their ancient heritage. My name is Allison Wines. I'm a senior program manager in our developer tools division. I'm an Asian and white female with dark brown hair wearing a red sleeveless top. And I'm Seth Juarez, program manager in the AI platform group. I'm a tall Hispanic male wearing a blue shirt, khaki pants. Today we kick off two days of learning more about the latest solutions, exploring how these key innovations can empower you to do great things and connecting with peers from around the world strategy resilience these are some of the crucial topics we'll be diving into over the next 90 minutes we'll be joined by microsoft executives renowned experts and our wonderful audience members we'll be taking their questions too let's get into focus on security hello everyone i'm natalie godilla i'm a caucasian woman with long blonde hair and i go by she her i'm a product marketing lead here at microsoft and co-host of the podcast security unlocked with this guy. Yes, that would be me. Hello, everyone. I'm Nick Fillingham. I'm a Caucasian man with glasses and a beard. I go by he, him, and I'm I've a security evangelist heard. here at Microsoft. I've never heard are... this style of um, 
It's for, um, they're doing that I'm for... someone with long hair? No, no, no. They're doing that because oh. of uh, people with... It for t that's a disability accommodation. Wait, so you're helping people with disabilities, like, um... It's, be more uh, bigoted. Be like, oh, fucking, a guy with a mohawk? <laughs> Fuck, yeah. I'm not watching this. Yeah, no, that's why, <laughs> exactly. No, it's a disability accommodation for um, people who can't see. Yeah, yeah. Um, let, me, let me change while you're, you know, while you're spitting. Oh, yeah. Fire Sick. I've, I've never seen that before. Yeah, it's kind of low, big dog. Yeah, that's true. That's why. I spend my whole life seeing things. But you it, woke enough. I'm not as woke as Microsoft, apparently. <laughs> it's not really that big of a deal. It's not, it's just funny. It's funny because of what it represents. And, and like, I don't know, I, I, I just find it to be funny that they're like, yeah, uh, I guess, like, we kind of did a little bit of a genocide. Oopsie. You know? But, but also, like, I'm, also, no, no, like, land acknowledgements, yes. Uh, actually giving back the land, absolutely not. Yeah. But it's also, I mean, like, they're continuing it everywhere. Like, all the fucking microchips that go into their stuff is is taken from the Congo and all these places they're fucking up. Like, it's not... I don't know. It just all feels so gross. I think it's funny. It's, it's like, hilarious that conservatives make a big deal out of it and, like, get really mad. Well, I think it's also just, like, a... We've taken... I'm on board with land acknowledgements just for that reason. That it, like, pisses off conservatives. So I think it's funny and awesome. Maybe that's silly, but... Uh. What else they got here? What makes a comment be highlighted on this thing? Um, I think, like, they can spend bits... Mm. They they yeah they spend bits uh or it could be like a first time chatter I think that's highlighted. Yeah, I think I think land acknowledgements are fairly common in Australia. I don't think it. I mean, I guess it pisses off right wing people, but it's like also just like pretty what's the word? A pretty mundane occurrence. Yeah, it's only mundane because the woke mind virus is taking that's over, true. dude. You're fucking Australian, and therefore don't understand how damaging this is. How fucked up it is, you know? Uh, is it warm out at all? No, it's cold. Fuck. Yeah, it's all changed. It's cold outside. It's all changed. See, see what, see what you guys are doing to Hassan? He has no idea what the, what, what the weather is outside. It's like practically snowing this morning, and he's put on a singlet and shorts. Yeah, it's, I didn't realize it was like that. It's because he'd rather cater to you guys than, than know what the world is like. Yeah, I'm in this dark room, trapped. Oh, whoa, 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 I'm not scrolling at all. Gotcha. Okay, that's how this works. No, no, I'm just, I'm just not operating this machine appropriately. So excited to be with you here today for Microsoft. So excited. He sounds like um, Hassan trying to do an Australian accent. That was amazing. I'm a security evangelist here at Microsoft. We are so excited to be with you. Yeah. But he doesn't sound like... Wait, did he say I'm a security evangelist? What kind of jobs do they have going over here? With this guy. Yes, that would be me. Hello, everyone. I'm Nick Fillingham. I'm a Caucasian man with glasses and a beard. I go by he, him. And I'm a security evangelist here at Microsoft. What is that? I don't know. Don't know. Do you guys know what a security evangelist is? We are so excited to be with you here today for Microsoft Ignite Into Focus. The theme of our show is security, a topic, Natalia, you and I think about a lot, and we know our audience does too. Hello, Nick and Natalia. Hello, everyone. I'm so glad to be here with you, with you all here. I'm a woman of Indian descent. I have brown hair, brown eyes, and I'm wearing some uh, killer five-inch heels. You sure are. <laughs> Well, thanks sure again for off. being here, Vasu. So, sure what stood off. out Lady to you from day one of Microsoft Ignite? The Director of Intelligence at Red Canary. She joins us via Teams. Katie, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It's is great it, to be here. Is there a way to do this and make it less, like, awkward? Because, I mean, I think it's just the people doing them suck. Like, when they're describing themselves, it looks like they're having a horrible time. I think it's just awkward. How can you fucking do it without making it awkward? It's just an awkward thing to do in my opinion have you watched love on the spectrum no i love love on the spectrum so good i have not security evangelist is supposed to join meetings to convey the interests of security experts but yeah no the the expl the ex explainer for like what you look like is for people with like people who are blind yeah and stuff like that jeremiah here big fat titties big ass lazy eye nice to be here <laughs> that would be funny if they did that hello good day I'm a son, I'm a Caucasian male, six foot four, fat cock. Good day to you, mate. Yeah, you start introducing your streams like that. Yeah. Click. Oh right, my. You were right. Okay, fair. I think we're just making it up. Who said that? Oh, M Hud. M Hud. He's always right. That's amazing. Can you rock Forest the same fit as Alex? 
he would be wearing the fucking what? he's so fun we we call this yeah i hope he changes the style this is great he, he already looks japanese he does look japanese kind just of in the face yeah I'll never, I'll never look just in, the, in face. the face not the body no 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 yeah not what would be a japanese in the body i don't even know what you mean by that neither no no i don't <laughs> wait what's the rice oh no i miss oh it's this they uh, have rice on the pillows Wait, is that his new sock? Yeah, he got new socks. He must be a percentage Asian, isn't he? I mean, his parents born in China. Um, but well, he's they're like, like Russians from China. But then again, like, what are Russians? Are I mean, Russians Asians are Asian. Well? Yeah. So, yeah. so he's, he's somewhere there. He's one of those. All right, March is here. Sick. How does the weather look outside? Good? It's nice. A little, little, little hazy. Um, can, you, yeah, can you put that? Can you start, get it started? Here. On the bag? Oh, you need the lens? Yeah. Oh, shit. Or nor. We'll just hook everything up in the last I could have brought mine from the hotel. Fuck, we should have done that. There's, like, stuff in there, though, too. I'll, I'll take it out. Hold up. <sighs> Clip channels, listen to Weeby or else. Yeah, so uh, today we plan on going to the CBD, right? The Commercial Business District in Melbourne. And we're going to walk around. We're going to get on a tram. It's free in the Commercial Business District. Uh, I think you guys are going to quite enjoy that, personally. Am I doing good? You're doing great. Yeah, so doing, I was just reading doing, chat. Doing I, can't, I, can't, I can't do yeah. streaming. All right, all right. Well, fucking, and there's a big there's a big protest. Oh, se not commercial business district, central business district. Right, we're getting on some trams. It's called public transportation, for those of you who don't know. Is it central business district? Sorry. Sorry, central business district. You could have let him have that one. He's trying his best with the Fuck. accent. I am. I am trying you know my best. You how much worse his accent gets when he's not confident? Yes. He's bad. He's bad. He's bad. Not good. Not good at all. You're going to have so many fans coming up to you because yeah, Melbourne be is a grid. Easy to maneuver. All right. Well, hopefully not. We're going to try to do... Uh, get swarmed. We're going to try to fucking walk around a little bit and uh, see what Melbourne is all about. I don't know how long the protest goes. I don't well, know either. Maybe they're stronger over here, but in Sydney, they finish pretty quickly. There's a Zionist Israeli Olympic judo athlete went to confront Japanese protesters in Tokyo Shinjuku yesterday, so be careful. What do you think? He like flew to Australia from Japan? Say chili bin. Chili bin. In your Australian accent, I need to test something. It's a New Zealand term. Oh, uh, chili bin? Yeah, it's what we call an esky. Or what you guys call a cooler. Oh, oh, right, right, right. Cooler. Chili um but yeah we've been uh we've been walking around the city uh for the past couple of days we've been walking around the city for the past couple of days having a great time well honestly i was just like trying really hard to make the best live stream today so we're taking notes on all the best places yeah we didn't uh, do any of that he's lying he's lying he's lying through his fucking teeth um yeah and that's it honestly so uh, once March is like uh, initiated the swap, we'll swap over there. Um, I don't know what to play while we are. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter because like you guys know what my hotel is, but I don't know what to play when like in the background. Why? Because this one is microwave TMI, not solar TMI. Or nor. Or nor. Or nor. Is this live? It's live. Yeah, they're, they're in the top. I'm trying to make you jealous. I, they have oh, made me jealous. They've succeeded. The oh, fortunate son. Just deliver some Jamie. Or, or like Ra hey, Frank, would you make a note not to include this in the YouTube VOD, please? Yes. Deliver some Fu and, and fucking blast that shit. Yeah. Blast that shit. Yeah. Don't put it in the YouTube VOD. Mute this shit in the YouTube VOD. Honestly, maybe I would fuck this. This is a fuck track. This is a fuck this track. Is a fuck track. Yeah. Boy boy thoughts on this. Just, just keep playing it. Yeah, he's a hot man. He is a hot man. He's a hot man. It ain't me. It ain't me. Um, chuck on some minute work for the exploring. Turkish cock. How long have they been here? They've been in there for. They're pruning, dude. <laughs> They've been in there for a minute. Uh, the the fear that I have is that this camera is gonna fucking like. I didn't charge the battery properly, so it has like a quarter only. Oh, okay, perfect. Then we should be good. Uh, and then we're shooting the pod. 
at the Cold One Studio, I think, with uh, Laser Beam, Alexar, and Alexar. Chad. Oh, six oh, it worked. Yeah, I think I think it's gonna be good. That makes life a lot and we'll we'll fucking slam some VB long necks while we're doing it too. Oh, we haven't done that yet. I haven't done it. I have not I slammed. We gotta go into a bottle store. You can't. They don't just serve them at hotels. They're so mean to him. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah. Uh, um. Oh, did you turn it on? Okay. I'll just uh, I'll just play the. Yeah, stream will be down for a second and a half. Okay, or not? Stream will be down. You can still hear us. I'm just gonna turn off the camera. You can, you can pull it out. Everybody's doing it, Will. I turned off the camera. Are basically obligated to give a room. Seriously. Oh, I was. I mean, seriously, but it's so many options of women. Yeah, no, but it's we're still here, by the way, chat. I mean, I guess we can just. No. Oh shit! No, I'm the wrong camera here. Smash it and bang it. Yeah, that's an old school. There right, we go. Here we go. Kim Petras. Uh, you ready? 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 This is like very. This is some real gay music right here. Respect to Austin for even knowing what the fuck this is. Are you ready for a rim job? Treat me like a slut is a banger. Where's the pod gonna be uploaded? It's gonna be uploaded on Fear End. Next episode of Fear End. Yeah. This is when you're trying to break your dick off inside something. Okay. <laughs> Damn. They are okay. lit. I can tell. Can I be honest? I didn't. I've never fucked a rim job by Kim Petras. You have. I have not. It's all right. I I've actually I had sex like three days ago or four days ago. So I don't I have, I've had sex to music probably like but twice. But it was a weekend. I don't fuck to music like, either. No. Often. It's fucking weird. Bro. Yeah, I don't know. But I guess we're we're the weird ones for that. I sing. You, you're the. <laughs> he does. Yeah, no, no, he does Serbian turbo folk while he's pumping. Yeah. While he's fucking, he's a real freak for that one. I fucked to the top of the hour ad break, which doesn't even make sense. But I'm gonna fucking hit you with it anyway. So, might as well uh, tell you that it's coming right now. Of course, you can avoid those ads by subscribing for five dollars or five dollars for free, with a dollar redo or a free one with a Twitch Prime. By connecting your Amazon Prime account to Twitch again, you get one free Prime subscription a month. We're going to make a fucking transition over, and we're going to be walking around in the city of Melbourne in a moment. Hold one second. I guess we can swap it. Where is this filming from? Your... You want to show them your room? Yeah. Yeah. We can show them the room. I mean, is there anything, like, that is... Nah, it's all good. Just I got to do a bit of VB long neck out here. You're looking to drink right now? What a bitch you uh, I didn't know what to drink today for the podcast. I haven't swapped it for the, over, the India. I think it's swapped. I think it's swapped. Better put my jump up. Is it not? Oh, it is. Yeah. Okay. So they can see us. Yeah. You can show them the outside and stuff too. Cool. <laughs> no. Hassan brings his own books to the hotel, that so we can. true. He does bring so his own. So we can look smart. This one's a revolutionaries because he calls himself a socialist. Um, I don't know what any of these other ones are. <laughs> oh god, flashbang! You haven't had breakfast. Melbourne. No, I have breakfast, no. Melbourne. I might buy something on the way. I mean, it's pretty nice. You guys said it was cold, but... It I was. Mean, it was colder than yesterday. It's Yeah, it's, it's not too bad out right now. Should I wear... I'm, I'm trying to see if I can wear my jersey. That's the thing. Oh, I this wanted, one. You can wear that. Is that what you're talking about? Wallabies. Well, you were talking shit about the singlet, saying that it's going to be too oh, cold. Oh, I'm sorry. You were saying that... Oh, that's a good shirt, though. What? This Lebanese shirt. Yeah, it is a, it is a good shirt. What does it say? Chromio. Great yeah. band. Great band. They're Lebanese. Yeah. Chromio. Okay, get that. They have it in the fucking... They have the little dog. Mr. Walker. Yeah, on their... On their keys. Um, so where are we going? We are just gonna head out. And uh, go to the Palestinian protest, potentially. Uh, which is in front of the library, I think, where we went yesterday. That big area. I oh, think. the place where they had the Christians yesterday. Yeah, I think so. Okay, it's a pretty small area. I I don't know. I, I think it's. I there. think the last time it was at the um at the big train station. I don't, so know, I don't know where it is. Melbourne. I actually don't know where it is at all, to be honest. So we'll see. Uh, I keep wanting to say walkabout, but now that I know it's like been used with like racist connotations, because I just thought it meant like walking around. I have to check myself before I wreck myself with this racism. 
Here we go. Some Australian currency. Put it in my pocket. State Library. 12 p.m. An hour ago. This is where it is? Yeah. All right, so that's where we're gonna go. State Library. Okay. Um, do I have everything? Do I have everything I need? We should do a piss. Oh, we, could, we could walk there, it's like... Yeah, that's what we'll do. We can also take the tram there too. Oh yeah, we we'll take the tram down like two stops. Yeah. Like nice! Today. What a convenient city. Also, people here are really, really, really nice. We went to the KFC yesterday and I left my favorite jumper in there. And someone ran out after you? No, no, it sit there, sat there for three hours, no one touched it. It could be that this place is really nice or that this is just like a piece of shit jumper that no one wants. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I think, I think, I think people are just very nice here. Jumper, we call it a sweatshirt. Sweat. But you guys call it, someone, someone said pullover. Is this a pullover? Yeah, it's a pullover. What's a, that's the craziest word I've ever heard. Because it doesn't have a zipper, so you just pull oh, it over. Oh, pull it over, okay. So these are pull-ups. Yes. And these are put-ons. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense now. <laughs> what is this? Son, trying not to get roofy? Yeah. <laughs> does he do that often? He's worried about, yeah, that does happen to him often. Wait, what? No, I'm just kidding. No, they just serve it like that. So like dust doesn't get in your drink. Oh, okay. I think we're good. Mm-hmm. All right, let's do it. Let's fucking do it, mate. Let's get to it. Let's hop to it, mate. Let's do it. Okay. This is it here. It's for chat. I don't actually have, I didn't throw anything on for them to watch while we're walking. I mean, yeah, I they us. Like, us. Serve us like savvy. All right, you might get lost here in a second. I never even went to the pool or the gym here. I wonder if it'll, it's got to cut in here, right? I doubt that they'll have coverage in here. It's in the we elevator. We have time to play basketball between Street We could and... ball. Let's go this way. Do you know how to get there, Alexi? You want to lead the way? Yeah. Oh, All man. Right. Are you going to do it? I, I don't know how to get there, but I feel like I would not have a better idea than Alexa would. You know, we've we've made fun of him quite a bit, but he's done a decent job of showing up. Showing, showing you a city I've never been to before. Yeah. <laughs> like, you can get on the line. It's so easy to go and get around. The um the trams are good though. The trams I are amazing. For those of you who don't know, <laughs> ladies and gents, we're out here in Melbourne, Australia. It is ca kind of cold. I took it. I take it back. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of chilly. <laughs> and you're wearing like three layers less than you were yesterday. Yeah, yeah but the, and it was, was so hot. hot. Fuck, and he was wearing a turtle. But I had that shit on though. <laughs> you were putting that shit on for the city. <laughs> um, I had that shit on. Right here is the oldest church in Melbourne, and the oldest church in Australia, as a matter of fact. Uh, we're hearing the bells ring. What that here, what you see right there, is what is known as public transit. Ladies and gentlemen, it looks like a bus. A lot of you have probably seen a bus, right? That is what is known as a tram, okay? It goes on rails. It's actually quite slow, but it's quite nice. Inside of the CBD, inside of the CBD area, the trims are, as a matter of fact, free, right? As soon as you get out of the fucking CBD area, though, unfortunately, you need to pay. And you need a physical card. It's called a Mikey card. And you need to have this Mikey card in order to be able to take advantage of the trams. Outside of the CBD area, they do have local law enforcement making sure that you have that Mikey card on you at all fucking times. Seen is, a lot of his accent. It's so much better on screen. It's yeah, it's so it, much I, better. I don't understand. How does how does that happen? Right there, you can see a fucking local car. It's called a U. The tradies. I'm actually no, suspicious. How? Like, were you not sleeping last like, night? You were just. I think it's the constant risk of walking by Australian and sounding like a bad Australian accent that's forcing him into. But, but he's always. He, yeah, he, was, uh, yeah. he was doing the same thing yesterday. It just wasn't as good. All right. Why are you? Why are you fucking bringing the mood down, mate? I'm doing a good it's job, brilliant. right? You're so yeah. good. All right. So these are the real jobbers, right? These are the men and women who built the fucking city. Jobbers. The jobbers, right? I made that up. It's put it's it's sounds, good. It sounds it's Australian. Australian. Sounds Australian. All right, we're making our fucking way downtown now. Hold on. Do, are we going in the right direction? Maybe. Oh, um, we go here and then we go like, it's somewhere over there. But we right. need to take a tram like going down the street. All right, we have a, we're a real, Fast, real right. Aussie. Hitting high, hitting top speeds in there. Mate, where are you trying to go? Where are you going, mate? Mm. How's it going? Um, a lot of colonial buildings here in this area as well. It's quite, it's quite nice. Uh, kind of odd at the same time. Seemingly, uh, Melbourne uh, industrialized and, and became a big city. 
quite fast. So there's a lot of modern high rises, a lot of modern high rises everywhere, but also simultaneously, you'll find some old colonial buildings like this one, right? To remind everyone how things used to be before world culture came and ruined the country. And by world culture, I mean the Chinese. You're a fire. <laughs> right, <laughs> very nice. So Melbourne as a city has uh, a bit of a rivalry with Sydney. Sydney is uh, used to be the largest, most popular city in Australia. Sydney uh, is now being let by Melbourne. Melbourne used to be known as the wealthiest city during the California gold rush. At the same time, there was a gold rush happening here as well. And as a consequence of that, this city was known as the wealthiest city in Australia, whereas Sydney was the largest. Nowadays, now they got it all. Yeah, nowadays Melbourne has actually grown in population size and has actually caught up to Sydney and is slated to defeat Sydney in the population numbers in a couple of years. <sighs> oh, here we go. I think. Or maybe not. I got nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. I just thought that that was a so I thought that was a trying fan. to fake you out. Yeah. He's like, bah. Yeah, I thought that was a fan. Potentially walking over, acting aloof, acting like he doesn't know who I am, but turns out not a fan at all. Right. Here we have one of the old enforcers. Very weird. Looking like he's got a weird wig on. The old colonial enforcers. Who's that guy? In the court system. That right Hi. there. This is China. Why does it say China on our statues, mate? They've taken over. It's a statue of a Chinese man. It's not. <laughs> it's uh, great. Dying cartoon, I've got to say. No, we're not in Egypt. I don't know where that is. Uh, erected by the people of Victoria to honor the memory of Charles George Caroon, Major General of the Royal Engineers, who fell at Khartoum in January 26, 1885. I tried to do... My, my duddy. I tried to do my duddy, he says. This is the happy warrior. This is... What? I can't read. Oh, my this is he that doesn't... every man in arms should wish to be. I feel like you've gotten a, a thicker accent as a consequence of yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, seems like Australian. it seems like Alexa is trying to also maintain maintain the presence that he's also Australian. They can't, Next I, maybe I just swap. No, I, I no. He's in the presence of a true proper lad, and he's having a hard time. He's overcompensating. It's all good, Alexa. This is what a real true blue Aussie. Operates like it's a pedophile statue. Oh, it is. He sought the little children. Oh, he does say he's a pedo. Very nice. They do have. Yeah, uh, it's right there. The they do have the, the the crossings here. They have a uh, extra. They give extra amenities to the pedos out here. They say, "Hey, make way for the pids." Very weird. <laughs> Part of Australian culture in Melbourne. At the street crossings, they acknowledge the pedos. Right here, we have another old building. Forget what this one is. What could this building be? Do you know? I'm gonna look it up. This right. is a treasury. Oh, right. Yeah. The well, they have all the bountiful Australian treasure. The doubloons and such. <laughs> you know, the, the currency with our beautiful queen on it. And the king now. Yes, it's the old treasury building. I don't know how we crossed this area right here. Okay. Yeah, I feel mean, like we should have crossed through the state over there. Yeah, but I wanted Bad to see the guy. statue. I wanted to see the statue, mate. They're also live streaming. Oh, fucking hell. Wait, really? I, I don't no, know. No, 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 he's just carrying it. Yeah. Uh, I, am, I am on edge for no reason. I think we should just cross oh, there, mate. What, you think you're gonna get like... I don't know what the, what the Twitch term is. It? Stream snipers. That's it, mate. Yeah, this place is just better than Sydney. I've changed my mind. Dude, it is. Yeah. Why, do you, why do you say that? People are out and about all the time. They're, they're walking around having fun. Sydney's a bit, a bit quieter. Oh, you're here for the sign. Here we not go. Not as fun, not as youthful. I'll go to this one, show it. It's going to take a while for it to show, but it says give way to the pigs. Very nice. Eventually. Oh, there it is. Weird. <laughs> we jump on here and go like one or two stops. Yeah. We walk down. I do have a hard time coming in from... Uh, America, of course. Uh, I'm always looking at the wrong side of the road when I'm crossing, because obviously in Australia, you, you drive on the right side of the road. <laughs> Why are you shaking your head? His back's getting so, so rough. 
Oh, oh no, it's not getting good. I'm just, I'm just picturing in my head, I'm like, does someone, do they think, they see you live streaming, they're like, are you an American or are you just like a Australian with some kind of like, weird accent? Yeah, something going on, like a guy, some random Australian guy who thinks he's famous but like can't talk Mate. properly. And... <laughs> I'm wearing a fucking Queenslander key. Everyone knows I'm a true blue Aussie. Everyone knows this is not sold to non-Aussies, right? So when they see me, they say, oh, that's a Queenslander. That's a Queenslander accent. That was pretty good. Right? You talk like accent. this to the um, Palestinian protesters who de definitely won't recognize you. Yeah, I did go. There's a there's a consistent uh, Palestinian protest happening outside of uh, the parliament building where they always have like 10 people. And I walked up to them and immediately they were like, we know who you are. <laughs> so, in a good way or a bad way? No, 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 in a good way. Why yeah. would that be in a bad way? I don't know. I don't know. Some people, not everyone loves you. Well, I mean, in the pro-Palestinian <laughs> movement, I, I doubt that no, I have, no. uh, you know, people who hate me. Because I have been advocating for Palestinian emancipation for many, many years. Um, but yeah, this is uh, right here. This is what is known as a tram stop, right? These trams are these light rail, big vehicles. They're kind of like cars, but they take more people in, right? And I think they're free. electric as well. Yeah, they might be. Is that what be. that is? It does look like it might be electric right there. We got fucking rails and we have electricity. Good day. How's it going? <laughs> Me and Alexa both did the same cringing. base. You're cringing, I'm a friendly Aussie. It's fine, it's fine, it's not a big deal. It's fine. It's worse because they didn't respond. No, they did. Why, the lady, why the were, lady smiled. Why weren't you like this in Sydney? So why is Melbourne bringing this back? It's been a couple of days. Uh, Do we get on that side now? Uh, oh, I think we're on this one. Oh, nice. Look at this. I'm gonna, terrible. I'm gonna point the camera at the yeah. floor. I'm gonna put the camera at the floor because I don't want to be in people's face. No, show, show the tram though. I will, but once we get on there, that dog is so cute. Thanks, dog. Who? You. Who's that? I said that dog is so cute. Oh, okay. No, I love dogs. <laughs> he hates dogs. That's true. It's true. He's not a. He's not a lover of dogs. He's a hater. He's a hater of dogs. It was a fast one, eh? Oh yeah, I'm gonna check where we're going. Sort of um, I might go over there to check where we're going. Okay. Why? No reason. I don't get it. Why are you looking at me like that? Because you don't want to dox our location? Is that what no, you're no, saying? No, because live streaming is spooky. Oh, yeah, I forget you don't live stream. Yeah, yeah. Library. You said that's where they're at, right? Yeah, yeah. But which one? There's hella libraries. I think it's at the state library. Sorry, I think we got like almost This stop is 101 Collins Street. I love how the um. Stop seven. I love how the robot talks to you. I always get like in trouble when I'm in Sydney. Oh, it's a streamer alarm. What have you done? Yeah, the long alarm. Um, yeah, it's so annoying when you're traveling in a new place and you're on public transport and you just don't know where you're going. This guy describes everything. He's like, at the next street, we're turning left. So get off if you don't want to go there. It's just amazing. It's so useful. Japan is similar. It's like impossible to get lost. You saw him watch the mirror? Oh, true. See? Yeah, it is. Good, it's good doxing comms, us. Good comms, good comms. Good comms, mate. Good comms. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I think we can get off here. You think so? Let me just walk straight I think up. There's to the one library. more, no? One more stop? So we're going down this street. We want to go up. So we're going to start right here. Stop requested. That's the stop button. Oh, well, I used the stop button right here. That sounds like so much cooler. We don't have these in Sydney. <laughs> right. We're going back. Oh, oh, maybe we can get out here. Well, let's, cr let's cross the... Oh. Oh, yeah. It's great. Monday, April 1st. Trims are running on a Saturday timetable. Probably because it's still Easter weekend. Right? Is yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. I wouldn't know that if it wasn't for the announcement. You wouldn't know that if it wasn't for me, your Australian tour guide, mate. So that no one could die from these things. I did. Well, not. These are like going a little bit faster, but I do feel like some of the trams are so slow that it's pretty hard to yeah. jump in front of one to kill yourself. 
This is something he's thought about. This is something I'm thinking about. He's brought this up a few times, actually. Yeah, <laughs> because there is a big problem in Australia with people jumping in front of ongoing trams and, and metro and trains, right? Jumping in front of trains. That's the downside of having effective public transport around people, the city. People it's use it. It's the death <laughs> right. life. People use it to kill themselves, right? That's why. That's why America's no right for, for not having public transport. Yeah. Right. We'd have too many deaths. Yeah, which is why we have a more efficient way of doing it in a private way, which uh, is not in front of a lot of people. It's called having a gun and shooting yourself in the face with it. A lot of comedy in the city of Melbourne, a lot of funny people. I haven't heard anyone make a joke yet. I've never left. I've never left, not even once. But the people of Melbourne swear by their humour. We've gotten a lot of flyers walking around of people asking, demanding we go to their fucking comedy shows quite a bit <laughs> so you'd be firing in a funny way right right if you're trying to get people to come to your show it's the expectation maybe you'd give it to them and it'd be like on a string and then when they grab it it'll go like whoop and you can't get it <laughs> then i'd laugh and i'd be like take take me to the show <laughs> <laughs> like a turkish ice cream guy yeah yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, yeah. You want it? Want it? You it's like a little taste like a free taste of humor. Exactly. We take the humor. You, otherwise, you just have to trust them that they're funny. How bad is it on a scale of one to ten right now? What the accent? Ah, uh, fine. It's not. It's not. It's not a bad quality accent. It's just alienating. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. What is it alienating? <laughs> I do need to buy. I kind of want to go into the Doc Martens and buy laces. My Doc Martens, no, not these, but my shoes actually need laces. Should I do that right now? We're in front of it, might as well. At the Doc Martens store? Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna eat some laces. <laughs> these are kind of nice. This is skinhead shoes, I don't wear racist shoes. Wait, Doc, Doc Martens are skinhead shoes? No, I think it's like ages ago. Now it's cool people shoes. I guess I have one of these on right now. Sorry? That makes sense. Yeah, exactly, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Which ones should I get? Are you buying some uh, shoes? Yeah. 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 Okay, Look at these. These are fire. Dude, these are only 280 instead of 360 and it's Australian. These are basically free. It's like 20 bucks. Oh, it's true. Yeah. You do have... Can I have a photo? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, hi. I've been watching your stream and you were so far away from the process, it's insane. Like, Wait, we're far from it? Yeah, yeah, okay, so... It did originally start with State Library, but it's like now it's like Russell Street, Lonsdale yeah. Street, it's like so far away. Oh, oh. Yeah. sorry for, like sorry for, no, you're good. No, it's like super far. It's like, I reckon it would take you probably like 10 to 15 to walk there right now. Okay, that's fine. So, it's not too bad. bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's not far at all. What? Yeah. Oh, no, it's because like, you guys are Americans. Because, no, but they're constantly moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Oh, no, you're so good. Like That's right. I appreciate you telling us. <laughs> I was like in the chat. I was like, guys, like highlighted. Yeah, he's not reading chat at all. <laughs> These are kind of crazy. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. Oh, these are Year of the Dragon docs. Whoa. Yeah, I'm fucking with these. I feel like I want these. I don't have room in my luggage for them though. They don't have the one leg that I need. It's either so super short or super long. Yeah, unfortunately. Do you have yellow ones for that length though? For this one? Yeah, I'll take the yellow ones. Whatever. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, we're gonna live streaming. Yeah. That's all good. See Cool. We got some inside info that uh, <laughs> that um, we were completely right. Yeah. They were we're right. doing everything perfectly, and I think waiting here to buy shoelaces is actually a better idea. Why? Because they're doing a circle and coming back to where we were gonna go. So oh, the so longer we stay here, the more likely we're gonna hit them at the we'll same intercept time. Intercept them. Okay. Yeah. Wow, we really... That's not a genius. Yeah. Damn. I thought he was buying shoelaces because he was like... No, he's like, buying time. Yeah. How do you feel about these? Yo, do the thing I... you did with the $5 shows in the chat. What? Oh, yeah, right. Are you sure you're not going to get um, banned from Twitch? There's some pretty 
zesty stuff. So this is our queen, who we love. Um, but if you were to fold it here, it's something we used to do a lot in primary school. What you end up seeing is a fish giving head. So oh, the oh my god, That's yeah. the penis. That's the fish's I mouth. See it. That's a little eye. Oh I see the fish giving head. Sorry, I'm a really big fan. So you have to keep trucking this important work. Do you want to take a photo? Would that be okay? Yeah. Oh my god, thank you so much. Oh yeah. Okay, so I gotta get a photo. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so shocked. <laughs> <laughs> so much fun. Where are we going? <laughs> what the hell? Where's the... Where's the It's okay. She's gonna, she's gonna ask for all of you. Okay, three, two, one. Here it comes, Shepard. Hi. Oh, let's get out of here. Why is he so blurry? Oh, my camera's broken. Wait, oh, okay. okay. I just, it's like, it was all normal, and then once the sun looked at the camera, went... Dude, it's so Oh, mine's so much worse. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Really? Do you want to take a photo? <laughs> Alright, hold on. We stayed at one landmark for too long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't make it to the protest. Alright. Let's do it. Uh, you have your phone? Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it with mine. It's okay. <laughs> nice. Here we go. You ready? Three, two, one. Awesome. Thank you. Alright, don't worry. What I Thank you for watching. Uh, where are we? Okay, so what did she say we're supposed to go to? Do you know where it is? It's the same place. It comes back to the same library, so just like walking around the block. Oh, oh I found a way there. Maybe I'll get a squid on the stick for breakfast. Oh, nice, yeah. Okay. Platypus? Oh, souvenirs, mate. You already got your souvenirs. This is so much better. Nor, nor. There's always room for more. Let's go. That pizza doesn't look too bad, yeah, right? Honestly. It's kind of appetizing. Shocking. I'm very hungry. Yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll eat when we get closer to the area. I think. I had breakfast we'll earlier, for breakfast. and then I received some news, and it killed my appetite. You received some news? <laughs> yeah. What? That you have to work? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, damn it, dude. I have to film oh, a podcast no. today. I'm not hungry anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Keko, this is now a shopping stream. This man is. <laughs> Aware he's going to be doing this accent for the next six months? Vapiano. Uh, I will be on fire. Vapiano. That's, uh, that's Italian you, for vaping. Yeah. Ah, here you now, go. Now that vapiano. Ah, vapiano. Hey. <laughs> now that I've gotten the notable from a true blue Aussie, I will never stop. I know. I know who I am. I'm a real Aussie. And therefore, I'm going to be doing this fucking accent because this is how I talk. Look at these cool statues. Pretty Don't haunting. Don't know what they're Pretty supposed haunting, to be. Actually. What? Pretty haunting, actually. Yeah, it's kind of creepy. We're not gonna miss the on the stick. Oh. Two competing ISBs here. We've got Vodafone on the one side, Telstra on the other. They're both shit. They're both shit. None of them offer good service. Major letters in college. Oh, your people. You wanna go? Go. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you wanna go talk to your people? Voice um, your song? Nah, nah, I already have them on the radio. I know everything. They offer free Qurans, English translation. I, I got a free Quran at home. What are they talking to the girls about? I kind of want to know. Brother, uh, brother. <laughs> what is he doing? Oh, okay, thank God. I think he was walking over to talk to you. I was like, please, God. Can you get a photo? Yeah. Thanks. I've noticed it's. Oh, wow, you busted out the camera and everything. Yeah. <laughs> I've noticed it's only been young. Kind <laughs> of interesting. <laughs> Have a good one, guys. <laughs> All your fans are like when you normal, your old <laughs> like young women. <laughs> normal. I only get thirty-year-old men. Or that kid yesterday. Who oh, was he like, was me. Yeah, he <laughs> was me. <laughs> Some guy came up to him. And he was like, I could, I could sense like he was, he was one of those like, he was like an anarchist for sure. I could sense that off. The, he, the vibes were were permeating. Um, he, he came up to him and he was like, well, you bitched it. <laughs> you bitched well, it. You didn't like, go into the base. So like, I like your video when you go to the CI base, but you bitched it, mate. <laughs> I, like, I like that attitude, though. It's nice. Potentially, he might do it and he might do it better. Yeah, not that I'm encouraging. I go, no, 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 no. That's not what I meant. But um, I just like brave people. He seemed like a brave man. <laughs> oh, no. Back in China. They've got their banks out here. They've got their own currency, mate. <laughs> What's up, man? 
Holy shit, you're taller and hotter in person. Oh, okay, thank you. Nice stuff on the pine, uh, pine gaps. Thanks Holy so much. Shit. Not a lot of fun there. Yeah, Thank surprised you. or not. So yeah, or, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you committed suicide by 13 great shots. Uh, yeah. I love it. Very warm, great food. Yeah, I've awesome. got to say that all the time yeah, now. Yeah. Because, you know. oh. oh, I love it. <laughs> Awesome. Um, you were here like almost two years ago. Oh, yeah. Phenomenal. And uh, um, yeah. we got to walk. So if you want to, yeah. Okay. All right. We just we have to run to to the protest. Yeah. March. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Should I take my travel plan? Ready? Three. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was two, like, one. Oh, oh. Sorry. sorry. Bye -bye. Three, two, one. All right, he took good. a photo of himself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Uh, how are you going, guys? Thank you so much. Not that far out of Alfred. You could drive there. No, not that I'm condoning this. No, it's not. Sorry. Have a good one. There's one time someone was there. Do you know where we're going? It's straight. It's straight. Oh, yeah. like I'm <laughs> are you? I swear it's straight. No, it's definitely straight. We walk past it all the time. That's where our, like, um, That's the Christian test. prayers happen. So yesterday we had something that I assumed was like super American. You had this guy with like a microphone and like leading a big prayer session. And it sounds like I've never seen this before in the States. Have you seen people doing public prayers? Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, so what is he talking about? I don't know. He doesn't leave his house. Of course, it's America. We invented this shit. Want a photo? Yeah, sure. Look how droopy. Look how droopy the hospital heads are, bro. Real. It's crazy. Real. All right. Well. Three, two, one. Thick. There you go. Have a good one. Yeah. Unlock. Unlock the illegal occupation of Israel. This trip is real. Damn. You like that. A little the, the, bit. The, the, I, the, I the, the comedy is rubbing off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you should be hanging up, man. Yeah, I'm a proper Melbourne bloke now. Doing Melbourne style comedy. Oh, I want that fucking stern stick. Dude, get some. I might get some and bring it to the protest. Yeah. You guys want anything? No. Uh, maybe Marsh wants some. Do you? I'll take a bite. I'm not trying anything right now. I need to be on my tip top shape. Four. <laughs> throwing bows, mate. For throwing elbows. You fight the Palestinian protesters? No, you never know. There might be counter protesters, mate. No, I'm kidding. I just don't want to eat right now. I don't know why. I get sluggish after eating Australian food. It doesn't have the chemicals that American food has. So, like, it makes me feel sluggish. Take a bite of his cock, Marsh. What? And I will. Again. Haas, fans meeting him, be like, look up, look up, look up. It's gonna be the most fucked breakfast. Just a one whole I don't know why you're doing chili. that. I don't know why you're doing that to your tummy, honestly, but it's, it's good gonna, that you're doing it's it. It's gonna be tasty, though. Look how good it looks. I mean, I can't oh, you can't show them, but yeah, it looks, it looks fucking amazing. Wait, why don't you show it? You guys all. It's, this is it. No, I meant like... Oh, it's there in the window. That thing sitting up there in the window. Whoa. It's gonna be so up in here. Oh, look at him, he's throwing it down. That's the squid, right? Yeah. That's a whole ass squid, bro. Is that what you got? Yeah, it's like 10 bucks. It's confusing. Oh, it's squids are more expensive. Oh, watch out, watch out, watch out, baby. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh, what's up, baby? <laughs> oh, he was calling me, baby. That's weird, I flipped that on camera. You should not say that on camera. <laughs> Yes, the allegations are true. Oh, you're taking a video? My American friend. You're much taller, Bill. I've heard that. The camera, the camera short. Yeah. Do you want one too? Yes, sir. You want to hold it? Sure. Yeah, where is it? It's, it's like. It's straight. Like, yeah. Okay. It's all the trick here. It's great. Yeah. Oh, I love the food. I got it. Hi. I, I, I love the food. It's awesome. It's, it's everything's yeah. sick. Very walkable, yes. very nice, very clean. No, I'm, <laughs> it's like funny to say that, I'm sure, when you're like used to it, you're like, like clean, what do you mean? But like in comparison to America, it's yes. super nice. So Melvin, are you heading to um, anywhere else? <coughs> Australia? No, we, uh, we just went to Sydney okay. and now, uh, now we're here. And then this is my last leg of my Australian tour. Yeah. Enjoy. All right. Nice Have a good Enjoy. one, guys. Thank you for this. No worries. What you so nice. Oh, oh, you got a bracelet. Palestinian bracelet. Nice. Look at that. New drip acquired. Free Palestine fundraiser Australia. Oh, is that where they're headed right now? 
Um, I think they were at the protest. Maybe they're leaving. I don't know. Or maybe they're going there. Who knows? Who knows? What I want is the crispy pancakes. They they have that a lot. Too. They have these like meat on a stick, obviously, but then they also have crispy pancakes, and they put like meat in between the crispy pancakes. It's so fun. It looks so good. That sounds fire. That's what I want to try as well. All we're out here, local. Alexis doesn't know shit, bro. Broy, he doesn't know shit, bro. Yeah, we're trying out the local delicacies here. Chinese food. Yes, Chinese food. I mean, dude. We all know the Commonwealth is carried by the immigrants because sure. it's like British cuisine is dog shit, right? The food that slapped the most here has been the Asian food. Right? Yeah. It's also slapped my tummy around a little bit. I've been literally pissing out of my ass for like three days now. It's not just the food, obviously. It's, it's definitely the food plus the drinking. It's probably mostly the drinking. I got like, I'm breaking out. You see this? It's crazy. Bringing out all my cheese. The people in there didn't believe your channel was called Hassan. Wait, why? I know, I thought it was a strange name. <laughs> they were just like, really? <laughs> oh yeah. You should name something else. Boy Boy is a good name. Try yeah, that I should name it Boy Boy. Yeah. <laughs> the Boy it's just Boy a great channel. name. Welcome to the Boy Boy channel. Today, we're going to be investigating the Chinese food in Melbourne. See if it's actually been taken over by the Chinese. Oh. I keep... <laughs> I say this out loud in public, but like people do legitimately. Yeah, yeah, these yeah. Things. It's like, and it's I am a little borderline. worried. I am a little worried that people are gonna take it seriously. That right there is what is known as a street cleaner. Americans don't know this because we don't have those sorts of things in America. And that guy making 150 bucks an hour. <laughs> right now, probably yeah. <laughs> What's up? I'm so oh, many of us. And it's I am the political do you want to take a photo? Yeah, Hell yeah. Smile chat. Are you in there? Thank you so much. What's the, best, what's the best Turkish food out here? Thomas Town, Tarafa, and I get my town. Thomas Town. Zak. Oh, Ozan. Where do you come in? You're some Melbourne or something like that. I'm a Yerusalem. Oh, Chogu Zak. Does his Turkish have an accent? Yeah, like very thick. Oh, stronger than oh. yours. I mean, like, does it have like an Aussie Turkish accent? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's hard to peg because I've never talked to like a Turkish Aussie in Turkish before. This is my first time. I wouldn't say it's like an Australian accent. It was like, it was like strange. Definitely is an accent though. Like, you can tell from the way that he's like, uh, you know, pronouncing certain words. As far as, uh, as far as my accent goes, what do you mean? Like, I don't have an accent at all in Turkish. What do you speak Turkish? I guess it came here when you were 18. Came here, came to America. Yeah. I think your Aussie accent's so good, I'm thinking you're from here. Does this. Guy talking Turkish in the second biggest Greek city on the planet? Wait, this is a Greek city? Yeah, yeah, Melbourne's the full of Greeks. Don't feel safe in here, mate. We're the elusive Greeks. You know, well, those are Turkish too, those guys, they just walk by. Um, I don't like it. I don't like it. I feel unsafe. I did not know that there's Greeks about. I did not realize this squid. Yeah. Now I fucked, yeah, fucked up the stream. You fucked up the stream. Mate, you but then they get to up. see me eat squid, which is like, I don't know, probably cooler than any oh, other. Oh yeah, thing. no, definitely. It's great content. It's fucking absolutely riveting, mate. I just don't like standing in one place because I feel like yeah, it, it just like... Yeah, they're gonna start swarming up. Oh, it's swarming. Stream snipers. Stream snipers start coming in. Hopefully this is a good one. Okay. Assemble? Yeah, you say that, but yeah, that is literally what ends up happening. Scatter. Snipers do this. Loitering is a crime. What's up, man? What's up? What's going on? Hi. That's crazy. Nice to meet you. You're massive. Holy shit. <laughs> do you want to take a photo? Ah, uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you mind? <laughs> Hey, yo. yo, where do you guys ball? The sun scaring locals, classic. Okay, never mind. You got scared. Hey, how you going? I'm good, good, good. How are you? Good. Right. So, you know me feeling like a sweet <laughs> <laughs> What is that? Just bread. That's just bread, bread and squid. Originally, I just got the squid, but. Oh, yeah. Here you go, chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just a piece of bread. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want to see the squid, though. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Yo, what? That looks awesome. Holy shit. Okay, I definitely need to buy that. 
Oh my god, you got the shirt he and has everything. The this wasn't, this wasn't oh. anti shock to the rally. Yeah, do it. <laughs> I love your pants. We're about to, we're, we've been trying to make our way, but someone had to get fucking squid. I'm gonna try it on. Someone had to stop us. Get Are you a secret Zionist? Oh, very outwardly. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it's nice to meet you, very nice, Laura. Nice to meet you, Laura. Let's do it. Let's, let's do it. Let's take a photo. I want to photo with you too, Alexa. Yay! Thank you. <laughs> oh, how do I? You got this. <laughs> I got it. I got it. I got it. Oh, is that how you do oh, that? Oh, sick, I'm saying that one. That's cool, sick. So. All right, ready? Three, two, one, sick. All right, get in there. Got up, and I've been practicing my face. Three, two, one. Hell yeah. Thank you. What are you doing? Go, go. I'm trying to go to the Palestinian protest. Let's We're still going. All right, smile and say pine gap. You ready? Oh, you want me to pine I'm like sneaking into the photo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting into my photo. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. This happens quite a bit. Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. Thanks so much. <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot really to say. You need to stop drinking Coke Zero Three, on stream. Why? It's boycott. Wait, is it? You're um, preaching pro Palestine and you're no, drinking all this boycott stuff. So please, Thank you. Hassan, <laughs> at least pretend. Do it off stream. Oh, please, okay, I'll put, it in, I'll put it in a glass. <laughs> is Pepsi okay? No. Is it? Okay. No soda, sir. I didn't know. I didn't know it was like that. I'm trying to stop it. It's an animal. You hosted him in his home and I watched him on stream drink Coke Zero. Yeah, yeah, it's we, your we, house and you get to say no. Yeah, that's true. You get to say this is a BDS zone. Yeah, you're right. Well, we kept the coats outside to go out to get them. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> he didn't stop it. Impossible for me to get it. Well, Shaitan and Shaitan's agent go go to the protest. Okay, have a good one. It's completely right. That was... Damn. I'll beach deep. Yeah. Just like you and Pine Gap, mate. <laughs> Don't want any squid? Me. No. Mmm. So good. Oh, really good. Is it good? Mm hmm. It's delicious. Did they give you the bread too, or did you ask for it? I asked like, for bread. Like, are you supposed to just like eat a little bit of the bread, a little bit of the squid? Oh, that was my plan. Bro, I just saw like the squid, and I feel like a breakfast of just chili squid is. Bro, you need something to balance with. That's like a dangerous weapon you got. You're fucking wielding right now. I heard there were Zionist judo champions at these protests. I'm like, <laughs> oh my god, he's chilling my eyes. <laughs> Like, oh yeah, you missed the protest while simultaneously stopping us from going to it. <laughs> What's up, man? Why didn't you Thank you. Based. Any more? I shouldn't. Okay. I feel like I feel like all these people are leaving the protest. Like, it's. I think it's over. All right. You can see the flag. But the thing is, like, I didn't actually want to fucking sit there through the speeches anyway. What's up, man? Whatever. Yeah. Uh, we haven't missed the rally, but it's nearly. They're back at uh, State Library now. Well, what is this big gathering here? They're back there and they're just gonna chant a bit more, but like they've, they've done marching. Oh, okay. it's yeah. fine. You are so good. Very tall. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. Um, nice to meet you as well. I was gonna say, uh, thanks. You represent like people who grew up in a Middle Eastern country and then moved to a Western country, and like that dichotomy is very interesting. Hey, you guys, I totally forgot to ask for a photo before. Do you mind if I get a photo? Yeah, I was just giving you directions. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. There's a bee, like, right by this. Hey, Marsh. Hi. Hey, chat. Alex, do you want to be um, taking a photo? Of course. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, oh, yeah, so do your guys, job. Do you guys have time? Uh, you want me to take a photo? Three, two, one. Oh, shit. Sorry, I did not do that. Oh. Um, oh, there's still time. The, the rally's still oh. going. Yeah, we're gonna swing yeah, back. But they're just like they stop at State Library now. Three, two, one. Thank you. I want to come around this way. Oh. I'm so bad. Yeah, that's the one. That's the oh, one. That's the one. one. Smile, chat. Three, You're in two, it. One. The sun was in the background. No, I'd like a photo with you as well. I'd love that. <laughs> we'll see who I'd takes a photo. Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. We made it. Yeah, you made it. <laughs> Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, excellent. No right. problem. Enjoy the rest of Melbourne. See ya. Look at all these cool. What do you think about policemen? Do you guys go around and buy schools in America? It's so It is kind of funny though because like your cops still look kind of fake. Welcome to Melbourne. Oh, how are you going? I never got a shot with you. Oh, you want to take a photo? Yeah. Whoa, show, show, uh, show the people your, your sign. 
Oh, it's just. Yeah, it's like, it's been on both sides. It's sick. Yeah, like, genocide is not a fashion trend. Boycott Zara. Oh, hell yeah. Fuck Zara. Yeah, that's an easy one. Yeah, yeah. that's an easy one. <laughs> I've been boycotting Zara with be by being a massive person who doesn't fit their shit. Yeah. Anyway. So looking forward to the most coming to power. I'm glad that yeah. you're advocating. With me? Yeah. Wait, do you... Yeah, yeah. Hamas is a lesser evil? I mean, yeah, I think I'm going for Hamas. It's good. Yeah. It is, they kill less children. Hamas kill less children than Israel. They're the lesser evil. I'm a lesser evil voter. I'm a liberal. I'm fast with, like, selfies. Doesn't get in trouble. That's cool. See ya. See ya, thanks. Good slaps, eh? Yeah, I mean, that's... Oh, you stepped in gum? Yeah. Oh, no. Slide like a trap. <laughs> it was. Yes, it is what it is. Elbow and Dutton. Fuck. Discombobulated. Yes. What's up? That's good. Yeah, so um, I think about five minutes ago someone got arrested up there. Uh -huh. I think it was for putting a sticker up. Okay. Yeah. Wait, sure. it's like that? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Cops will arrest you for putting a sticker up. Uh, they're pretty pedantic, yeah. That's crazy. Dude, I wonder if we can get arrested. That'd be kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta go to Tokyo tomorrow, man. I'm not really trying to be arrested. <laughs> you wanna take a photo? Yeah, sure, man. Just doing a little oh, selfie yeah. thing. A Zionist lady yelled at me. I that was that. fun. You see, did you get that on camera? Yeah. Yeah. So wait, thanks, bro. Have a good one, man. Likewise. Yeah. Auburn has had some of the biggest uh, pro Palestine protests in Australia. I think it's even bigger than Sydney. Yeah, they said that the first one that they did was like 100,000 people. One more point in Auburn. Yeah, I didn't even think that like it was going to be. I didn't realize. <gasps> Dorothy! <laughs> Hello. Can you smell the squid? Oh, hi. Is this your first Chinese? Oh my god, you're so cute. No, I know. I, I, I wanted to give him the best I could buy. Uh, he, it's his fault. He didn't take me to a trading shop. Real. It's his fault. <laughs> Entirely. Hi, Dougie. Hi. 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 Okay, he, I stand corrected. He, he does have an accent, but an Izmir accent. Like you said. Maybe. Dude, this is like crazy. Yeah, got I got like a straight heap. I'm going to walk this way back this way. I got heaps of, of gum. gum. Heaps of gum under my shoe. That's sick, this guy. Oh, he's like his number. Is he in the cafe? Yeah, I can't yeah. tell. What are you saying? Oh, wait, no, I'll let you take a photo first. It's two, one. Yeah. Uh, they sit on the floor as a the pop oh, yeah. pushing him to be Oh, right, right. What's up, man? They call me the Tunisian Hassan. Oh, really? That's me. This is my friend Lana. She's smart. She's smart. You are not the least in the world. We're trying to implement an immediate What do you mean? This is a small pocket place. I wish. No, no, that's the goat. That's my girl. Let me do it. And this government. I still support Israel and Christ! Yeah. Social relationship with him. <laughs> he tells me off actually. They claim that Israel Sometimes. has the right <laughs> Maybe. to defend itself. Um, now let me ask you ladies and gentlemen, you, we're we all reasonable people here. Does defending the yourself mean going in the right to um, innocent women? Very high ranked university. Is it the University of Melbourne? Does defending yourself mean going to a woman's wardrobe, wearing her lingerie, calling her a slut? Oh, Elvin? Is Elvin's there anything yourself murdering a child whose wife hasn't even taken flight? Is defending yourself blowing up homes? And when you blow up those homes like, and they're like in debt, you don't blow up the tents as yeah. well? Like, it's not like in America where it's like, their students are like, oh, we're protesting because, um, Ladies and gentlemen, this deal. is not no, 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 a no, casual like Sunday like, stroll. Oh, we what we it's, do here yeah, every we, we, Sunday, we have that as well. Trust me, we, we, we do a lot of that. Weapons manufacturing, we directly scouting from college campuses. Against our government and letting them know that their support is not in our name. Yeah. It's lovely to see you. Want to 
on Thursday right? when we all came um, in our numbers. Yeah, we're, we're, we're big into it, man. We, we built some traction. Section. We got, we, we got, we got, you know, Omar, uh, and we had so uh, many Suleman. people that weren't part of the crowd join us Omar because Suleman? they saw that we were a people that were going to stand there and fight that would raise our voices until the Palestinians are liberated. And they joined us. And I invite you, I invite every single one of you to come down to join us. For well, those of you that are young, when you have children, you'll have photos, you'll have videos, and you'll be able to say that I was the there Thank during so the yourself. Palestinian Holocaust, and I stood up, and I yelled, and I shouted, and I fought, and it is because of me, it is because of us, that the Palestinians are free! Now, ladies, we, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, but most importantly, my comrades, our comrades, for our brothers. Hello, chat. My name's Mary. Nice to meet you. 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 Press people for post putting stickers. What is that? What, what, what do the cops do around here, like uh, on the protest? The cops are the most corrupt thing you can ever imagine. They arrest you for putting up stickers. They follow you around. They harass, they harass you. They arrest you. They take your name. They take your details. You put up, you put up a sticker. They'll put you in handcuffs. Why is putting a sticker illegal? I mean, they have they have they have imperialism to protect. They, True. They, they, they're just tools. You know. The worst thing is, is when it's like a, an Arab cop or a cop of color, and I'm like, come on, bro. So no, no stare. I mean, there's still cops first and foremost. That's how it is. Yeah, the cops here. Are, we actually have two divisions of police. So the first division is like just normal cops, but then we have like riot squad police. Yeah, but they're not. These aren't riot squad. Yeah, yeah, but when you see them, you know, I'll show you. I'm just trying to see like. Israel and participation in the genocide against our people in Gaza. It's like this. We will not allow this to happen. Like from our we, to show to the, we will not this is the, this is the riot cops that show up to the protest. Yeah. In our name, yeah, we will shut down AWB. This is Tuesday. We will be horses. there, mounted um, in the morning. Not only that, standing on top of the Starbucks. Please join us. So when you would rock up to the this protest, way, thank you. For like an hour before the protest, there'd be like six cops outside the Starbucks. Just protecting the Protecting Starbucks. capital, baby. Ladies First and gentlemen, foremost. if you're not following Free Palestine Melbourne on Instagram, have you been at A1 Bakery? Free Palestine Melbourne, no. any snap action, emergency action it's rally, a staple. It's will be posted a staple there. Of this we need as many of you okay. as possible it's because like, on Thursday, it was it's about good. 300 police. Chat, can you guys hear? Or is it too loud? To what are you saying? Can you hear what he's saying? We were there to send our message. Oh, okay, and good. We send our message strong. But if to they're, open easy if they're to from anyone, Australia, they know. But our Especially if you're a person of color, our like, Walter, and we will continue to like come in Australia, out there's this mentality week, that we are better than Americans, or we're better than Europeans. But you've got to see how we treat our indigenous people. Yeah, oh, no, I see it. Yeah. It's horrible. Yo, get a shot of that. Big ass. You can bomb, you can lie, Palestine will never die. You can bomb, you can lie, Palestine will never die. You can bomb, you can lie, Palestine will never die. Rasta, Rasta, don't you cry. One of the shops of the guys? Yeah, he's on the mic right now. That's crazy. Yeah. You hear that? The guy who's speaking, one of the speakers right now, he owns a shop called Burger Dream, and his, one of his shops got burned down. Oh, they're getting up. 
Many of the other places in the country. Is, is, does Melbourne have a, a, a larger presence? Look, it's well connected. It's um, there's a lot of activism going on, and a lot of different unions are getting involved. Yeah. So we've got teachers, we've got different indigenous groups, Maori, we've got uh, the Ukrainians here. So there's a really network kind of presence, and it's a determination. We've been turning up for sun every Sunday for months now, and we're not stopping. Hell yeah. It's awesome. Well, thank you. Nice to meet you, man. Thanks, guys. Hello. Mine don't look like any of the other signatures. <laughs> Enjoying the day? Guys, pop it up. You are against all those things being done in mind. Oh, let's get a shot of this. We got another. What's the feist? It's not too bad. I was looking at the 
looking at the, the way that they can fight, you know? Uh, it's like one of the unions. Yeah. So. Apparently a lot of the unions have also gotten involved in the protest as well. they got the Warfies on board as well, it's nice. The what? The Warfies. What's that? This is Australian term for people like dock workers. Union. Oh, nice. Warfies. That's pretty sick. I mean, it's good to see solidarity in action. Even though the Israeli military said it was a bad idea, Israel did. What about taking photos of people? I do feel bad. I don't know where to. I don't know where to put my hands. The dude came up there. I like went to go reach around and ask for it. I'm like, 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 I'm I didn't influence Americans' politics and make it so in the United States. Americans don't do you recognize your countrymen? We should be protected under the First Amendment. I don't know. I don't know who that is. I don't know who's being... It's, uh... It could be like, uh... If you turn to your... I don't know if I want to get it. I don't want to get it. No, that's what the best part is. Oh, oh, oh. Go to A1 Bakery. Oh, Sydney right. Sydney right. Kanye went to A1, A1 Bakery. Alright, let me ask you guys. Sydney or Melbourne? That's not even a question. That's not a question. Melbourne. Why Dude, do you guys think Melbourne's Melbourne better than so Sydney? Better than nightlife died in Sydney like... Wait, what the... Oh, nightlife died in Sydney? Yeah. 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 People in Sydney are just intense too. If they're a hipster in Sydney, they're more hipster. There's no haunting culture in Sydney. Like, they, they, yeah, there is. There is. But no, I, I feel you. With I, the I lockout think, laws... Yeah, go ahead, bro. He's right. No, he's right. With it's like, lockout. people aren't out and about that much yeah. in it's Sydney. It's more intense. If they're a I businessman, like, they're more just... businessman than the businessmen in Melbourne. Like, I just like the beaches. Yeah. The beaches, like, in like, terms of environment... Swim around. It's really beautiful. Yeah. You guys have beaches here. Yeah. Surely. You just gotta travel. You have to drive like a, you have to drive a couple hours. We have a bay, bay no? Right you have a bay. bay. We have a whole bay. Yeah, like that. I'll tell you. Go to the area, but don't wear that, that Gucci pad. That is like the, that is like the uniform for area heads. <laughs> area heads? Yeah, people from the area. Good. I want to look like a proper bloke. <laughs> I got the kit and everything. Yeah. Go to Western Sydney. I want to go to, I want to look like a No, we didn't, we didn't take the West City either. No. He was there for like one and a half days. Oh, uh, yeah. This is a better city anyway. Yeah. I like it. I like it more. I said it. Out. Melbourne on top. We went out the past couple of days. Um, but I don't even know where. We went. Hard to keep up with those boys. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Oh, no, not the other one. Okay, okay. City Road, gotcha. It's Jeff, Saeed, Atabala. Hey, son. You can show the people brand is that a B roll. My content brain immediately is like, where are the Zionists? Where are the counter protesters? You know what I mean? I think that they don't exist in Melbourne. Not like the start by Not like a city. Amazing. Why are they like. I don't know, because we get them in Sydney. Yeah, yeah. They're basically dead, right? Like, they're just sitting there. Yeah. 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 Setting up, and we all know what's exactly happening. Standing up to the oppression. What a big shame, people. What a big shame. Sometimes I feel that I'm a big shame, except by sending. Oh, hell yeah. Nice to see you. Finally, Green to Australia. What's your username? Shocking Viper X. They're going to look me up, and it's just going to be me spamming AFL shit. Make a quick photo? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why you wore Collingwood, that's shocking. Uh, on the call, the Rebel Sport, everyone unanimously said that's the like, thing. I asked, like, what's the best thing? Oh, Alexa? Oh, oh, shit. Yeah. That's all right. You're up from your own side, I understand. <laughs> what's the team that you like? Tell me about the team that you like. I like the Greater Western Sydney. Players. Yeah, they're pretty good. They've they, nice they had a pretty good season. Yeah. yeah. Marsh. Yeah, 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 you guys have a good rest of the time here. See you tonight. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Yeah, man. One more says we'll leave one day. One more says we'll leave. 
Pharaoh, Pharaoh in the past, he tried to kill the people of Palestine and the people of Egypt as well. All right, let's walk around. That's why I What breaks my heart a few days ago, I was reading a question from a Palestinian lady who's sending a question to a sheikh, an imam in Islam, we call him. She's asking him a question. I never seen this question before in my life. Is it permissible in Islam to continue fasting for the following day if you don't break your fast for the present day? Islamically, we are not allowed to. But you know why he asked this question? Because they don't have anything to eat. Wallahi, shame on us. I swear by God, shame on us when we have more than five or ten different food plates on the table every sunset for the last 20 days. And they don't have even a drop of it, not even a drop, but a smell of it. Let me tell you the, the, the greens one here in the CBD. So I would like, like to say this in Arabic. A bit more left this And then I'll translate it into English. In other places. For the oh, peace of yeah, humanity that still resides in our hearts, in our brains, in our kids. The moment that we see our kids every morning and we give them that kind of cuddle or hug and we kiss them. We kiss them even if they did wrong. This kind of energy to kiss their kids, they don't have it. I would like to say, لا تألفنا, لا تألفنا مصاب أخيك وإن طال. Do not get yourself normalized for the situation that's happening in Gaza now. Not only in Gaza, but in the, across the entire world. For every single oh, yeah. right cross around with. the world. Do not takes, get yourself uh, normalized for it. I want to get a the moment that we get normalized, that's Maybe what they want to do. Might be that's what they want us to do. So Look at us today. Look at us last week and the week before and the week before. Our numbers are getting down. But the, the point is not the quantity. The point so is last night here, right? Yeah. Oh, and you haven't got plans, plans for dinner? Human beings. Well, I mean, we, I think we do. We, we have to shoot a podcast. Uh, I was going to suggest, I was going to suggest going to Cookie. It's literally right next door to where you got your squid stick. Oh, really? I missed like, out. It's like the biggest bar in Melbourne. Oh, sick. And it's like Type U. It's my favorite restaurant. Have a good one, guys. All of us are Palestinians in a way that you are living in you are Palestinian even if you have a piece of humanity you are a Palestinian and I'm not saying this out of sympathy I'm not saying this just to motivate you we are Palestinians whether we like it or not the moment they finish from Palestine if we oh, they closed up all the What's up, man? You want to take a photo? Sure. Yeah. 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 Is this allowed? Can you have a Oh, I got pressed by a cop once at a train station. He was just like, is it closed? Okay. You want to take a photo? Yeah, dude. Well, we're on fucking stream, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, are you are you just chilling or are you here to support Palestine? I came to see you. Oh, you came to see me. Okay. All right. Nice to meet you, man. Thanks for watching. Yeah, dude. All right. Okay. I want to get a, a kefir here. Socialist Alliance. Oh. Oh, that's the. So, wait. Is Socialist Alliance the same as Socialist Alternative? Brothers and sisters. No, Socialist Alliance is the. Brothers and sisters, I will finish with this. Socialist Alliance. Allow me to recite some prayers. Socialist Alternative is there. And the most effective words of it to be in Arabic. For the one who understands Arabic, we say I mean. And please imagine yourself instead of that father, the one who amputated his. A son's leg without anesthesia. Imagine yourself instead of that pregnant lady that she's giving birth to her own son, to her own daughter. Caesareans without any anesthesia. Imagine yourself that when you go up from the rubble after three or five days, or imagine yourself the last statement that one Palestinian child he said when the rescue men they came to him and they said, 
they, they were talking about that. He said, his best friend, he said, just say something. And he said, tomorrow I will tell God what you have done to me. Tomorrow I will, I will tell God what you have done to me. We don't want this, brothers and sisters in Islam. We do not lose the humanity in us. We do not want to lose ourselves by simply just coming every Sunday and chanting here and there. I urge myself, and after me, some of the least, 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 the Speak up. Yeah. If you are a taxi driver, speak up. If you are a lecturer, speak up. If you are a student, speak up. No matter what your position, what your position, speak up. Wait, just a Palestinian report. No, 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 I meant this. Yeah, that's the Palestinian report. Oh, it's Palestinian report. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So the government is going to ask Arabic the prayers. Okay. The and then I will say, I'll get that then. A little bit of the English for the people who don't understand Arabic. Yeah, what are they going to say? How much are they? These are 70 people. Allahumma laka alhamdu kama yambagi jala li wajhika wa li amini sulqani Allahumma kuni ikhwani al mustabaqin fi bagdaka fi filistin Allahumma kun ma'ahum wa la takun alayhim Allahumma kun ma'ahum wa la takun alayhim Allahumma kun lahum mu'inan wa nasira wa mu'ayyidan wa bahira Allahumma a'inna ala nusrati ikhwatina fi filistin Allahumma arham shuhada'ahum Allahumma arham shuhada'ahum Allahumma fuk asra'ahum Allahumma kulli ikhwani al-abtara fi gazzata fi filistin Allahumma wahid kalimatahum Allahumma saddid ramyahum Allahumma thabbit al-arda min tahti aqdamim ya Allah اللهم عليك بالغاصبين المعتدين على أراضي فلسطين يا الله. Brothers and sisters, it is really important to raise your voice. This is the only way that we can find the humanity in us. This is the only way that we can create that link between you and your God, inshallah ta'ala. Raise your voice to the maximum that you can do. Not because Saeed is standing with you, no. Because this is the only way that God listened to us. God said in the glorious Quran, God said in our book, He said, only when you ask me, I will respond. If you do not ask me, I will respond. I will not do, I will do nothing. This is the moment. This is a great in the last 10 days of Ramadan. This is a great moment that God listened to us and hear our voices. He created us and we have a right upon Him. When we call upon Him, He will respond to us. Raise your voice to the maximum that you can, inshallah ta'ala. اللهم بدد جموعهم وفرق جيوشهم وقتل جنودهم وذك الأمهاتهم يا الله اللهم رم الأرم الأولادهم يا الله اللهم إنك تعلم أنهم قد أرونا قوتهم فينا فأرنا قوتك فيهم يا الله يا الله يا الله يا قوي يا عزيز يا جبار يا منتقم الله Oh, sorry. 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 Oh,
المرصاد يا الله اللهم اجعل هذا الشهر شهر نصر ومحرمين يا الله Oh, I should have gone the handmade boys. The frills are pretty good. I got that shit on for real right now. My haram earnings. Yeah, I, was, I went to the casino. Sorry. I'm a bad Muslim. yeah the camera takes off like it's going on much Oh Allah, be merciful with the markets around the world, yeah. Ya Allah. Oh Allah, grant us victory Three, two, in this, this month, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, so grant much. us and our brothers and sisters in Palestine victory over our time. enemies, oh, Ya yeah. Allah. Yeah. Oh Allah, kick out the occupation out of the Palestinian wow. land, this Ya Allah. This is an OG Hassan Abi head. Very long term community yeah. member. Yeah. Migrated from a different community. Yeah. 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 Old, old DGG guy. Oh Allah, you are now What's going on, chat? That's cool. And, 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 and a moderator in the subreddit, right? Don't tell them that. That's not us. Oh, God. That's what you guys mean, man. Keep up the good work, guys. Fear and awesome podcast. Thank you, brother. Oh Allah, you know that. Oh, look at that. Killed our well, I mean, souls. Oh Allah, take care of them the way that you are happy with, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, let us to liberate Palestine sooner than later. Ya Allah, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Allah. We have no Lord except you. We have no creator except you. We worship you day and night, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, respond to our prayers, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, you know that our brothers and sisters are suffering and struggling on day and night, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, liberate us to liberate them, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, allow us to support them to the best of our ability, Ya Allah. We're getting IRL Oh Allah, take care of the oppressors and the the way that you are happy with, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, allow us to receive victory in this blessed month. Oh what Allah, is this school? month is the most <laughs> beloved month for you. We know, we, we oh know Allah, the Palestinian people yeah, I got the, I got are the I most beloved one to, all, to our hearts. Ready? Oh Allah, Three, save them. Two, oh Allah, be one. merciful with their martyrs, with their deaths. Oh Allah, oh Allah, take care of them the way that you are happy with, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, thank you. Thanks so much. That's so lovely. To allow thank us you. to grant them support and victory. Oh Allah, let us to pray in a message yeah, in al Sadun Al-Qa'at before we That's die, Ya Allah. What's oh Allah, let us to witness yeah, the yeah, victory of shirt. Palestine, Ya Allah, before we die. Oh Allah, let us to witness the victory of Palestine before we die, Ya Allah. Allahumma hadha dua wa minka al-ijaba, wa hadha al-juhdu wa alayka al-tuklam. Allahumma inna nuqsimu alayka bismika al-a'zami an tastajiba lana. اللهم إنا نقسم عليك باسمك الأعظم أن تنصر إخوتنا اللهم إنا نقسم عليك باسمك الأعظم أن تنصر حرائرنا اللهم إنا نقسم عليك باسمك الأعظم أن تنصر أقصانا اللهم أن تحرر أراضينا اللهم إنا نقسم عليك باسمك الأعظم أن تجعل هذا الشهر شهر نصر وعيش وتمكين لنا يا أرحم الراحمين يا قوي يا عزيز يا جبار يا منتقم اللهم هذا الدعاء ومنك الإجابة وهذا الجهد وعليك التكلام On the intentions of acceptance على نية القبول We recite سورة الفاتحة All together إن شاء الله تعالى أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Please raise your voice Let this land shake 
lift the skies to shame. Overall, shape, though, Allah, as far as, uh, voices, I mean, a lot of people voices, act like Palestinian brothers are like raucous, rowdy, you know. There's a lot of, uh, I don't know, people People have said, that one of the first ever Palestinian pro-Palestinian protests was at Sydney Opera House outside, and it, like a lot of hay was made out of that. People were like, oh, they're being anti-Semitic, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, as you can see, it's not like that at all. It's very good vibes so overall, as good as they can be as an ongoing act of genocide that Israel is committing. Um, and yeah. Do you have anything to add there to that? Sorry. No, no, no. I, mean, I think they do it better here, though. Better than Sydney? Yeah. Bro, you you have you have basically admitted I'm moving. that. I'm moving. <laughs> you basically admitted that Melbourne is on top and better than Sydney. We try our best. Yeah, I talked over the Surah Al Fatiha. I kind of want to talk to the cops. More, uh, you can see they'll probably just ignore you, but March is like, yeah, hey, March is giving me that that's a bad idea. <laughs> He's like, mm -mm. I don't know. Are you worried you're gonna get arrested? Come on, Habib, let's go. Mama, you ready to get arrested? <laughs> they don't do that here. Come closer. They don't have guns. Do they even have guns? These guys, I don't think so. Let's yeah, they're like regular B cops don't even have fucking guns. Hi like regular B cops don't even have fucking guns. Hi everyone. Make everyone feel bad. Yes or no? We we all see kids suffering. They have no. Their parents are dying. They're killing babies. What is that flag? The, <laughs> oh, it is. The kids. Yeah. <laughs> My buddies. How do you like that? Oh, great. Right here, a lot of people they feel proud are as a Yugoslav. Oh, Israel has to write to the de defend themselves. What about Palestine? Yeah. Israel has to defend themselves. Palestine air, air strikes oh. to Israel. That's you know who's defending that town. Oh my god. It's 11 year old saying. If Palestine is sending air strikes into Israel. Have food, water, she said when Palestine is sending Israel, uh, air strikes, they're defending Israel. You don't have to do that. Can I have your mock protect Sarah? Sorry, but I'm sorry. No, no, I can't. It's BDS. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> I want to shout out the Republic of Finland. Who? Oh, Finland. I know, freedom. but I feel bad. You got shame I'm, not trying, get, I'm not trying to get yelled at. They don't have freedom. Bye. They say. What did she say? If we don't have, if she we said, don't have rights, Palestine has a right, right to defend rights. itself by air striking Israel. Period. If we which I agree with. Rights, we don't have rights. But it's a wild thing to say. As shame on me. I see babies. Newborn babies. babies Based babies. 11 year old. They're killing babies like they're drunk or stupid. Right. Babies cannot see their mother, their father, their family, their cousins and uncles. This is shame. This is this is genocide. What kind of gen what kind of genocide is let's this? Go, this go. is not yeah. fair for Palestine. This is sorry, but I'm really getting angry because every time I see it on news, the media say, "Oh, Hamas is air striking to Israel."
We will not be conquered. Make sure you are here next week. Istanbul. Down to Danganron on Tuesday, HGA on Thursday and Friday, and next Sunday, 6 months. Oh, oh, Make it huge. I'm sorry to hear that. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. From the river to the sea. From the river to the sea. From the river to the sea. Getting boycott stickers for my pants because it has McDonald's stickers on. I did on. not realize. <laughs> yeah. The Coke, the McDonald's, what are you doing, man? I'm, I'm over here. I did not realize you were here. I'm such y'all. a bad ally. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I just want to say thank you so much for letting the coverage with me. Especially with like, West Papua, people don't realize. Oh, sorry. 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 Oh, s
Yeah. The guidance and light of Islam. All right. What else can we do? You want to go get a tradie shorts now? We can do that. I don't know where the store is. I should have asked that guy. Yeah, here you go. Thank you so much. Enjoy Melvin. Bye guys. Thank you. Please show your followers um, the Unimaku Palestine page that we run in Yeah, go ahead. Because we want traction and we want everyone to follow our page sure. and interact because we're heavily shadow banned. What is this? It's called Unimaku for Palestine. We are a grassroots can... movement of students, staff, and alumni. We're organizing to push Melbourne University to cut its complicity in the genocide by cutting all its ties with the different weapons manufacturers. Um, we're working really hard, but we're heavily shadow banned. So please follow the page, interact with the stuff that we post. We disrupted Boeing, we disrupted Lockheed, we disrupted the VC. We're going to keep disrupting until we get our aims. Thank you. Thanks so much. Donna is a boss. I'm just going to say, Donna is a boss. She does a week, yeah? No, 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 no. No, she's from Palestine, from the West Bank. She's studying her masters here. She's a boss. She's a boss. Hell yeah. everything you do. Genuine boss. Hell yeah. That's it. All right, what should we do now? Let's go walk around here for a little bit and then. Oh, we'll... the one that was talking about. What? I think it might be a while away. Let's have a look. No, I think that's a, it's like a chain, and the one we want to go to is the. Well, we don't have to go to the special area. We can go to whichever one. It is a chain. Let's go to the closest one. Can I get a picture? Yeah. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Have a good one. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. I'm like trying to get this gum off my foot. I put a sticker on your butt, but I didn't get a photo with you. Is that oh, okay? yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for putting a sticker on my oh, butt. Okay. Woke up, Max. <laughs> Thank you so much. No problem. Have a good one. You too. That's a thick shirt. That's oh, yeah. really cool. Oh, oh no, with right. the magpie. Yeah. Yeah. Where did you get it? Uh, there's a, I can show you the Instagram of the person who made it. She's Palestinian, uh, I think half Irish, half Palestinian, so basically. Damn, she's, 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 <laughs> she's been doubly fucked by the British. Jesus. Yes. That's it. This is probably the most Uber way to get a pay. Oh my god, you did it. With your Asus? Yeah. With your Asus? Uh, Alright. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Slash, black. <laughs> Alright, let's walk around. My, uh, my stuff with uh, Tina, my brother. Uh... Oh, I think. I wonder where the. I was looking for the guys I met outside the parliament. Uh, I wonder if they were here. I'm sure they were here, but it was really funny because I was like interviewing them on camera and then like their homies rolled up in a van because they thought I was like being annoying, probably. And they were like honking their horn. This happened by myself. Oh. I was alone after I left you guys yeah, yeah, yeah. on my way back to the hotel. And it was really, really fun. All right. What, did you have your live streaming too with you? No, no, no. I was just on my phone. But oh. I, was, I looked like even more of a douchebag. I didn't even have the, the Lebanese shirt. Yeah, yeah. You just had your fucking I just looked like shorts. I looked like a proper bloke in a bad way. Not a good, not a good way. I guess these are the organizers. Oh yeah, probably tried someone. Yeah. I mean, we don't have to. You know what's also? You know what else is really cool though? Did you look up the A1 thing? Yeah, there's one in Fitzroy, but I think they want to go to the. There's like a special one in the area. In this area? No, no, like the. It's the area. Yeah. Where is the area? Oh wait, maybe I found the wrong one. People are saying more interviews, please. No, what's actually what's actually special is uh, avoiding the ads at the top of the hour while we do interviews. Do you see anyone that's like cool looking? I promise that'll get yeah. that'll talk about something interesting. The guy that was wearing the um, oh yeah, the, the no god uh, but Allah and Muhammad is his prophet band. Yeah, I was trying to talk to him and he's like, I don't trust any of these bro. <laughs> yeah, what's up? What's up, man? Yeah, love your shit, man. Oh, I thank you, thank you for watching. So much, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty young and like, and like my age group, not much into politics, but I am and I love the shit. So oh, hell yeah. Do you want to take a photo? Uh, no, just saying hi. Oh, okay. Alright, well, nice to meet you, man. Yeah, you too. Thanks. That's lovely. It's cool. Oh, it's going to talk to you here. We could go try and ball. That sounds nice. I'm down. Gotta go back to the hotel. We do have, wait, how many hours do we have? Oh, we have some. We have some time. So the interview. When is he in P6? Five? What? When's the interview? 
Oh shit, I'm fucked up. Uh, it's supposed to be a five, but Laser Beam has not reached back out to me. Oh fuck. Well, he's probably at the protest. Yeah, Laser Beam. Yeah. It's a big time activist. Alright, well, what did you say? Let's go to the A1 thing. So, the one that they're. Okay, yeah. Jack. Did you interview him? He's <laughs> like, hey, what's up, man? This is Jack. I just want to talk to you. How about being fucking yoked? I need a coffee. Yeah, let's go. Let's walk over out somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I'm also worried about the sun as well. <laughs> What's up, man? No, no, it's okay. We can take a photo if you want. <laughs> I want to see what they do. Thank you for watching. Do you want to take a photo? No, that's all. I just wanted to okay. say thank you. All right, thank where did they go? I want to see if the cops yeah, do it. I don't know. I think they, they've gone up there. Where? Up around the, the path in the back. I think, they, I think they're going. I think they're leaving. Oh. Like, like every Sunday. I think it's in the center of the city. It's a bit more chill. We should have gone down to the wharf. I think that's where everyone gets arrested. Yeah. Alright, let's get some coffee. That was crazy, that one guy was just like fucking hammer. Open, you know, open container. Straight up walking around with a fucking handle of Smirnoff. Yeah. Wait, who's this? Some guy that came up to me. Like, not part of the project. No. I was, the... like, I was like, are you, I was like, are you, uh, are you here for the protest? He's like, nah. <laughs> Just walked away. So they give me a cigarette and I was like, I'm good, man. Thank you. I don't smoke anymore. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, friendly. It always feels so weird after a protest as things disperse. You kind of, I feel aimless. Yeah. Demon. That was so cool when that lady was yelling at me. I wish we, I wish we could have more of that. What lady? The one oh, about a boyfriend? No, no, not that. That was weird. I don't like that at all. Actually. Especially because like I don't want to draw a lot of like attention. Right. And it's. No, I was talking about the lady who uh, was like, You did it! Now Hamas is in charge! Hamas is controlling everything! And I was like, what? Where were you? It was, it, we were taking a photo with the It was fans. like as soon as we got here. Yeah. Oh, she was like a sol solo counter protester. Yeah. She basically. wasn't even a counter protester. I think she saw me like taking photos of the camera oh, yeah. and immediately assumed maybe she had that old school uh, Australian level of racism, knowing exactly <laughs> what my ethnic group was yeah, 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 and yeah. pegged me as a Hamas supporter. Yeah. So I yelled back at her like I said, Hamas is a lesser evil. I'm a lesser evil voter. <laughs> they kill less children. <laughs> that would be a good interaction. More of that. But now that we have the cafe on, maybe. Yeah, maybe we're just gonna, oops, sorry. Maybe we just catch the strays from yeah. that people. Hamas killing children. What a wild thing to say. As like, Israel is just, currently, currently while we're talking, Israel is like murking kids. That's like the every day 10 kids would live. Yeah. I did not know. Tens of thousands orphaned. Can you look up like a coffee shop? Is that the one we went into yesterday? I see that. Is the one? Yeah. Where's that reflective one? Is that here or is that another one? It's a tea house, but. <laughs> Wait, well, oh, you see some Sunday maybe? Yeah, it's all screaming. Poor sleepy LA people. Like the Americans. In Chile. I mean the ones over here. Nor. Nor, mate. I thought anyone wanted a squid, you know? I hear they're good. It's actually delicious. Probably one of the best things I've eaten in Melbourne. Someone in the chat said, I'd like to see the fake boobs on Hassan. Another person said, Ed Hassanabi, is there going to be gaming today? <laughs> the answer to those questions is no to both. I can't really think of anything else. We have seen all that Melbourne has to offer. We went to a fucking protest. Protested Israel's illegal occupation and genocide. Is that good? Am I doing well? That's perfect. Yeah. He's yeah. lying. He's yeah, lying to me. So good. He's fucking fine. He's fucking lying to me. That's good. Uh, thanks for the fun day today. Thank you guys. We can end it here then. We're gonna go to right. David. We're gonna make our way over to David Jones get a proper SA kit. I don't sell Nordica anymore though, so... Fit it out. Yeah, David Jones no longer sells Nordica. Fuck David Jones. We're going to Myers. Is it Myers? Meyer. Yeah, we're going to Meyer instead. 
where they're actually selling the Eshe kits. Nordica down to my fucking undies, mate. And uh, just wanted to say thank you for watching to everybody. Hello. Yeah. Once. Hold on. Let me uh, let me end the stream because I'm I'm just doing a sign off now, mate. All right. And uh, thank you, Alexa. Thank you, Match. 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 <laughs> I don't think I like that one. Mar March. <laughs> And thank you Gracias. all for watching. Mauricio. Uh, I am probably not going to be live tomorrow because I'm traveling. It's Sunday anyway for you. But I'll be back live on Monday morning. I'm going to try and do a fucking quick... I'm going to try and sneak a proper one. A quick one from my hotel room Sounds on like Sunday he's batting morning. off. I don't even know what that means. Sneak a quick one? Sneak a quick one <laughs> from the hotel room. From the That's hotel. Good. Yeah, I'm going to be gooning, mate. I'm a fucking gooner. I'm an SHA and a gooner. Right, and uh, if I don't do it tomorrow, if I don't do a quick stream tomorrow, then peace out. See you back in America, right?